So strap in for a Super Saturday Boston style. Yesterday we sent five teams packing, including the former CDL champs, the New York Subliners. 
Oh yeah, it's a whole new season. And today, the Dark Horse teams aim to extend their sensational runs through the elimination bracket. Clayster and the Carolina Royal Ravens square off against Surge, while LA Gorillas lie in wait, ready to take on the next team to cross their path. And Minnesota Rocker are on a roll. But can they keep up with the unstoppable Toronto Ultra? Plus, the classic showdown that's got all the fans fired up. Atlanta Bays versus Optic Texas. We're one day closer to crowning the first major champion of the year right here on the Call of Duty League. to day three of major one it's the call of duty league live at fenway we're coming at you from the mgm music hall and it has been a blast so far after two days we are down to our final seven teams and at the end of today we'll be down to our final four Welcome in, everybody. It's Chris Pugga at the desk alongside Chance. We've got Alley Cat and Nameless as always, but Chance, I want to start with you. We're here day three, and so is Clayster. That's the biggest surprise for me. The man in his 15th year has led his team into the final seven. Yes, it's insane, and the leadership isn't just like the out-of-game, like intangible comms that we're used to talking about. It's in-game. This man is putting in insane work in the damage category. He's a main slayer. He's in the mix, and he plays at a lightning speed. Speed, so the gameplay genuinely does look 18. That's been fun for me to watch, but Ali, it's also been fun to watch the big dogs. Optic and FaZe are crushing so far. The juggernauts meet again today, one of the classic rivalries in esports. Absolutely, we haven't seen them since day one, and some of these matchups we already got a sneak peek of during the actual qualifier, so I'm really excited to see them go at it again today on LAN. Nameless Minnesota's still kicking. They are, and they're looking good. Everybody's playing well in that last series. They knocked out the world champs, and we saw exactly what we needed to see from every player on that team. Accuracy looking young again. Lin's taking over, winning 1v1s against Hydra. The team looks unstoppable. Let's jump into it, talking about the teams that are still alive here in Boston, playing for the $150,000. The Carolina Royal Ravens, that's right. London Royal Ravens, they relocated. They got a rebrand in the blue, and they've been electric since adding Felony to the roster that seemed to be the missing piece real great player on the come up but it was the veteran that has been the difference maker you're completely right it's been the veterans for this squad and the biggest thing for carolina right now is going to be those search and destroys fellow nine and three yesterday they had six first bloods to win that invasion s and d against the world chance to send them home so definitely the biggest team to watch today in elimination bracket keep your eyes on clay and carolina but the gorillas are still in the hunt as well and they've already past their opponent Vegas with the reverse sweep that they pulled off to close out last night. Yeah, you know, they had a match early in the day versus the LA Thieves, the Battle of LA where they get the 3-1 victory and it was Diamond Con once again going off in the respawns in the control and in the hard point and then we get later into the, to the day where they're playing a hot Vegas Legion and they go down 0-2. We get to a high-rise control where they had all the confidence in the world. They're able to battle back, win th three rounds and they end up winning the hard point and the search to close it out and I want to shout out Fame. Four first bloods on that map, number two two in map five taking over in the search and destroys he has been the guy to get them through the tough spot so far in this tournament we love what we saw out of lag unfortunately for a number of teams though the tournament has come to an end and the big surprise after day one two of our top four were
were out. Miami Heretics, some people saw it coming, but no one saw the subliners exiting on day one. And it was truly unbelievable, too, especially with, like, the fashion some of it took place. I mean, the world champs getting knocked out, the difference in performances from online to land, a little bit staggering. But, yes, you have high expectations, and they end up at the bottom getting outperformed by rookies and challengers players. It was a mess. They just need to make a trade. Listen, I propose Priesta gets traded back to New York, and Sib just gets traded to Boston. Everybody wins in that scenario, and you can see the bracket. Both those teams they got knocked out. They all agree with you, Nameless. The crowd here in <laughs> Boston. Is, yeah. Back in my man, Optic Phase at the top. You'll see Toronto versus Rocker. They're at the bottom of the winner's bracket. And a little bit later, the Gorillas finding out who they'll face off against and who's dropping down. We kick things off, though, with a party here in the elimination. It's Carolina fighting for their lives. Let's start, though, with the big dogs because everyone's looking forward to that match number two. Talk to me about Optic. What have they shown you in this tournament back on land? Well, I mean, granted, they haven't had too much time to show me anything because it was only three maps. But from what they had, they look spectacular. Their comms are great, too. Like, they seem to have found the groove of when they need to really push the pace and when they need to slow down. In the hard point, the, like, you know, rotations were spectacular. Yeah. It was very close to, like, mistake-free Call of Duty, which when you have superstar players being able to play at those mixed phases, obviously, the results are spectacular. And, of course, if you have superstar Stars, it's plays like that on your screen where Fred just has those moments absolutely popping off. Yeah, and you know, I was thinking about this and I'm like, you know, everybody has been like, Optic's been so mid, this, that, the third. You know, typically these Optic rosters, they start off on a honeymoon where they're just frying everybody. Maybe people should feel a little good about this. You know, they played Heretics, they learned from them, they played basically the exact same maps. They come back and they 3 0 bop them on land. So maybe this is a good sign that Optic struggled in the online portion. So. On the other side, we have Atlanta Phase who hasn't slipped up. The only team that that went perfect 7-0 in the qualifiers. They 3-0 their first round of the winner's bracket. Selium and crew, they're looking like they're the team to beat here in Boston, Alex. Oh, easily. They were the team to beat before they even had to enter the building. I mean, are only undefeated throughout Major 1 qualifiers. And then they come on land and they do the same thing to the LA Gorillas. And obviously you could say, well, LA Gorillas, they weren't that strong of a team. They kind of slipped their way in. They are still here as well. They have been forcing their way through the elimination bracket. And they are the team that supposedly had been on watch during scrims. So for Atlanta Phase, this was still an impressive win. And they already know that they have their optics number because of the sneak peek we got earlier in the qualifiers when they beat them 3-0. Yeah, but remember, Ali, the last two times these guys played on land, it was Optic Texas who smoked them. So they know that Optic is some of their biggest competition. We'll learn a lot about these teams for the season the series coming up. Let's take a look here at our overall KD in the number one spot. Guess who it is? MacArthur! <laughs> it's still Mr. MacArthur! His Thursday performance is strong enough to give him the number one. You got Kleenex right behind him at number two, and you'll see the opponent there for MacArthur, Shati, coming in with a 1.51 chance. You could put Selim in like Yellowstone. He is old faithful <laughs> at this point. It has been years of utter domination. And honestly, very crazy that Kleenex, after two maps, had like a 4.0 KD, and he slowed all the way down to 1.6. So for Slow Selim, all the way down. yeah, to top <laughs> those charts still is kind of absurd. It is. The Selim old faithful imagery in my head is wrong. Let's move on to the other matchup that's happening. Toronto, Minnesota. It would be a bullet spray everywhere, Alex. Let's yes. talk a little bit about this next matchup. Still in the winner's bracket. You win here, you're into top three. Toronto Ultra has some of the best numbers in the game, and it's not an individual. The whole team has been contributing. Yeah, I mean, like you said, like their numbers are just ridiculous. You got Scrap putting up 5K damage from Rapid Hardpoint. You got Insight with a 1.5 in Search and Destroy. I don't even think I need to say Kleenex's numbers. Just go give yourself a look and see how they're performing. And that's why Kleenex in his interview said Envoy's the best player in the game because he makes it so much easier for everyone around him. That series was the most comfortable series we've ever seen a pro team win in the CDL so far. I'd be willing to wager that. So Toronto Ultra, they look unstoppable, but they're playing a very hot Minnesota Rocker team. In, in all honesty, my favorite numbers from Toronto, it's like the assist stat that they're bringing to the right. table. Like in hard point, the assist, it is every single one of those players is in the top 10 because everybody is able to contribute. So like Scrap's damage is nutty, but that means everybody else is there to collect the kills as well. So the teamwork from these guys on point. Toronto's taking on Minnesota though, the surprise dark horse in that winner's bracket. Nameless, you saw the potential in this team and they have showed it, but tell me about this individual rookie performance. Yeah, Linz, I mean, he's been incredible. It's, I feel like a lot of these maps have come down to crazy plays from Lin, staying alive in the control, finessing his life, being that last line of defense, clutching up in a hard point when you need him to, winning a one versus one versus Hydra when you need
you need him to. It's just like a level of poise that you don't expect out of rookies, he has so far. And, you know, when they were down and out and the superstars weren't performing on this roster, it was him who stepped up to the plate and took over until they started to play well. So for, for Minnesota Rock, I think they're happy with what they have in him, and he's making a case for Rookie of the Year. A great find from France. That's the second huge contribution to the league that we've seen. Alley Cat, walk me through the rest of the roster, though, because they have had some fantastic performances as well. Absolutely. Again, we all had our eyes on Giga Wake. You know, Giga. when was he going to wake up? And while well, we saw it in that map number one, even though there had to be a reset, the rest of the team stepped it up as well. I mean, Accuracy was having an incredible search and destroy. I think that was the most impressive map for me. If you go back and watch that series, Linz ends up 7-3. and three. It was a first blood battle back and forth, and I never thought I would say this. Minnesota Rocker looked extremely aggressive, and I think that's what they're going to need and continue to do to push themselves through this bracket at Boston. You got to play fierce if you're going up against some aggressive players in their own right. Minnesota stays kicking, and they will face off against Toronto around 4.30 if our matches don't go long. Great stuff on days one and two, but here's how it all shapes up on day three. Five matches on this Super Saturday. We start with an elimination. We finish with an elimination. Optic phase Toronto and Minnesota in that winner's bracket at the middle. When we come back, we're breaking down that first match of the day. Surge, Royal Ravens, live from Boston. weekend to earn awesome in-game content. You can rock the Frostbite blueprint, charms, emblems, calling card, and get XP tokens. Be sure to link your account now to start earning. match of our Super Saturday. It's Seattle taking on Carolina. Welcome back in, everybody. I need Boston to wake up. All right, fans, it's time to put our hands together and welcome these teams because you got a legend in Clayster for Carolina on the other side. Surge looking to cause chaos. We don't have time to talk about the teams because they're ready to play. So let's jump right in with predictions. Chance, I'm feeling Carolina today. I got Felony and Clayster are staying alive. I'm taking the Carolina blue as well. It's a tough one to pick, but I like it. <laughs> Fans, use me as your Carolina button. The Carolina Royal Ravens are going to take the first series of the day. Three Carolinas. Do the thing, Nameless. I mean, at this Do point, thing. Like, no might as well pause some SVAs, lay on some <laughs> stairs. I got Seattle. Give me Seattle in this series. They look good. A boost has been great in the search and destroy. I think they take it. I just think they take it. Who said we agreed, right? All right, let's go to the main stage with Guy Blaze. Thank you so much, Chris, and I couldn't have said it better myself. This is a Super Saturday, and we got a marvel of a matchup coming to the stage. Both these squads got to give it everything they got because one has to go home. And the first team coming out does not mind playing villain. Make some noise for the Seattle Surge! <laughs> Everybody's 
been against them, but sometimes when you give a fierce competitor a chip on their shoulder, they'll take that and ride with it and use it as fuel, and that's what they did in the very last series. Everybody was counting them out, hoping they would lose. They bounced back immediately, and it was Illy absolutely popping off. 16,000 damage taken over in search as well. He's going to need to do it again. Let's bring out their opponents. Yeah, it's time to bring out their opponents. Trying to be the new heroes of the hometown. Boston makes some noise for the Carolina Royal Ravens. Give it up for Tej, Gwen, Fellow, and Clayster. The Carolina Royal Ravens. This is a team that none of these players are shy of having to dig themselves out of the trenches. You have Clay and Fellow back together as a duo, clearly showing how it can get done from the elimination side of things. For the Carolina Royal Ravens, all they want now is to make it to Sunday for the fans. Blaze, first match of Saturday. You ready? Oh, I am so ready, Allie. We know who the villain is and we know who the hero, but let's see what type of ending we're going to get. Merc, Maven, let's go on this journey. All right, let's get into it. Yeah, this is going to be uh, it's gonna be a fun one. I think it's gonna be interesting how this venue plays out. You heard the boo starting with Seattle. You know everyone's gonna be fighting for their boy Clay. Did you see that picture yesterday with Clay and Fellow back when they were on E United? Yeah, it's a long time ago. Yeah, right? That's yeah. wild. Yeah, it definitely was. I mean, you know, these guys, uh, they've been playing together. But, you know, then on the other side, you have Clay, who's going up against some of his former teammates. Uh, sure. You know, Illy, uh, Arsenis, people he has won world championships with. So, Hook as well, you throw into the mix. So, it should be a fun series. Yeah, okay, here's the photo. Yeah, this is uh, this is amazing uh, to see these guys, how long they've been out battling. I saw people just like quote tweeting this, like, well, I feel old. <laughs> One of those ones, like, it's been going on for so long. But listen, as an old man myself, I'm supporting Clayster and his run here. It feels right when that guy's on the stage. It just feels good, man. Uh, the You're not allowed to have bias, amazing. Clay. You're not allowed. All right, listen, I'm pulling for Carolina. I'll be honest with you. Okay, right. that's allowed. Okay, thanks. I mean, everyone else is going to be booing Seattle. <laughs> You're not wrong. Yeah. You're not wrong. Obviously, uh, you know, they take down Boston yesterday in that game five. This place but I, was, whoo, could hurt a pin drop, Joe. Yeah, we'll see here. Woo. I mean, the storyline for Carolina, their respawns have been better, right? Four and two in hard point with this roster. On the other side for Seattle Surge, the hard points have not been great. Control has not been great, but the Surge Destroy has carried them to this point. Just the key yesterday, they won that map number four, but who? He has been the one consistent factor for this team. The guy could be a nuke. Can Hook the nuke get it going? Or will Clayster and the lads keep this Cinderella run going? As the Ravens chants are popping in the venue, and I think that's what we're gonna hear throughout the course that they're gonna be fired up for that squad. On the mini-map and the baby blue, you'll have Seattle. Surge White will be representing Ravens in this one. I say that mostly for myself, because sometimes we have multiple blues and whites. I get confused, you know? The blues are a little different, though. Yeah, they are sure, a little sure, different, sure. but Seattle Surge, you lead, what does he take it down? Some time to go the way of Carolina, but on rotation, you have RCs, you have a booze already set up here at Cafe. I was saying to you yesterday, bro, I, I didn't see this, like, villain art coming for Seattle Surge. Like, when it first formed, like, they, you know, some guys with chips on their shoulder, guys coming back to prove stuff, and, you know, GA stuff goes down, and, like, suddenly, like, they're being booed. I didn't see it coming. Yeah, that happens, all the GA things, and you obviously have, they beat Boston yesterday, yeah, so that, true, that adds true. flame to the fire. And then, plus, in this one, as you said, just sort of Clay coming into this series, we know, no matter what, he is always going to have a fan base. But on this first push here at P2, a nice start for Carolina, but Gwyn going to open things up alongside Clay. Ooh. Clay, though, does he right. taking down some nice shots and a nice start there for RCs, but it's TJ. And we heard Clay talk about this yesterday, how much better TJ is in this title than in the past. Well, yeah, like he was that guy that was a game changer and then it sort of went away for a while. Like we're all happy to see TJ getting his. We know he had the ability to do it. And he has been popping off right now. You got a 20 or so point advantage for Royal Ravens, but Abuza is lining him up. Still soaking up the time that will be Carolina. You get ready now for this P3. If you are Seattle Surge, we'll see if they'll be able to answer back as Abuza is looking to keep this streak going. Yeah, he's gonna get caught though. And now with 10 seconds left, I think he's gonna spawn out. So you're gonna have a three on three here, I believe, if you yeah, are Carolina. Yeah. You see Abuza gonna spawn on up. They're gonna know this, right? 
They know he is so far behind. They're going to try to go. Now a four on two. You just saw the P2 break. You're going to have another one here. Carolina, if they can hold on to this first push, this is going to be a giant lead through our first few hills. Yeah, Hook's like, I'm out. I'm going to lie in the back of this truck. Everybody else <laughs> dropped around me, but it's a good play for him to try and stay up. Now repinches with his team, but Bellow is still holding. They know they were missing one, so the comms on point for Royal Ravens, but a chance to really get a big edge here is TJ and Bellow coming through on the feed. 80 to 24 the lead right now. Three in a row for Felony, five in a row for TJ. TJ Haley, pop it off here on the main stage. Yeah, trying to find this cruise missile. Does have Hook nearby, and I think he's going to take him out. But, you know, just going back to before that P3, you saw Abuza trying to find some slaves middle of the map. He gets caught, gets spawned down. That turns in to now this 50-point lead for Carolina Royal Ravens. You already see inside of P4. Who is it? It's going to be Gwyn and Felony trying to find this early setup. You got to deal with uh, some difficult things early on. <laughs> uh, of course it's Illy. Of course it's Illy. He picks him out. He's like, I know that spot. I am familiar with it. Yeah, we're, I, we might just be getting a little nasty in this match, dude. Yeah. But uh, it's going to be behind that kill from Illy. Hook with another one. Seattle do get on the points. This fellow just trying to get a, you know, a little, little fucking wash on the hill that we saw yesterday. A very strong spot. Don't use it at home. <laughs> respect your teammates and your opponents. I don't know how much you're going to respect you're going to see over the course of this one. Yeah, it might get nastier and nastier, but like for Abuza, for the Seattle Surge team, you know, one thing I was very critical of was the body language from this team when we saw them against Toronto Ultra. Yesterday, you kind of saw Illy getting loose. He was really feeding off the crowd. Like, they're booing him. He did not care. What were you just doing? Uh, that's what he was doing. I was trying to show you my little dance skills. All right, well, Clay's going to find two. Not the best dance skills out of you. Oh, but no. I think you heard from Arceus. He's like, dude, we just need to start having some fun, cracking jokes. He can be that guy. Carolina, though, still with a 25-point lead. Nice job by Seattle to get in and get some time there at P4. Plus win rotation. But where they have been struggling has been these early holds. They've been winning rotation, but it's been the breaks from Carolina, and you're seeing it right here. Now down to a 1v1 on the hill, but it's Illy who has been the pillar for this team, wins a big two. Illy now up to 10 and 9. He's going to hear it every time he is on camera. Nice <laughs> gets a little bit of revenge. Now back to Abuza in the hard point. See a fastball coming at him. He's able to avoid that. Clay starting to work his way up. Got multiple in front to deal with. Clay able to do it. TJ there with him. RC still lurking. That stun's going to hit. There's the info. Simtex to the back. That should trade out the kill. It does exactly that. And then TJ snaps onto another. 11 and 9, three in a row for TJ. 50 seconds of the hard point. Good work out of him. Fellow trying to find maybe top three position. Didn't realize there was two players there, though. But I mean, through first set, I, I think you're probably happy if you're Seattle because. You got broke P2, you got broke P3. I, I mean, it was a nice job towards P4 and P5 to find some of that time. For Carolina, this is just sort of the game that they have been playing. Everyone kind of taking turns. Nobody's really been struggling. Everyone around a 1.0 is Clay controlling top three. They have kept games close, but it's been their end game execution. has been finding wins in hardpoint. You kind of mentioned the interview with Arsides, you know, how he sort of said, look, we're just having fun, right? Like, there's some similarities between these teams, right? Like, neither are playing with pressure. I mean, or do you feel some now if you're Ravens because you started to prove a bit? No, I don't think there's yeah. any pressure on, on really on either of these teams. You, you are wrong. I mean, the fact is Seattle hasn't had much practice leading, yeah. leading into this event. But any? It, it's just sort of they're just kind of dealing with a different situation than Carolina. He's elite with another two. But on this rotation, Clay's going to have a big one-on-one. -on -one, but it's the rookie in Abuza who takes him out, leading the way with 14 for Seattle. TJ, though, does get taken down and traded because the nade did connect. 22nd advantage now for Royal Ravens. Next hard point ready to pop. And it early will be Arceus. But what can Clay and the boys do now to get him out of that spot? Clay's trying to get forward. Arceus going to get the angle through the window. Going prone is Gwyn. It's definitely it's able to look over him. They'll get him out of the point for now. They stopped the cross from coming in for Millie. So he can't rotate over to the hard point. So now another break looking like it for Royal Ravens. The hard point continues to look good. But we've got a tight one so far. And you're thinking the pressure on Ravens to absolutely get a win in this map one, considering you've won uh, one search and destroy. Yeah, well, it was yesterday, though, right? So maybe That's they're true. just better, they're better <laughs> on land. We'll see when yeah. we get to the map, yeah, too. They are an S&D land team, Joe. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's one way to put it. Get a very new roster on rotation, though. Carolina, they're going to break P2. They're going to get majority of this time. Yeah, TJ trying to work market time, but does get taken down. This is where you had to set up at P3. Last time through four Seattle Surge. 
but it was the break early on. Carolina, they're about to be up 50. Let's go to a listener with the Royal Ravens. Going back out, back out. Yeah, this is still right. What is this? Mid? On What's on mid? Yo, we spun 10. We spun 10. Ender's on you close. He's on me. He's on me. I'm pushing him out. I got him. Watch out. He's watching out there. Nice. I'm taking a route, bro. Let's go. I look over here. I'm broken. I look over here. Broken. Go. I'm Coops right now. I'm Coops. Watch him. behind you. I'm going to go top. I'm going to go top. I got you. I got you. I'm going to run in a bit of Booza. I'm going to go in your top. One seat right, Hugh. One seat right. Dead. One more seat right. One shot. Deep right. Booza mid. Booza mid. You have to hold your own mid. I'm behind me. In garage. In garage. In garage. Push. Nice. Two right. Two right. Mid and right. Mid and right. I spawn behind me. I'm mid. Yellow car. One front. One back. Front weak. I'm playing this. I got front weak. And top trips, top trips, going to new. Top trips, new. Top trips, new. Let's go, Teach! Let's go, Teach! Watch out, top new. Ender, Ender, top new with the trophy now. Top of the stairs. I'm pitching right, okay? I'm a little mid right now. I'm gonna go left here, too. I'm trying to get rid spots. I'm a little mid right now. Just waiting. Elliot, heard, heard, heard. I'm gonna go over mid to trips. What am I pinching? Yo, what's the little coops? Give me a sec, give me a sec. I'll tell you where the comms are on point. The objective time there as well. Now up over 200. Joe, what'd you like in that listen in? Uh, I mean, obviously they coordinated the push, but TJ just goes big time yes, towards the end. He's able to find that break again. An early investment for Seattle at P3, immediately broken by this Carolina team. That is the difference in this score. The P2 and P3 have been so much better for the Royal Ravens. And now you just have Gwyn slaying, just sort of roaming, controlling. You don't need to really focus on the time until your teammates get here. That's exactly what he does and now all the pressure on search no I, th I think that's a good point like the pressure is on search to get into that hard point you know how difficult it can be to lock that fountain area down this makes it easy for Gwen. pick after pick after pick finally you rotate in you got three in a row for your tj up to 22 and 16. you're 30 points away from a victory here father time is beaming carolina's feeling good i mean i love seeing this from tj 22 kills almost two minutes on the hill over to p5 though clay was able to sneak on through there is a trade Hello. this time it's over to tj he's able to find one now he's got a big one-on-one -on -one to try to break this hill, maybe win the game. He finds Illy. 15 more seconds for Ravens. TJ, moving and grooving. Five in a row, trying to snap back. Not quite able to win it, but you're so close to victory here. Clay gets one, traded through by Alec. And now you try to make this rally. You gotta be perfect if you are Seattle Surge. So much work to do, but here comes the four-man hit. You got a four on two near the point. One's gonna be rotating in behind you in Illy. Can you get there before Illy becomes a factor or does he get picked up? It's gonna get picked up by Fellow, but he's not able to win the fight. Into the mix we go, TJ, Clay, Quinn. They break through. A nade from Illy is able to hit, but you're still in right now if you are Ravens. Cutting Illy down in front, pushing out the cuts. Royal Ravens come in and strike first in map one. Dude, I, I, I find... All right, let's let them move first. Uh, I, I like, sorry, so, yeah, sorry, I enjoy that. I don't know what it is about this team. I guess, you know, I've been commentating a long time. And like, yeah, talking I, about father time, yeah. <laughs> I have wanted, like, to see this TJ, bro. Like, how many times have you and I been casting? You and I are together, like, six years now, where I've mentioned, like, I want vintage Tej. I want vintage Tej. And, like, he's coming. He is putting on TJ with a map. 27 and 17, almost 5,000 damage. Leads the lobby across the board. My guy is beaming. I, I don't know what you just said he, he was doing. But anyways, <laughs> the guy was cooking on this map. That is for sure i think the issue really with tj has been consistency map to map we have seen moments like this but we, not this level of consistency these last couple of weeks on this roster and i think for seattle you're probably gonna be frustrated with this because you had so many early p2 and p3 rotations control and it was just break after break from the royal ravens you're well, seeing just sort of the, the structure the fundamentals are not in place for search and, and i think it's like you can survive some breaks. You can. And they kept it close to four time. in a row. Yes. Eventually, it just breaks you down. You saw once you got in front, and once you get around that 200 point mark, and all the pressure is on you to have to play with maybe a little more pace than you're comfortable doing. You're having to go into spots maybe you don't want to. They just start to run away with here. Here's where they kind of just take over. Between the listen in and then Gwen there at Fountain, the transitions and the breaks, the big kills from TJ. I mean, TJ, that's, he's got like LeBron stats. 23 and 64 in a row. There are two minutes in the hard point. God does it all. Pop it off. Doing it all. Again, we'll see if he can keep it up. <laughs> 
Still a long tournament for this Carolina team. Still a long match. And now you focus now on Search and Destroys. We're taking a look at the game flow. Just keeping that lead. But really, the P2, the P3, that is the difference maker on this map. But, I, I mean, Search and Destroy, as you said, it has been a struggle point for Carolina. On the other side for Surge, this has been their bread and butter. But, like, sometimes... Have you been in a position in your career where, like, yes, you've been bad in probably Surge? Probably in, like, every position, yeah. yeah. Probably, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, yeah, now you know all the positions very well, Joe. But... Where your search is bad, but like once the hard point clicks, like you make a roster change, like you get so much positivity just through the respawns that kind of like leaks into the, the choices. I don't know, search destroy, you start to find success there. I mean, I, I think it's just this is such a new team. They're they're working through through the map pool, just taking a look at the maps and modes. You know, we were talking in the dream room. One interesting thing is that map too. This search and destroy, as good as this has been for search, they are 0 and 3 on this map. So, you know, for the Surge, the storyline still a respawn. You're what, eight and four in Surge, so three or four losses yes, are here. Yes, three of your losses are here, right? Storyline for Surge, still a respawn. The storyline for Carolina, if you win a Surge, the match might be done. This is what you are looking at here. That's what we were thinking yesterday when they won. When they went 2-0, I'm like, all right, well, here we go. That that was a hell of a moment. We're gonna take a look at our Monster Energy pregame as we get deeper into this one, get ready for the map two. Break it down for me for Seattle. Yeah, last five matches, well, you can see 3-2 win versus uh, Boston, 3-2 win versus Miami. On the other side, it's just really, they've been getting smoked. And when their search isn't great, that's when those losses versus Rocker come into play. And yeah, it's their respawns, three and eight in the la uh, last 11 hard points, six map losing streak in, in control. It hasn't been great in the respawns. But sometimes when you're the villain, when the boos are roaring, you stop caring, you have some fun like Alex said. I wasn't sure if that interview, if he was trolling us himself, the fan, I didn't know really what, what he was doing, but you distinctly hear it here in the crowd, man. They are pulling for one side and uh, where the frustrations might be looming on Seattle, you see nothing here but uh, smiles and gas on the side of Carolina. Yeah, now we're gonna take a look at the Monster Energy pregame here for Carolina Royal Ravens. I mean, you have the crowd on your side, that absolutely helps, but the, just the focal point's gonna be around that hard point to get the job done in map number one, six game win streak. Wow. That is, uh, yeah, unreal from We've them. And then, all of them. Yeah, oh, Cloyster yeah, yeah. <laughs> Magic alive and well. We'll see. Can he get to a? Can we? Can he get to a Sunday? It's been a long time. Now this has been fun for us because I know, like, uh, as Caster Jane kind of, we don't pick our matches. You know, you sort of get. This is what you're casting. Like, all right. Well, we've sort of been a part of since this team shape has happened with Carolina. We've been part of all six hard points. Been a part of this team improving. It's been fun to watch this road and. Now you're fighting to get a little deeper in this tournament. Maybe a top six berth. Maybe you start shocking people within this bracket. Well, you already did shock one team. Sure did. Took it, New York able to take advantage of that United partnership quickly. Fly on home. There you can see map two for Fellow. Now it was on Invasion, but nine and three. He can be a, a superstar in Search and Destroy. Now they have played this map once, they are 0-1-1. But again, for this roster for Surge, 0-3. We'll see if they can learn from those mistakes. The decision making was there. You were getting things done on Invasion. What can you do now on Karachi? You get some info if you were hooked. A felony up top. Can he shotgun him here with the rival? As he continues to hunt, what kind of timing is he going to find? He's got eyes on multiple. There's Clay. TJ just able to get away. He's at least able to stay up. Where's Gwyn? This is who you're waiting on. Gwyn able to get inside a bottom fountain. Finds one, so it turns into a three-on-three. Three. But Elite and Search and Destroy, that is like uh, peanut butter and jelly. Those two always go along so, so well. So Elite's going to give that man advantage. Bomb down towards B. Unless you hate jelly, Joe. That's true. Or you're allergic to peanut butter, I guess. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. sucks for those people. It really does. Gwyn gets the kill. Up to two. Damage in. Just trying to get health back, but... He wants to peek it. Arceus continues to hold. Felony able to get through there on the tray. Now one versus one, 20 seconds time. to go. Bomb down towards B. Nabuza has no idea, but you not have the bomb. Fellow's just kind of playing for the kill right now. Putting out this timing goes. Nabuza up towards top satellite, and you just see. He thinks they know bombs down, but really they had no idea. Abu's are going to go all the way back to A just in case. Just going to camp a corner. We're not going to have a fight. Fellow ops for the kill does not work out. Surge on the board. And that's just one thinking they're playing around the bomb, and they just aren't. Yeah, no. Yeah, they think bombs maybe down B. Maybe they have the idea for it. He's uh, top three, maybe working a flank, but doesn't happen. Yeah. Just goes for the gamble. And he doesn't have the information we do. He's got a free plant the entire time, but <laughs> we've got the mini map. We've got x-ray. He does not. 
dude. <laughs> this crap is killing me. I love it. So you go up 1-0 if you are Surge. Nice start. Some big plays there from Gwen. You kind of lose that patience battle, maybe to Arsides. Might be able to get three within the round. Put them into a two versus one, but still some solid, solid work done within that round. Can who can get loose? It's Illy once again making an impact early. Gwen taken out of it. Nice shots from Hook. Felony is able to pick up one, but suddenly it's just Felony by himself again. Yeah, just the early first bloods going the way of Seattle Surge, just using their numbers, securing these rounds. Can Fella pull off something magical? Well, I'm not playing it yet. No, nope. the answer is he will not. As they just all storm his position, able to take him down. Yeah, one in front low, tries to snap high. <laughs> Can't deal with all the players soaring at them. So far, so good for Seattle. He does some great work. Illy. He's three and one to start us off. Uh, speaking of the two rounds, you got a first blood from Hook, a first blood from Illy. So you got to start getting some of these first bloods if you're Carolina and you're starting to bring it back. And I mean, these are just simple break offs, right? This is just what Surge is doing. They're finding the openings. <laughs> It's so good. Yeah, I think our production team's just trolling now, just going back and forth. You gotta play in the crowd. Why yeah, not? I love it. I love it. Can you find an opening kill? If you're Royal Ravens, Gwen. Oh, hit. oh no, I don't think it does. And Hook is just laying behind the barrel. He's able to get his second in. You trade that pretty quickly and efficiently, but still another first blood technically up for Seattle Surge. I, I can't believe Hook just threw a smoke and tried to run through right there, but maybe he thinks he's all alone B side. But now yeah, with that pick, fellow up to four and one. Again, was so good. Versus New York in map number two. Leading the way, but his team is down. Need to close out on this one. Nice gunfight win for Clay. Illy, 1v3, able to find the first pick. You get that bomb planted, but don't count Illy out of this one. He's on three in a row, and he is hunting. He's actually read this pretty well. He's reading this. Oh, Clay! Tries to 360 off the ladder and get out of that, but he gets caught. Illy trying to clutch four in a row. Can he make it five? 20 seconds to go. Just looking for the angle, trying to get the height. He's going hunting. Trying to pass away. Slide back. It's Fellow putting him on gosh. skates there with the movement. My guy's playing on rollerblades. I, I think if that melee hits, round is done. I, I mean, a Woo. couple of bullets hits, and that's what Illy was going for. But with the Renetti, the lunge, mid lunge, is able to catch him, gets, a, gets away. I mean, we've all seen it in this Dude, title. We've Clayton. all seen it. The lunge. This yeah. title is insane. Bro, Clay just took a breath. Woo! We've seen that. <laughs> We're seen... <laughs> <laughs> gonna show both of them for a second. Oh, you guys are killing me. Oh, they were confused. <laughs> just like, stop for a second. But hell of an oh. effort there from Illy. Almost, almost clutches that round out. Well, he nailed it. He read it well. <laughs> he had the read. Nearly the play. There's a crowd, they are really getting into it. Big fans of Illy in the venue. Abu's to take it out of it, you finally get a first blood. Hook though, once again, early involvement and quickly they just drop. Illy, RC through on the feet as well. TJ, the Iceman, left alone now one versus three. Yeah, but I'm not playing it yet. He's actually snuck on through here, but you see all of those arrows just kind of hunting for him. They know maybe he can move in this spot, and RC's gonna play on the other side of the bomb, so the timing not there, but I, th I think Hook sees him. Saw oh, yeah. the shoulder, oh, and yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. good oh, luck, yeah. buddy. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. One HP. <laughs> you just jump out of the map, just do it, might as well. I don't know where that nade's going, I don't think he does either, and there we go. Oh, just Another a prayer. Another on the board. Please, <laughs> tosses it up. But the crowd starts chanting, trying to get in Illy's head, and they step it up some big kills. Answer back, make sure they can't find any rhythm. If you are Carolina, you finally get a first blood, but who can answer so fast? <laughs> in round five. Billy, seven and two. So far in this one. A much slower round here from Carolina. Just kind of waiting for those nades to land. They don't want to give up an early first blood, but who can, maybe, oh, he is behind enemy lines. He's this getting loose early every round. Like, yeah. oh, 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 do a little dance, make a little love. Who's dead tonight? 
my goodness, Clay with the shoulders hanging on, and well, first blood for Carolina. My, my, my guy's got moves for a 40 year old. No, that's you. Oh. RC brings it back to a three versus three, though. Instant answer from Gwen. Ilya Nabuza now. This is fast, though. You see the white arrows. They are not ready for this. This is a double Whoa. play into a two on two. Ilya already top three inside of the staircase. So bomb is planted, though. Advantage over to Carolina. Glacier's going to get caught. It's all down to the youngster, Gwen. 30 seconds to go. Gets the check, gets the info. Backing it up for now. Yeah, just taking his time. He went for the repinch, so heads up play. But you know they're going to check this sooner or later. Able to find one. Whoa! Almost snaps on Illy, and Illy able to win it with the pistol. It was so close. What a ridiculous round. But it is Illy with an ace up to nine and two. Holy Gwen just about snaps, but Illy. Going wild in map two. I mean, you, you, we've all been there, looking straight up, straight down. And call so the duty. fights are so awkward. They, so always, awkward. Always so just, we just saw either side there. of it. It's like, I, I, started, I started starting to shoot straight. So it's like your aim assist is backwards. I don't know what it is, but it's so much more difficult. You just can't look straight down. <laughs> Illy, nine and two with the streak. And the ace. 4-1 advantage and few uh, first bloods you've had for Royal Ravens. You've had two now. You've lost both those rounds. I mean, every single time, right? The pressure's kind of on this man. He, he has responded illy. He's leading the way. Surge through B and then kind of towards the middle of the map. There is that first blood, but quickly traded like from Rick, Seattle. Like Hook is just trying to get loose every round. Like they just play patiently and catch him, give themselves numbers. Like He's given him the opportunity, but you go back and forth, you get five in a row now if you're really one off the cruise. He's going to get traded out up to our cities now. This is one you've got to win if you are Royal Ravens. Due to the advantage, due to the scoreline. Hey, he's just going on a round. They're going to give up this eight plan, so he's going to check all of these corners, but you see where TJ and Clay are playing from. They're pretty much like, let them plan eight. We'll just go over that way together. Just don't want him to plan towards the B-bomb. You know how winnable this now becomes. Once he gets it planted, you're able to get a pick and get away. You likely win the round. It's a question of where is he going to play from. You saw him sort of stretch that plant. He's going to open this door, and there is the angle. So 15 seconds already off the clock, 7.5 to diffuse. So many angles to clear, but here comes Carolina. We'll see who gets the info first. Oh, well, that helps. Smoke out. He's on it. Pressure to him to do it, but he's just stuck it, and there it is. Clay with the distraction, I guess. TJ with the smoke and the defuse. But yeah, no, that smoke certainly changed things a bit. You're like, yeah, that helps. Yeah, no, that, that <laughs> literally changed. That. Obviously, RC's there in that situ situation. He's just playing the gamble, hoping he doesn't hop onto it. And crowd, props to you. I heard a couple of shushes, and you stayed quiet. So yep. thank you very yep. much during that defuse. We have a respectable bunch here, Joe. Yeah, something like Except that. Except when it comes daily. Yeah. <laughs> Your second round up now, if you are Royal Ravens. You haven't been able to capitalize on the first bloods yet. Maybe you got a chance to do it in this round. See number eight and three on the map. Yeah, what's going on? Okay, no, he's just under him. I was like, they yeah. just staring at each other. They look like a mini map, right? Like, <laughs> hey, door. what's up, dude? Do you want to fight soon? You want to open this door? You want me to open the door? But that that's not going to happen. You do have a booza. A very good position. Illy going to find that info and a first blood. When is a booza going to come out? It doesn't even need to. Illy, what's he up to 12 now? 12 and 3, putting the team on the back. Yeah, he is having an absolute masterclass here in map two. Up the felony now. He's been left alone several times. Not really a great opportunity to clutch outside of that 1v1 he did. A couple of 1v3s he's had a crack at. What's he going to do this time? Not going to be anything. It's feeding another one to Illy. It sees up to 13. What, our S&D record, 15, 16? Yeah, sounds about right. He's getting close to it. He's got a chance. Somewhere in that ballpark. But yeah, I mean, literally, they have a response. That is a great call from Surge. Kind of know they're going towards that bomb site. Have that crossfire set up. 
I mean, Ilya's got 2,500 damage. That's more than the Abusa, rest of his Abusa team has 500. Yeah, yeah. No, it is the Illy show, the Illy clinic here in map two. Boo the man all you want, but at least in this search and destroy, he is putting on three in a row again. See if they get the final round here. Royal Ravens, can you finally get something going? Illy right back into his bag. Second shot though, it's TJ able to take him out of it. Maybe a chance to win the round now with Illy gone. Hook though just waits in the corner. Green comes flying around. Easy pickings for Hook. Yeah, you kind of saw they were just going to go with an aggressive round, Carolina. They are stacking towards the B side. They have not slowed down. So once Gwyn. He gets taken out. Now you have a 2v2 in the attacking spawn, pretty much. Not the pillars. I'm so nervous for him, Clay, now into the 1v1. One of the younger players in the league versus the oldest, Clay. Abuza. Map on the line for Royal Ravens. Seattle can close it out here. I think he saw him. Clay gets eyes. Clay sends it, tries to get to the bump. Eddie. Stun gonna go out. Stun is gonna hit both of them, I think. And it's Abuza that is able to win it. They take the search and destroy off the back of a monster map for Millie. Yeah, I mean, uh, you saw Abuza throw the stun. Clay, though, threw one of his own. Is that what it was? Okay. Yeah, it just did not, it didn't blow like, up. It I, didn't blow up in time. It, it allowed Abuza to just kind of slide, snap, and you know how it is. Once you're kind of locked in, locked on that first player, I thought, get a little aim assist help. I thought the first time they hit both, I was like, wow. But no, nah, it makes more sense. So 1-1 one, one we go. A uh, fantastic opening hard point out of Carolina, answered by a monster map. 14 and four there from Illy, 2,700 damage almost, eight non-traded kills, three first bloods. He was doing it all. I mean, listen, I was trying to talk about it in sports, but to be in a hostile environment and respond, it takes guts, and he did it right there in map two. I don't think he cares. Yeah, he's like, yeah. whatever, man. Do we're here, we haven't been able to scrim any ball, we're breaking GAs, I don't know what we're doing one day to the next, let's come out and play. <laughs> And uh, it was a much needed map win, right? Search and yeah. Destroy has been the story for them. They were 0-3 on Karachi. Get the first one of the season for them there. And the control, what was it, like a six-game skid or something for Seattle? Yeah. Like, they have really, really struggled there. So, yeah, you needed that Search and Destroy badly. As we look forward, this so pretty expected, though, so far for you. Yeah, you look giant. I'm a big boy. Yeah, you are a big boy, but an athlete. There you go. Thank you, I appreciate you. Thanks yeah. for even, evening it out. I'll do what I can. Uh, before uh, I get a little too crazy here with my good buddy Joe, uh, <laughs> we're gonna get ready for a break. Uh, we've got two maps done, tied up 1-1, one, one, getting ready for the control, and we'll see if Surge are able to end this six-game skid, or will it be the Royal Ravens that'll take advantage as we head to break? Don't go anywhere. The Painted Alabrije bundle is available now in the Call of Duty store. Inspired by the folk art of Oaxaca, this stunning bundle offers colorful, vibrant, and mythical items you gotta check out. Start the season strong with the Call of Duty League Pack. Grab yourself the CDL Operator, Weapon Blueprint, and so much more. Check out the Call of Duty store in-game now.
And the rodeo here in Boston continues. Tied up 1-1. One, one. You have an incredible map there for Melee and Map 2. The crowd is letting him know every time he is on camera, but he ices up for the map 2. Now we go to Control, where Control has been abysmal for Seattle, but maybe they can get something cooking in the kitchen, Joe. I mean, listen, it hasn't been great for Carolina either. That's a very good point. Neither no. are great at Control. No, I mean, uh, I mean, Hardpoint has the been fantastic bowl? for this new, new roster. Five and two now with that map one win. Search Destroy over to Seattle. Game three, it is just a complete toss-up. So uh, is, this the, is this the map that matters most for you? Like, I, yeah, I mean, literally, what we have is that Seattle is horrid at attacking in control, and Carolina is horrid in defending in control. So, I mean, we're going to invasion. Wait, did our, did our stats guys use the word horrid? Horrid. Okay, that's not good. No, that's yeah. usually last. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's, not great. Last. that's not great. Okay. So it's not been great for either of these teams. Now, for this newer roster in Carolina, what, I think you played it one time. So 0-1 oh there, where Surge, you are 1-3. Yeah, so. but look at Gwen. He's been good. That's been good. Control this season, 1.18. We'll keep our eye on him throughout, but here we go. Map three, Surge, Ravens, the swing game. His audio, I promise, will happen eventually. Yeah, Maven promises. Who can he get to find a couple of kills? Is you have some pressure here over towards A on this break. And wait, he's just going to fly on through. There it is. The bullets are flying now. Fellow just going to try to play his life. Maybe you find a tick here. That's really what you're hoping for. TJ trying to watch the cross. And maybe with that, you at least get one. You got one tick. Going to pick up the cross will be TJ. Chance to maybe do more damage here. It's moving slow, but can you get a second tick? Felony able to get the kill from inside, so this is looking great. Now Fellow tracking back. TJ able to win the one, not able to get across, maybe to help him finish one here. that point. But you get two ticks, Ooh, the stun, the stun. able to hit. Who can illegally go clutch? But you do some damage there, Joe. Yeah, I mean, already two ticks over towards A. Now you're going to focus towards this B Street. The break off, pretty solid for Carolina. Kills wise, a couple for Seattle Surge to be in the lead. But a minute on the clock, you pause it for so long. But now Surge have an idea, right? You see already Abuza very aggressive through middle courtyard, just maybe trying to find the flank. Instead, he's going to find TJ off spawn. Yeah, TJ gets eyes on. Otherwise, you know, timing of that, depending on how it works out, he might get caught trying to come and reinforce the boys. 45 seconds remaining. You stop this, obviously, for now as you work progression on to B, but Illy is piecing still. Hook there through in the mid cut as well. Illy gets a third as Illy chops down the entire team, and now those blue arrows just push it on forward. Yeah, I mean, Hook, you'd love to find a cruise here. Five in a row, looking for number six. Very weak, and I, th I think you kind of see the comps. He doesn't want to overpeak. It's kind of like, hey, I am one away from this cruise. Nice team shot. He's able to find it. Gets the cruise, Abuza in on the mix as well. Swap into the rival and still cutting him down. Eight in one on the defense here. Well, it looks so good for Royal Ravens early. As you got two ticks on A, you have gotten zero progress at B. You are pinned back at Palace. Unfortunately, it's not a hard point, not the best position to be fighting from. No, I mean, yeah, great start. Wow. To get those two ticks over at A. But props to Seattle. I mean, when they got aggressive, they got so far pushed up, they had take control. And I mean, when you're in this spot right here, you're just watching the mantles. And what this does, right, is the attacking team then has to take a, a route all the way to top, you know, top fly, top American. That takes 10 seconds in itself. Yeah. So forcing them to have to reposition. I mean, that's the part, that's the longest I can remember a team like kind of pinning a team's palace like that. Like they had them on clamps and that comes down to really it's getting like a four down. Like a real clean four down on the B site allows them to move up quickly. Just get talked into some spots that are so difficult to deal with. I mean, Hook's literally in the game. Yeah, no, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. All in the game right now. Eight in a row for Hook. Only died one time in round one. Dude, him and his forehead just dominate right now. Let's see how far he can push this streak. As his teammates are dropping around him, trying to stay up. The read is there, though. Able to get one. Tries to. He keeps pre fire. Maybe he gets that kill, but pauses it for a second. Allows Gwyn to finally cut that streak short, but he obviously already earned the cruise in the last round. Illy is shooting right now. Yeah, it was a nice teamwork out of fellow and Colette. You had one more Dark Alley, the other one bro were broken, just kind of bait and switching back and forth, able to take down two, but Illy, he has just been the, the Terminator, as we have talked about. Saw it in map two. Bring it here in map number three as well. You're still trading pretty efficiently. If you're Royal Ravens around the point, so 45 to go. Pretty similar situation to what we saw last time. There is 
where your bits of control are flipped. You're about to get your second bit of progress now on B. You should be able to get the extension here. Royal Ravens never quite able to do that, never able to work this B zone. And really, you had a couple of players from Seattle off spawn just kind of show some presence over towards mid courtyard and A Street. And what that did is that forces three to four members of the Ravens to have to go over towards A. So you don't really get a chance to retake B and stop the progression. Maybe play around the 45 seconds. They're thinking, don't let them get to A. Let's not throw this round. And now, yeah, you'd really like to lock this down if you're Ravens and just be down, what, one segment if you can. You got two at A. You give up B, but. Can you just put them on clamps now from this spot? Hook gonna get spotted, Hook still finessing, not gonna win that child though, is TJ able to do it, not able to lock down the second and hunting for the trade, it's Clay that's just chasing him, making sure with that pistol, RC's not quite able to get away. And Felony's gotten all the way deep on bridge, so they wanna deal with him, vehicles exploding everywhere, eyes through the smoke for Abuza. Gets the kill. Yeah, a little bit different here. A lot of the times when you see one player sort of in this spot over towards the Humvees, what does the attacking team do? They try to just work B Street, but this time it looks like they're going to opt to go through Courtyard and Cafe, try to cut off the Carolina Royal Ravens. Is Hook able to find the first? Still has the cruise at some point. I'll have to use that, but that's going to be too dead. Now to get on to the point. I mean, this is great for Carolina. I'm oh, sorry, Seattle. Yeah, yeah, really chance to do something for Seattle. But you got one player in Clay. He's all the way up by Palisade. He will drop when trying to clutch up. First bit of progress, just about to be done. You'll get that objective work in. Arcee's still getting the big kills. TJ finally able to trade that out, then send it forward. TJ goes clutch them with two to clear them off the point. I got 30 seconds left to work with, but you get some more objective work done, maybe favor towards the round five defense even more. Yeah, already two more ticks than the uh, than Carolina. And I got a little nervous there. I mean, who with a rival in that spot, how many times has a rival come in clutch over towards A? Maybe could have pushed, yeah, true, pushed true. this to a second, maybe a third tick. But 10 versus nine, round not over yet. But with those couple of kills, really gonna slow things down here as you only have two players push on up of the map, make it one as Illy, the last man standing, does get taken down. Carolina should tie this up. Okay, so they'll tie us up at 1-1 behind two segments as you stated. Now what can you do on offense? Cause you know, first time at it, you find some success early. It's what felony that was really kind of soaking up the objective work over at A. But what do you need to change it? B? Is it like, is it at least that one, like four down? It was so clean, it kind of screwed them? Well, I mean, if you opt to go for A, right? Uh, obviously, you, you know, you're, they're going to spawn you up. And yeah, that's it's just- It's a risk reward. That's it, what it it's, is. It's an absolute risk. If they have tank control, you're just put into a really tough spot. I mean, that's yeah. just what it is. You're, you're hoping to trade out tank with nades and stuns. That's what most of our attacking teams do. And then it's just sort of a, a battle through the alley. They just never got there. No, no, they couldn't get out at all. They were in a vice grip right back to it rc's though taking Gwen out of the action early you have tj and clay kind of keeping them honest towards b as you see at number seven and belly starting to track back it looks like that's going to be the opening focus but they've yet to find a kill in this round is hook doing the damage now Gwen off spawn back into it you have three in a row right now if you're fellow there's two kills through there's some possession now of that B site. Yeah, it was kind of just like, a, I mean, split right through the middle. If you were at Carolina, just where do we want to go with this attack and what that did, it forced RC's and Abuza to stay home at A. So they're just going to stay there. They find a couple of players over towards B. This should be B done. Maybe you send one more hit at this. If you are Seattle Surge, just to waste some time, waste some lives. That's going to be the play call, but TJ snaps on a hoop. Uh, just showing his vertical there. Got up high, wins the gunfight. TJ, an absolute athlete. Nice shots from RC. It's not easy. Placer just getting beamed off that palace wall, Heady. But B now done. Extra minute put on. You got two minutes to work with lives. Basically even. Now you group up and try to deal with this if you are Surge. You still got some forward position here with eyes on their spawn. It's Abuza trying to stay up, trying to get some damage in. Yeah, I mean, now if you're Carolina, you got to put some pressure on A, right? Just talking ticks for round five defense. Yep, yep. They are down still, even with getting B. I mean, even if they're our best teams in the league, this can be so, so hard to do. RC's Nilly, so far doing a great job. 
Clay, though, keeping a presence here mid. Clay gets two. Felony then with the third. Clay will get dropped. Arsenis almost able to get two there. But now you, you've got now, right? You're not fighting out of Palace. You're not fighting through the B Street. You've got up into the mix here mid map. TJ trying to get in behind enemy lines, do what damage he can. You're starting to build this push. Maybe one more pop from that pistol, and you can make him pay. But it won't happen there. Nate threw over the top. The trophy is ready and waiting. You still have three here defensively for Seattle Surge. Your first real look towards A. You come up empty. I mean, you had them all pinned. You saw all the blue arrows. They were all just sort of around mannequin, around towards back gas. Just a couple of picks. They go the way of Carolina. Then you are just getting on to that point, but it does not happen. So props to Serge Abuza with two more. And now 45 seconds on the clock. As you, you're a little bit staggered here if you are the Ravens. You got to slow things down. That's just not happening. Abuza with two more. You really had one moment where you sniff day. And now Surge get into an aggressive position again. It seems that like they are the most comfortable and they are bringing the fights to them close to spawn. Yeah, it's two kills, but you're gonna need another wave if you're gonna get near this point. Trying to send it in. Clay centering, not quite there with the pistol. Orshi just stays prone. Orshi gets a second off the tail end of that and then a booze of guns, TJ. Everybody dropped him back to spawn. You are not going to get there in time if you were Royal Ravens. This will be a 2-1 edge for Surge as they're looking good defensively. They absolutely are, and this is where they have struggled, but only giving up five ticks through two rounds now, so... You gotta think, unless this is the cleanest round we have seen on Invasion, they should have round five defense if we get there. Yeah, yeah, no, you have to have a remarkable defense. Or Seattle just take it on offense and close it out here. A little ass at Seattle. Yeah, <laughs> but some, sometimes you know, like, how it is, Ben, these map threes, like, back-to-back -back defenses... Or back, sorry, back-to-back -back offenses, like if you are. <laughs> oh, crying. It's the B early if you are Seattle. Yeah, so just going to offer this. They know, just playing around the ticks. They're going to find the opening three kills, and that's clean. I mean, trophies down. That's pretty much, that should secure B. Hey, Carolina off a of spawn. They might go for this. It's one more time, but it may not really matter. You already have Hoop pushed up. It's sort of cutting off your reinforcements. He's able to find one. Only a second tick in. Yeah, four in a row for Arsenis currently. Make it five now. Be about to be done. Now you're going to have to hold this and hope you get it to a round five or you need to win an offense where you found very little success. But Hook wanted to maybe get this done in transition. We now get going. Can he get streaks onto Arsenis? Maybe that come into play. You have so much time to work with. That was so clean. You're up five lives already with over two minutes to go. A chance to maybe just bleed him in the lives department. It's just so hard to get the... You got to get into A usually a couple times to stop that clock if that's going to come into play. I'll tell you what. I mean, they, they have just really outslayed Carolina here. It, Massive. Just saw in the last round just how many multi-kills have come through. Just their guns are hot after that. Map number two. RC's on seven in a row. You're plus 20 or so. I think it kills. Yeah, you are frying them in this map three. Now you have two players on A. Remember, Hook still has the cruise. Maybe he opts to use it off a of spawn if these two players can stay alive. Trophy is down for now for Abuza. They see it's going to come in, but Fella with the Renetti able to take down two. But as you said, you're down eight lives. Hook is going to use the cruise. They still have one on our cities. I don't know if like that time stop there is enough to make this come down to lives, but if it does, it's that. It's just those 15 or so seconds. Because you've got 90 to go. You're down to 12 lives. This is going to be interesting. You need to be very efficient here if you're Royal Ravens. So you're going to take this defensively, but it's tough to be efficient when Ellie's shooting like that. Yeah, I mean, the other problem is you still have much, much map control, but there's going to be three dead. You have to get a little bit pushed up, try to waste some time here if you are Surge. That's going to be four dead. So they're hanging on for now. We're into a minute. You see the white arrow starting to get forward. Yeah. Because if you turtle, you're just going to get picked apart. Yep. It's like you don't want to turtle, but you also just... You don't have the lives to mess around with either. So getting a little aggressive, get a little risky. Terrifying as well, that's another wave. I mean, that really helps you. What, you get a four down? You get three clean after that? You're only down five at this point. Clayster now pushed up the bridge as well. You seem to be in a good spot. You survived a scary moment if you're Carolina. Still a lot of work to do in this map three, but you survived. A survivor now, but looks like they're gonna focus on Clay. See the way Seattle just playing very slow around the picks. The picks have not gone their way. To be eight in a row as a team. 
play looking for number nine, maybe 10, maybe 11. If they, all three of those players would have lined on up, still 20 seconds left. impressive, Joe. If they all lined up, yeah, we've <laughs> seen it before. Yeah, it's true. Yeesh. But here we go, maybe with that gunfight, 10 seconds surge, they are going to fly on through. Illy, the man forward, can you get to the point? If they somehow got here and stopped the clock, not did a shot. Happen. But yeah, they're not going to get there. So to round five we go. You're going to have to win this if you were Carolina on offense. One of the more difficult things to do in control, an invasion offensive round win. But you and I have cast, uh, cast a lot of these where like there's no success in offense, then suddenly you, you come out in round five, doesn't matter at all, and you, you win it. I mean, we've watched a ton of invasions, right? I mean, yeah, I'm sure yeah. there's a couple of offensive round wins where you get beat first, but let's be honest, where we see the most success is this A break. They can get it off the start of the round. That is the difference maker. Yeah, it's like you're watching the NFL, you have that chance to win. It goes up a lot when you're able to get A. Can they do it? Both rounds, they kind of want to flirt with A. Didn't really get a chance it. to early in round three. This time, they're going for it. They're on it. Their player dies over towards B. They're only getting some big kills. How much damage can you do? The difference here, you have two players on it. In round one, you had what? Just felony there. Now Gwyn with a big kill. The damage is getting done almost near the second tick. Yeah, but going go ahead and call on the cruise. There's a cruise bail out. He does get felony, but you still have two inside. Now everyone's gonna fly. All three players going. TJ and Gwyn inside trying to do it. You are so close to getting that done. But you do some damage there with two ticks, but. I, I thought we saw Fella throw the trophy. I don't know if the names blew it up. If, if somebody shot, I thought that would catch the cruise, but doesn't happen. The fact that that finds the opener, that could potentially be the round or at least the eight points. So with the cruise, with that extra streak, yeah. able to hold on, and now the focus over towards B with Clay. That's one of those few times where it feels like a cruise might be all the difference in a round. Like, we haven't had many of those moments, because remember last time this exact sequence happened, you got pinned back and dropped if you are Royal Ravens. You just could not work your way outside of Palace, and you got to make a decision now. Do we go for that one final tick? Do we just get some clutch kills and get out towards B? Felony was thinking he might try to get across, keep them honest on that side of the map, but he's going to lose his one-on-one. -on -one. But this is big. They never really got to this spot. They couldn't get past the tank. Now they have a chance, but who's going to win one back down as he has been? 25 seconds left. They are down seven lives. Surge starting to beam throughout this map. Have to play around this objective and pause the clock. They did such good work off the break, but it may not be enough. You're still okay. No 12 seconds to go. Nate clears out one, but you still have a body here where they've avoided like that clean four down, where they fully get reset. They've avoided that, so it's been trade after trade after trade. You're down five lives. You're looking to get this extra minute now. First tick is done. Trying to get this pro uh, progress. Gwyn battling here, trying to stay out, finessing away with his life. Second tick just about done. Felony getting a big one. TJ trying to hit the pre-fire. So he works to get back to full HP, and he's able to win that. Second bit done. Just want this extra minute, TJ getting the big kills. 27 and 29, he's gonna stay on it. The rest of the guys getting ready to go. They're trying to catch him with their pants down if they can. You're able to get one pick there on the edge, Joe. Well, I mean, you just put so much pressure on if you, that if you were Surge, but There's you didn't find any kills. And now you have map control if you are Carolina. So you only need one tick. Too. Fellow already towards gas is able to find one. Two dead right now. Can somebody get on the point? TJ with the third of boots in the last match. What I say, sometimes round five, it doesn't matter. Throw all the stats out, toss them. They are on the brink. They got 11 seconds left to work with. They clutch up TJ with some huge kills down the stretch. And Seattle are shocked. And honestly, you just kind of saw it. Seattle had a decision to make. Do we try to end this game? And they went for it one more time. You had three or four spawn up back blue. And it's like, do we just give it up? Rotate over to A? That never happened. You had one player try to work up the A streets. And they kind of got caught. Yeah, and they no, give up so much map control. And I think you just, you, you saw the play call so quickly there from Royal Ravens. Like, 
the second they got that three down, they know they sent another wave. They thought they could catch them. Three of them just send it, bro. And like you said, was RC's got picked first, I think, up base three, and that was the opening they needed. We're going to watch this one more time. The final moments of this is it is uh, just a thing of beauty. We'll check out this replay. Watch the final moments for a minute left. Felony, getting things done early. Yeah, I think it was TJ who was able to find two more. And yep. then it's Abuza all by his lonesome. You're hoping he gets one. You see the close spawns come in, but Quinn with the pistol able to get on the point. All the players for the Ravens are there, but really the decision is before that. Yeah, yeah. When you are Carolina, you're on B. They search spawns up, goes for it one last time. Three go dead, and that was the game. And a lot of times in those situations, like, you'll get three kills if you're the offense, but, like, you lose three. Like, it's it's effectively traded, so you can't really get a presence of the point. But, like, that first kill on to Alec in the street. Like, that's that first domino that allows them to get the edge. Then TJ with two, a multi-kill. It's big in that sequence, obviously. But very rarely do you, like, get three, and, like, you're like, oh, hey, the whole team's still up. Like, that doesn't happen that often when no. you're pushing at it. No, it doesn't. So, just, I mean, props to, to Carolina. Thought they were going to get eight done, maybe off the break. Doesn't happen. Got two ticks in. Uh, now a, you're up to one, controlling the respawns. That was an awesome round five. Like, that was an entertaining one. What did Surge do yesterday? They were able to clutch up, win this map four to get us to a game five. We'll see if they do it here again. They show what they're capable of, Surge and Destroy. We know if they get this to a map five, this Surge team can get it done. They can get a series victory. You're thinking of your Carolina like, no, 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 we're good. We don't need to see another Surge. So let's close it out. We somehow are becoming a respawn powerhouse with this team change. 110th career tournament for Clayster. Lord almighty, that is uh, that is impressive. Like, listen, I know in the green room sometimes, like, we got to study you and, like, you know, roast players sometimes be like, oh, dude, we can come back, put us in a spot. Like, you know, you guys have that fun conversation, but, like, no, we don't. I think whenever you guys are talking about Clay, you're, everyone's just sort of like, it's just impressive. <laughs> like, no, it is. It's just impressive he's still doing this, man. No, he, I mean, it's just not only the way, he, it's the way he's doing it as well. Like, we're seeing him still kind of be the same old Clay, have these pop off moments, be so clutch and search and destroy. Obviously, you're going to have some bad maps, right? It's just, tends to happen but yeah it's just so consistent well, i said that to you like you know he has moments where he just looks like that you know vintage clay and then you'll have the dud and you kind of said like well listen you're not you don't have those god squads anymore like, that's much more likely to happen when you're on a middle to lower pack team it is oh yeah i mean you're gonna get put in the dirt so if your team's getting fried then you're gonna get fried that's just the way and, and he's a guy goes. that's always played from momentum when he gets to his spots when he is on fire like he'll tear it up and less open opportunities for those when you're sometimes getting just pounded yeah, we're going to see. Uh, take a look here at our hard point break metrics between these two teams. Uh, big difference here. I mean, 11th for Seattle Surge. They have struggled in that category. Their hard point has struggled on the opposite end. Carolina getting better and better. Five and two with this new squad in hard point. It's a storyline we did not see happening with this team change. I didn't think, oh, they're going to be one of the better hard point teams <laughs> in the league. So. Like, I think I was trolling. Like, when you were like, is the new roster? I'm like, new? We got to find new. Like, when they, when they put this together, because I was like, oh, we are just, we're just throwing whatever together at this point. Like, you know, people joke friendship league. That was sort of my first thought. I'm like, oh, he's like, dude, come on back. Hey, fellow, what's up, buddy? Let's get it going again. But it's working. And I think it was Octane sort of tweeted yesterday, like, let this be like a recipe to other teams. Like, they were struggling. They went out there proactive about making changes. They found improvements here, but at the same time, I, hindsight, I mean, we've seen, we've seen this a million times where people do make changes and they're still ass. Yeah, no, I mean, you should make changes. You never know, really know how it's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. And proactive, I mean, Real's visa just didn't go through. So that's true. That uh, puts them into this position. <laughs> it certainly does. But as we chat through things, we get ready now for the map four. Carolina looking to close it out. Get it up here. Avoid a map five. As we stay on invasion, TJ. Take a look at a map four he had early in this tournament. Losers round one against New York, 21 and 13, 1.62, 3,500 damage in 79 seconds in the hard point. Teach throwing it back on the map and with time. And obviously, I mean, Seattle, they were shooting well in that game three, right? But Carolina feel like all the momentum is on their side. Can Carolina close it out here? We go into a game five. As well, it's gonna be three dead start, make all it right. all four dead. Now, what do they want to do off this? They actually read the spawns for a moment. Fellas going to be the first one to get caught, but with that close gas spawn, two dead. Yeah, he just tried to get aggressive and see if you can get a good time. And yeah, you lose a few, but you're still soaking up a bit of time inside the hard point. You get 10 or so seconds, and things start to fall apart. So good job from Seattle Surge off of spawn to get right back into this as the race is on. Thinking about our next hard point with 20 seconds left to go here in P1. Yeah, you have a, one player over there in clay inside of the hill. RC's able to win that gunfight. 
Bellowed cutting off the reinforcements. I thought he had both, but Hook with the rival going to connect. But early on, you already have a trophy down. TJ with the first kill, so we'll settle down as what 12 second lead here for Seattle Surge. Yeah, it's pretty clean. From the pop of our next hard point, you're able to get to your spots, get your utility down. Now you just gotta hit your shots, make sure the comps are on point. Is Hooke and Gwen just exchanging bullets for now? Is the rest of the fight going down near the points? Felony is popping off on one side. Felony able to get three. Abuza, Hook, Illy all through on the feed, but it's still Felony here trying to dance. Hook goes vertical over the dumpster. So Hook finally was able to win that gunfight against Gwen and get the last lap of the hard point. Yeah, I mean, this is what you want if you are Seattle, right? Trap them back towards Palace is with P3 coming on up. So they're playing very conservative with the spawns. And you will take this split time. The fact you don't get a full 40, 50 seconds out of Carolina Surge is going to take this all day. Once again, trying to get aggressive. It's Hook that's got the angle. He's got TJ's number. Hook able to get both. Like, they don't expect them there. As they're trying to get them to make cut, he gets right back to that dumpster, stuffs their corpse inside of it. Oh? Yeah. He gets freaky. Violent. Next hard point up. Seattle Surge, they'll have the early time. We'll see what this time Royal Ravens are able to do. I mean, this is just that early setup. You bought yourself so much time with map control. 12 seconds left. The first heal that's going to come in. And the second one, Hook is locked Beautiful. in. We saw his hard point stats. He has been the consistent slayer for this team. Up to 9 and 4. Just kind of roaming around with that rival. Had the MCW. But obviously, this early rotation. Again, the way they were able to control the right side of the map from P2 sets them up here to take the lead. How far are they going to be able to push that out? You've already given up on this. If you are Royal Ravens, just looking to set up for next. And then thinking even another step ahead, you've got Illy, who's already rotating over to Palace. So you're playing this one and two hard points ahead for these squads. Can you find some success in this? Is now you'll be, what, down about 40 points as this next hard point gets ready to pop. Gwen, ready to soak up the time. Nade in, will do some damage, but still left for now. Yeah, you're going to see where those spawns come up if you are in Carolina. So now they have an idea with Illy taking this long route. Where this push is to come in from. So you, you need this time if you are Carolina. Maybe you can get pushed out and flip the spawns, but not happening right now. Yeah, yeah, it's one of those things like if you can get 20, 30 seconds, then flip, sure, awesome, great. But will they be able to do that? But pushing all the way forward, getting caught, going to be hooked. You get three through on the feed now if you are Royal Ravens, but the safe side spawn still there for Surge. Looking for a lead change in the next 10. Where's the chance come to flip? Or are you just not going to give it to him if your Surge play is very safe? Yeah, I don't think they're going to give it to him. You're still going to get a little bit aggressive up this street, but pretty much with where your players are, you're going to spawn on the left side of the map. Clay off the of spawn there. You see Illy's position. RC just pushed out on this street. Locking things down, but you kind of said it. They're playing so far ahead to try to cash in with this Palace Hill. I mean, I'm talking about the rotation for Ravens to four. And yeah, Illy was already ahead of them on five. So, yes, they were making sure. They had position here. We've seen the breaks, though. They have come on this point. It is certainly possible. First guy you're going to have to deal with on one side of it will be at number three in Abuza as he's on bridge getting shots while well, you got to deal with Hook who's trying to flank you. First and foremost, then you start to work your way up the map. Abuza, who's been waiting patiently, able to get felony. The call to come on the other side. Fluke, uh, Hook right back to it. He's just trying to get in behind enemy lines again. He's able to get a kill. Keep kind of keep staggering this, just making sure they're not able to get it easily. If you're a Seattle Surge, you got to win this map. You're trying to get to a map five. Desperately, the comms have got to be on point. The energy's got to be there to listen in we go with Seattle Surge. Yo, wait, one got top before, top before. Let me tank, guys, okay? Top before there. Nice, nice. I'm gonna help you on the left, give me a sec. Clever was me tank. Can you want you wanna play the guy? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm stunned here, I'm probably dead. Yeah, you're done, you're done. Yeah, I'll get all good, I'll get He's ace indeed though. I'm gonna take one follow them, guys. One shot. Fellow, I'm behind okay, yeah, that's, that's right, that's right. Absolute fellow, absolute fellow. One back out, back out, back out, back out. I'm waiting for you, I'm waiting for you. Yo, back P1 door. He ran P3, hold on, hold on, I'm behind P3. Yo, yo, he's still in P3. He ran now. He jumped down, he's behind the desk, 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 he's I'm hitting that. Front DVD, front DVD, front DVD. Uh, front DVD. Uh, front DVD. Uh, he's still there. Watch out, watch out, front DVD. Like, like, on the back, back, blue dead. Oh, 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 DVD. Yeah, we flip. I'm trying to shoot. Yeah, two on time, the fellow's there, shoot there. Front DVD, I'm pretty sure. Quick, 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 quick
You hear who frantically coming, and now you get ready for our next hardcore. We got ourselves a game 10 points separating these squads, Joe. Yeah, I mean, but you get a couple of spawns here if you are Seattle. I don't know if Carolina is going to be ready for this, and now they are. So, yeah, yeah. yeah TJ spawn up Palace. He's going to give them calm. But really, what Illy and Hooker are going to try to do right now is just stay alive and have spawns for P3. But Clay goes on a big repinch, and he's able to find one, go in with another one. So now both teams fighting over middle of the map. But it's going to be Seattle Surfers probably happy with where they're spawning up right now. But I think through that listening, I mean, props to Carolina. They negate most of the lead that was given. Yeah, yeah. Two, I mean, Seattle Surge with that palace hold. Yeah, I mean, really good hold of P1. They got to clean like 40 seconds or so before the break came in. It was really impressive stuff. And they are back out in front with 15 to go on this point. Leading the way on one side, Felony at 22 and 15. He's lighting it up. Big chance here, you have two dead if you are Surge. All the white arrow is gonna surge on forward for Carolina to find these players at P3, almost a 30 second lead. They could run away with the game if they win this. You have one player on the point. And there was pressure on Hook to at least get one. He's not able to do it. You're collapsing now. You got three on one near the point. Will it be clean? So far, so good. Fell on the end. Oh, well, he's like, let me just get rid of this nade. Nobody to toss it towards. Takes a bit of damage, but stays up. What a break it is. Getting ready to eclipse that crucial 200 point mark. The lead continues to build for Royal Ravens as they have been looking so, so strong and hard points since this team formed. They continue to go. The cutoffs are there. My guy Clay is locked. 20 and 13, four in a row. Looking to dial up number five against our cities, but he gets the help from Tej. Yeah, gets a little bit of help. That was a huge one-on-one -on -one for some scrap time. Now, you're going to have Carolina almost at 225, 230 over towards P4. You have the early rotation. You can win the game here. The early rotations have not not paid off for Seattle the way that they have wanted to. Just like map number one, Gwyn gets pushed out. A chance here to move on in the tournament. 25 seconds to go. Set up inside. You've got one player remaining here. Tej has got to go big. He's able to stay up. The stun hits as well, so that will buy him some time. All the utility to work with the slide across. The centering is there. Not able to hit the slide back to maybe take down another. He buys all the time for his teammate to get back into his clays, holding a five streak. This is huge for Millie. He's just got to keep them off of it. This comes down to the 24 seconds that Carolina needs because you see the spawns. They are there for the Palace Hill for Seattle Surge. We'll see what they can do. Illy going to hang on. That 24 second mark gone, is gone. gone for now. The key for them, I guess you just can't win on the next hill if you are Seattle Surge. Yeah, exactly. This isn't as scary because you can't win at Palace. A lot of times when we see this sequence in the second set of rotations, that's the storyline, right? Like, if you get the hold there, you get able to break it up, you're able to get the Palace, you're able to win it there, but they are not. So, I think you're okay. Take a deep breath if you're Royal Ravens. Yes, it wasn't as clean as you want to be, all right. I'm taking a deep breath as well. Here we <laughs> go. This full 60 comes in, what, 230 to 240? I'll yep. come down to that rotation. Those early holds over towards P1. I mean, some of the big breaks from Royal Ravens are why they can't close it out here. They've had some huge ones. The rotations have been there for Surge. The breaks have been better from Ravens. You kind of see Hook was trying to get a little bit forward. It's kind of just a 40 second build up for now. Here comes some pressure from the Ravens. Ooh. When one player spawning out, but Illy. He has been so clutch, 23 and 17, leading his squad. So what are you trying to do right now if you're Surge? You know, you can't win it here. You're going to get to about 230. Every couple of kills, they're going to try to find more space, right? They, they're kind of seeing with this info. All right, they're not pushing this. What space can you find to try to break this early P1 hold? Maybe Hook. He'll be the one to find space. He has been a leader for this team in hardpoint. He's 18 and 25 currently, and he's put in the dirt. And this P1, they this is where Ravens hill. really flipped it on its head. This is where the Ravens went big, and they're tucked away again. Seattle Surge have got to go. Clay Surge going to get dropped. Illy coming through with two big ones. They're sending it forward. It's TJ Gwen inside, but who will be the last guy up? You get the break that you need. Just three seconds needed for Royal Ravens. But Surge said, no, no, no. They are still here, and they're still fighting inside. I love this play from Clay. He takes the route. Able to cut down one, but Illy and RC is clutching on up. Down to a two versus two on the hill. Close spawns over to Seattle, but on the hill. It's the rookie. It's Gwyn. Almost finds the snap. 
10 seconds for Surge. This is the push. Ravens trying so desperately to break in. Not able to do it. TJ and Clay going to drop. Five seconds to go. Have Surge been able to do this? They're finding all the kills and they stun them here in map four as Illy and the boys push this to a fifth and final map and a nutty one on Invasion. Woo! All that build up for P1. He even had another chance with that kill from Clay. Had the four on three, there was no trophy. Stuns were connecting, but every single gunfight went the way of Surge. What a map. You have a round five banger in the control. We stay on invasion and it is a thriller. As you're thinking, oh, I'm saying, like, Caroline, you're all right, take a deep breath. Like, you can't lose it on P5, but... Well, I thought, too, with Clay taking success. that route, like, sort of just slowing things down, I thought the they did fight. I thought they did. No, I didn't think you need to win the second fight. The first he, was enough. They didn't panic. He didn't stagger until he gets taken out. Then things get a little bit crazy. And you I see Illy with 5K on the other end. I mean, Fellow and Clay leading the way. It's a three-point game. Cool. And now you go to search, which... That's where the success has come for Seattle Surge. You're at nine and four as a roster now after the map two win. Ravens, you've got the one victory, but it comes down to this. If you're going to get into the top six and fight forward, if you had told me that Surge, after we cast them against Ultra, day one, that they were going to be in a position, maybe top six, I would have told you you were on some. You're crazy, but here's a look at the game flow. Early lead for Surge and Carolina run away with it towards that P3, but they just stayed alive Did Seattle Surge, cashed in at the Palace Hills and a big break towards P1 to close the game out. And then the break, and then, I mean, they held like the three held, pushes. Yeah. yeah, three, four pushes in which you get broken once, it's done. Like, you need three seconds. You had to be perfect through the break and past it, and you did exactly that. There's a look at how it's gone so far. It has been a back and forth affair. We get to terminal search and destroy, and. You know, they were kind of uh, Seattle early on sort of terminal merchants in a way. Like it was uh, their terminal search and destroys, their terminal hard point, they found success. They haven't been able to play it a lot, but you get one here in map five. Yeah, I mean, obviously 0-3 in map number two, but a very strong record here for Seattle Surge in this game five. Seattle Surge, here we go. Can they win it in the map five? And you know, you gotta think if you're Royal Ravens, like can you regain, right? Like you've got this veteran squad, you've spent so much time, you have seen it all if you are Clayster. Can you fight back? Can you bring the thunder here in map five? Because you need everything. The success has not been there in search and destroy. You try to do it here. Don't go anywhere. Map five coming up. The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Monster Energy, the official energy drink of the CDL.
Welcome back, Boston. It is time to rock and roll. Tied up 2-2. Seattle Ravens to Terminal Harp when we go. And sort of like I said about the control route, Bob, they throw everything out the window. Is that sort of how you feel about the map five here? Is that the script, dude? Is it round 11 here? I'll take it. I heard the gong go off. I was like, hold on. Did we miss something? But yeah, I mean, round five. Give me that. I would love that. Yeah, I, love round round I mean, props to Elite. End of that game four. I think I saw a team's tweet from 16 and 16 to 29 and 19 to close that game out. So he goes on a 13 and three run Sheesh. to hold that P1, close off that P5. But I mean, you got here if you are the Ravens, but it's not looking good for Surge. They are undefeated on this map, 2-0. You've played this one time as a new roster if you are well, Carolina 0-1. The one thing, I mean, for Surge, I guess, is when you were playing this, it was early in the season. It starts to get vetoed against you. You don't really get to play it much more. Bro, I'm just worried about the way they're shooting. Like, who, who yeah. is finding so many, yeah. so many openings? You know, Illy is just I mean, winning so many multi-kills. So one thing I'm worried about right yeah, now, no, no, but no. we'll see. You never know with this leadership of this Carolina team. You brought it back a bit in that yep. map four, obviously. But yeah, map three, you were getting fried off the map uh, until you weren't in the round five. But that was the fear. It was like they were there plus 20 or something at one point. Round one. Trying to give haircuts to Zilly. Clay will back down Eskies for now. Bomb start to work towards this A site. You won't have the trophies to work with. Can you hit? Some big utility in the way of a tactical or lethal. It's Gwyn and TJ, the dynamic duo, lying in wait like a couple of dragons. Here he starts that push. And well, the smoke gonna go down to TJ. I don't know if he catches uh, RC, he just goes for the pre-fire. Doesn't really matter, but there's the first blood. They had a couple of first bloods though in map two, and they could not capitalize on it. Yeah, I did not expect that when the smoke popped. The no, it gets zapped. <laughs> Neither did I, but he just starts shooting, able to catch him. Illy brings it back though, it's an awkward one. You get one melee off and then you drop and the first blood conversion was not good for Royal Ravens. Oh, man, and then Fellow gets caught by a window, but you're into a two on two. Illy and Hook. Oh, that was just a distraction, Joe. He just wants some sound. Maybe that's what it was. <laughs> yeah. But Illy, he kind of sneaks his way through this in between both of the players, able to find one. He is challenging every gunfight right now. Does back away, playing the numbers over to Fellow. See if he can clutch up at a one versus two. Hello. You see the shins and you rip them off. One versus one, Hook versus Fellow. Now you gotta think, you might have an up close and personal fight here. You got the rival advantage, maybe versus an MCW. It's just a timing thing, right? Who's gonna have to check this? There's the check. Just gonna shoulder away. Immediately, a fellow gonna reposition, but Hook there, just with the shoulder, he tries to hold it, but the time, the time on Hook's side, so he knows he's gotta stick it. <laughs> And Surge win a round one again, losing first bloods, but then two more yeah. go the way of Surge. I think you only got, what was it, like three for two or three first bloods? But they lost and a couple of those two, rounds. They, they lost, but they lost yeah. them all. Yeah, so you, you struggled really bad with the conversion. Once again here, not quite able to do it after a great pick, a clean pick from TJ. A frustrating one, certainly, for this Royal Raven side. That's that old Empire duo, world champions, Illy and Hook taking over in game four. They do it here in round one, both with two kills apiece. Arceus, this time with the blood. TJ, not going to be able to get involved early. Is his head just sent flying straight off. Stun will connect for some more information there onto Felony as well. You're looking for an opening here offensively if you're Royal Ravens. You found nothing thus far. I mean, not a lot of info given. Obviously, the stun's going to hit. Buy them some time, but already 30 seconds off the clock, and Abuza's going to win one. Just so confident right now, our surge in these 1v1s. Abuza keeps fighting. And this was your fear, right? Like, just these one-on-ones -on you're going to have on a map like this. When you're shooting the way you are, if you're Seattle, that could be the difference. I mean, even in control, right? Obviously, they, they kind of throw that round number five, but it just Woo! felt like throughout that map, multi-kills were going their way. I mean, you've already dealt with playing against Boston, you know, the home favorites. Whatever team Clay's on, it's Team America at times. <laughs> and you're just trying to silence this venue, and you're doing a hell of a good job of it. From that final hard point on, Illy either saying a prayer. He's just thinking, dude. Give some strats for the He's next got like round. a photographic memory. Yeah. That'd be, that'd be crazy. Yeah. Royal 
Ravens. You desperately need one. There's the first pick. Now, can you get a round win off of that? Great stuff from Clayster. Similar to what you got on the other side of it with TJ in the round one. You need to win this round. You have got to capitalize these moments when you've got numbers. Yeah, but if an odd push there, I mean, no trophy. So the stun just connects and Clayster, all right, I'll take this freebie. Bomb though dropped. So they're going to start this push. Nice trade from Gwyn, but now you're into a two on two. And it looks like Fellow's going to get aggressive and find the timing. And that's huge because otherwise your numbers are thrown away. Like that advantage you have is gone. So Felony with the aggressive play up the ramp puts them into the two versus one. Now it's all on Abuza. You Oops. see this kind of setup. Ooh, shoot. Some nice tags on both ends and Clay's going to get aggressive. Okay. He's saying, hey, he's a little bit weak and much around there for the Ravens. Yeah, I, I got real nervous with the when the plane battle, when I thought it was done before I realized Felly was getting a position. I'm like, oh, here we go again. We get a clean first blood. We let it slip away. They out trade us in the plane, but Felony, the difference there, and then Clay will be able to close it out at the end as they take a deep breath and get further into this search. Is, yeah, I mean, the mode is a new team. They're just still figuring it out. <laughs> getting locked in. See what Carolina opted to do. It wasn't, uh, you know, some B aggression that you picked by Abuza. This time they're going to go quickly over towards B. You already have one on through. Clay's going to find another first blood. Now, what's the call? Do we back on down or no? We're going to go push on forward, but Hook with the rival in that spot. Wins the gunfight. Is there a trade from mid hall? Looks like Fellow may be trying to find an angle, but Hook, he's going to be back to full health. Now, continue to take these gunfights. Will Seattle surge? Another first blood. Maybe not going their way. Yeah, and you just got to kill Hook, probably. I mean, that next fight, like, it's That's just... why he's got a rival there. Yeah, yeah. You think you maybe have a second, you get into a 4v2, you're feeling real, real good, but not going to be the case. Hook able to take out Felony as well, who was trying to get that trade over through Bookstore. Nice nade there from Clay, but he got the opener. He's had to get all of them, and Illy still just put in damage. Yeah, putting numbers down, and now who's going to push on forward knows how weak he is. Hello. Yep. Nice recovery there from Surge. I mean, you just get hook into that position. You're hoping a trade comes in. Maybe someone get pushed up with Quinn, but it just never happens. Or Fellow, you know, he's got that middle hallway through Dreams. Maybe he'd find a bullet or two on a hook to get the trade. But no angle was given. Yeah, now you have this 3-1 advantage in First Bloods, but not a lot to show for it in a round count if you are Carolina. Illy and who? 10 in three. Clay, I mean, shooters are going to shoot, man. He, he's been their first blood guy these past couple of rounds. If he can continue to get them, just can you turn those rounds into Ws? I mean, Seattle's going to keep going for this, right? You see this 2 2 setup. They've been trading effectively. Has Seattle Surge giving them numbers? It's kind of the same thing. Just who's going to go over there with Hook? And there's a first blood for a booze on the fellow. And that's just what? Through the door from Book. So he gets the pick. So sliding in and TJ right on the side. You still have RCs there, so he's able to get another one. Maybe you can go two for one in that scenario. You bring it back into the round, but it's going to be Gwen and Clay now, two versus three. You still got to be proactive here with Bomb, though. If you are Seattle Surge, you got 40 seconds to work with. Well, you can see they're kind of just slowing it down, and I like this, right? 40 seconds left. They're trying to force Carolina to just get caught out of position, right? Where are they going with the bomb? That's the question. It's one towards Whoa. A and one towards B. There is a ton of info for the Ravens. And now Clay maybe trying to work the flank. He's going to have a crossfire with his teammate. Gwyn able to find one. They need this round to stay in the game. But Illy has been the closer. Was that kill the difference? A chance for Gwyn. He's thinking maybe still one outside, but they are both in. I think he hears him, but the slide timing, he sends it out. He wins the fight. You nail it there. Ellie has been the closer with the big gunfights. The big kill on to Clay. The difference is Quinn. Quinn got one. He gave him a shot in this. But does have Clay to work with once he gets to this point. Yeah, and then Quinn with 15 seconds. You're hoping to find one and either get him off the bomb or, or find a free bomb the planner. He was there in the sense of like the yeah. bomb for him. Just he checked outside of, Yeah, he checked outside of Dreams yeah. instead of in cockpit, and that's the bomb down. Really seven and two. He has just answered this call for the team. I'm guessing Clay saw something where he's thinking maybe somebody's still outside. A 
Abuza again. Striking early. Got the first blood in the last round, and Abuza is dialing in. That'll be two for him. This Royal Ravens team in trouble in a 4-2 hole here within this round six. You're looking at a 1-5 deficit here shortly, just being outclassed, outgunned when it comes to search and destroy. I mean, it's just a story for this team coming into the uh, the event, right? The yeah. respawn is looked solid, but not much search and destroy practice. Talk to the players, they haven't had many reps. And I think that really the storyline is your two aggressive players in TJ and Gwyn have been shut down. All the pressure on Fellow and Clay right now. Round five. Is they take a massive advantage in a team that looked dead in the water to us against Ultra. Just staying alive, pissing people off and battling. It's been impressive to watch. Yeah, just sticking to their game plan. I mean, who finding openings? Illy obviously has been who he is. But once they find those first bloods throughout this map, they are winning these rounds. Three first bloods and three round wins here for Seattle Surge. Yeah, they're doing it regardless. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. The tags in from Arsides as you'll scramble back. TJ playing from an aggressive position. I mean, even over towards B, the trades come in. You're in a two on two and they're winning those gunfights. Can teach clutch on up against his old teammate, TJ, able to take him down. One on two, all pressure on Gwyn. Gwyn now for the series, and Illy from the top rope sends it forward. It's a victory here from Seattle Surge, and a team that looks so defeated now fighting into the top six. Yeah, and I don't know if there's been many vocal Surge fans in the venue, but that guy, he gets the last laugh. Obviously, uh, respect between both teams. It was getting loud. He was getting loud on that stage, right? You know, Clay and Fellow were getting into it. But, I mean, you just look at that map four. That's really what it comes down to. You and I, every time I talk about it coming into this game, this yeah. might be a 6-1, a 6-2. It's exactly that. They're just a step, no. maybe a, a couple hundred steps ahead right now in terms yeah, of destroy. I, 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 you know, one of my least favorite things is the commentaries when you have this incredible series, and it's like a map five dud, but it just felt like it. Like, they just, they are ahead. They are very far ahead, as you just said, and they show it there. They just handle business. It's not close. There aren't a lot of clutch opportunities, not realistic ones that you leave for Royal Ravens for like... I was really worried when they had like three first bloods like early and no, that's all they ended up getting, but they lost like all those rounds. I'm like, you just can't, you just can't. Yeah, I can't do it against, against this team, but uh, Seattle, well, they were just, I don't know, just very proactive on the map. Knew exactly what they wanted, but again, winning a game four to clutch up. Oh, I still rely on the search destroys. Have to win both here, but they're going to move on later, and they'll play the the loser of Phase versus Optic, which is coming up next. Yeah, and this is like a you know a team just has that recipe to upset people. You do, you know, it, when you're a strong search and destroy team, just good enough in the response, you got a chance. I wonder who's doing the interview. <laughs> He's, he was a monster, an I think, absolute monster. I think I got an idea. This yeah. guy has battled through the crowd, letting him hear it every single moment. We've got Illy on main stage. Thank you so much, Maven. And you said it perfectly, battling through the crowd. The Seattle Surge comes away with a victory yet again, and they're going to stay in this tournament. And Illy, now, even though there's some bulls out there, I can be the one to tell you, there's a few people out there who've been cheering like crazy for you guys. I done heard a few of them out there, okay? And you have been playing great. Talk to me about getting that comeback there on map number four to be able to even get to the S and D because they were set up for about a minute, but you guys yeah. broke that and held that. Yeah, um, honestly, uh, we just believed, you know, like I literally said, believe, like I literally said, start playing tighter towards top, like, well, like it doesn't matter, yep. but like, yeah, we got the piece P4, we got the castle roll. And yeah, yeah, like, I, it, like, yeah, we just, we, we just, we just believed, and then yeah. we ended up breaking P1. Yeah, yeah, you know how it went. Yeah, 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 yeah I definitely believed that there. Okay, you came through, but you're still in this tournament. You got one more match tonight for the few fans out there who are supporting y'all, even though y'all on the villain arc. What you want to say to them? Um, appreciate uh, the support for uh, the real supporters. Here you go. You heard it from me and Ellie on the stage. Chris, take us away. We appreciate the support from the real supporters. There's very few of them here in Boston, but they are allowed. Shout out to my guy directly behind the desk. But Chance, <laughs> you, you and I had Ravens. You had Ravens. I did have Ravens. You called yeah. Surge. Yep.
we felt like we were ready to celebrate at the end of game four. You heard Illy talk about it. This was a big blunder, I feel like, by Carolina, but a top eight finish, not the worst case scenario for them here in Boston. I mean, sure, big picture, a decent place in giving all the roster moves, but at the same time, that is an invasion hard point that I think is going to haunt them for a decent amount of time. I will say it will haunt them, but for Carolina Rose fans, this is, you know, you're looking forward to the future at this point with this squad. They look a lot better. They outplaced what we expected them to do coming into this major. And now they actually have something that they can look at in a series and be like, okay, this is what we need to work on, right? It's going to be that search and destroy. That's what I want to see improvement in between Major 1 and Major 2 for the Carolina Royal Ravens. We do say bye to them today, but honestly, I think they outpressed most of us. Yeah, let's uh, take a moment to sing the praises of the Seattle Surge. I mean, coming in wait, and winning. Wait, wait, wait. Did they play a fair game today? They did. Okay, go ahead. They absolutely did. Uh, let's sing the praises of, of Seattle Surge. The Surge and Destroy, it was next level. I mean, it, when you're on Terminal like that, you see how they're playing. They're splitting the map. There are a couple rounds. They had two burger, two playing Terminal Hall. And what they're doing is they're not just playing burger like hold it and make a play plane later. They're actually actively taking challenges. It makes the defense not understand. They don't know where you're going. Trying to catch them off guard. It was working out so well. We saw some rounds they tried to push through into the plane and they back up and just wait for the other team to make a mistake. These are things that are tough to play against. That's a high level search team. And the end of this hard point was just absolutely nuts. Shout and, out to And I wanted to call plays. out here at the start Abuza had nine kills, right? He was just getting pushed around. The man caught fire in that game five as well. But Surge, they played in sprints. This is our play of the game chance. Who is the biggest key to their success? I'd have to say Illy, right? I mean, I think he killed Tyler Fellow maybe three times just on that final hill alone, and he's doing it from a bunch of different locations as well. So he was locked in making heads up plays the entire time, and not just in the final seconds of a hard point, but he was virtually untouchable in SD. He might have just thrown up a near 5 KD in the two maps they had. Shout out Surge, they get it done. They show you the strength in the two, three, fives. We'll see if they can keep it rolling as we continue the day. Remember, we got the winner's bracket coming up. Are you casting next? No, I'm casting third. You're gonna cast the third one? What match is that, Chance? You put me on the spot. Toronto versus Minnesota. Minnesota. Anyway, Sync of mean. Aaron Calendar. Sync is now available in case you're like Chance and you don't know what your next match is gonna be. Put it in your calendar. Add your favorite team's 2024 schedule to earn a squad up calling card at calldutyleague.com dash schedule or scan the QR code on the screen. He's Give this so lady a trophy. We that. gotta go to break. We come back. It's one of the oldest rivalries that still is on the stage. Optic takes on Atlanta Face here live from Boston.
I have a plan. Crazy with the rage, dangerous and rage. Fuck the captain, never been afraid. Jelly three. with the pain. I ain't wanna take light. Look into my eyes. I'm a killer in the car, coming for the prize. Do you really want these problems? I put you in that coffin. But I'm never tossing. You put this in and stop it. Hungry for the beef, leave you obsolete. See my life speak. See me in the street. Or if you want the heat, yeah. lineups every single year this year is no different yeah i mean yeah, it's been pretty good right but it's just been very one-sided early on in the cdl it was all phase but i mean especially on land it has been all optic really since vanguard i mean there's like one phase went in there and then online you have the you know just the last week match but optic have dominated this matchup let's start with our green team here alley cat what has made optic so good in this matchup because phase always seems to have the stats edge coming in well when we were first leading into the major it was kenny right this is Addition was through the roof. I feel like we all got really excited about Pred, but it was really Kenny making the plays on the map to kind of relieve that pressure for everybody else. And now that we're on land, it seems like Shotzi also has reached another level. He had been kind of flying under the radar, but in their latest matchup, it was all him all day in that 3-0. So heading into today, I'm expecting him to try to match up against the likes of Sith. Yeah, you know, with this Optic Texas team, they've really gotten by by being very good at their hard point. We saw it bounce back once again versus the Miami Heretics, and it's been interesting, the evolution of Dashi. You know, Joe, we were talking about in the green room, it's like, they just want him to get hill time, stay alive, and he's leading the team at 102 seconds in each map. That's by 45, by the way. So to let these guys go out and slay, let Pred make plays, let Kenny make plays. It's a weird dynamic because he has such a good shot, but it's been working, Chris. All right, we don't have a lot of time to talk about this, so let's get our picks in. I'm going to kick things off here, and I'm going with... Did you forget who you went with? Yeah. Who did we pick? What do you mean? <laughs> Optic Texas! <laughs> All right, Joe. <laughs> Oh, it's a tough one. Uh, I, I, someone asked me coin flip. I, I went with FaZe in my pickups. Allie. It is gonna be it is gonna be a tough one. I completely agree with Joe. This is two Titans going at it, but I think I gotta go with Atlanta FaZe. Atlanta FaZe? <laughs> Listen, bro, I've been on point and I'm going with Optic Texas. He's going with Optic Texas. I'm riding with nameless from here on out. The man <laughs> has been on it. Chat, let us know with a red heart or a green heart as we send it to the stage with Guy Blaze. All right, you guys, it's time to start off our winner semis. And it's a matchup that's about to have us all torn. It's Optic versus FaZe, and it's about to go down. And the first team coming to the stage, brick by brick, give it up for Optic Texas! We got Kenny, Shotzi, Fred, and Dashi. Optic Texas! They struggled a little bit online, but they get to land, they sit down, and they wipe the floor with Heretics 3-0. They know what they've done in the past up against Atlanta FaZe. It has been one-sided, but they bring in Kenny and they bring in Pred. Can they keep that going? We'll find out. Let's bring out Atlanta FaZe. All right, we'll see if they can do it, because the squad coming to the stage next is the first seed, and they don't care who they play. FaZe up for Atlanta FaZe! They might be the villains of the league, but their boogeyman stands on the other side of the stage. They might be bleeding red, but this green team has put a wall in front of them time and time again. If they want to make it to that grand final, they got to make this match easy AF. Blaze, let's go. 
We'll see how easy it's gonna be, Allie, because all day long the villains have been coming out on top, but let's see if they can do it again. Shiv, study, let's go. Thanks so much, Guy Blaze. Yeah, shift with study here in, look, I mean, we can look at the numbers all we want, yep. but at times you get these two teams at stage and none of it matters. It's all about just the raw energy and passion we get between both squads. There's just so much history between these organizations. They've been playing each other back to back, multiple main cities matches. They know exactly what it's like to play in this environment of a gladiator matchup. And for both squads, obviously for Atlanta Face, picture perfect yep. all the way through the qualifying matches. 7-0, basically undefeated. They only have five map losses and a majority of those maps that they did lose they were testing them out because they've been so damn good but take a look at the veto process sub base will hold in for map number one terminal was available but this is all about optic kind of getting in their bag a little bit seeing what they can brew up for a very tricky number one uh, map one here when we saw the sub base hop into this map rotation i was sitting there like this can play a dividend part for this, the way this entire series goes down. Because I think they have yet to play this as a roster. They're sitting at 0-0. No reps on it. And the opposite side for Atlanta phase, this is one of their weak of hard points sitting at 1-1. One one. But the last time that they played it, 250-168 to 168 by Carolina, who just got eliminated. So... I think enough for the stats, man. I'm just excited to get into this gladiator to battle. Let's see. It's a story that has been written a number of times, but a brand new chapter, the green wall revitalizing Optic. Boston, let me hear you. We got Optic versus FaZe. Let's lock in and let's get it on. And already off the rip, if you are Optic Texas, on a map like Subbase, you prefer the opposite side. Always trying to control the three story, but if you're winning the gunnies, you're able to flip it with the gun. They get three dead, the spawns now flip, Atlanta face, forced to break. Zellium very aware of the circumstances, currently overpassing this first hill. But the lay of the land, looking good for the green wall. Zellium dealt with topside P2, so time continues to tally. Now the subs for Atlanta getting involved, but can't fully break. We go a little bit back and forth, final 1v1 for the scrap, which Draza will take. And Draza, you know what he's been doing wonders for this Atlanta phase roster. I feel like both of these teams on the offseason, they get some better players, and they're going to be able to have Chalice the entire time. Dashy finds two, but Optic are still holding on to the preferred side. You want to stay alive as long as you can. His trade's going down towards the middle of the map, but it's all about that. P2, Optic are going to be there first. Only one member to possibly make a mess of this for FaZe. That's number six in white, Abizi. And he's kind of stuck right now over towards P5. Does find Dashy up top and will stun himself forward. A little pinch play being set up, but the trade's good for Optic. Spawns will move around a little bit, and the hard point will go neutral at the same breath. Oh, now Optic have to work their way out of Warrior House side. Have one player sneaking his way up through mid, but the rest of Atlanta phase have the cutoffs. Simp, that's a big kill to take him down from top snow, but now you have to execute this break. You have to try to flip these spawns. Dazzy works his way up the left side. He finds one, but it's still better trades coming in from Atlanta phase. They are still in control. 28 seconds remaining. Pred not quite able to get through the P2 window. Shotzi, last one left, waiting for help. The rest of Atlanta have completely reinforced from the back. Kill still go back and forth. Is there enough of a chance here for Optic to actually break through this? Atlanta just getting back to the hard point so darn quick and the kills continue to come through for phase they're just coming out on top in these trade fights simp already sitting at 10 and 5 15 engagements and we're only in the second hard point but atlanta phase are finding the kills to hold the right spawn so you see optic texas now we have to start hitting a couple routes dashing through the left kenny through the right side a big one-on-one -on -one across the map kenny wins it so now if you are atlanta phase these next gun fights can cost you these spawns yeah, it's just these exit kills haven't been particularly great for optic to this point hard point stays neutral for now as atlanta's rotating over from two quickly to three Shotzi up top, just able to find the last shots in towards Strava, then heads down, finds himself a double, and Shotzi coming up big for Optic as the rotation gets locked in. And every single time Optic play against Atlanta, when they find success, it's through the back of what Shotzi is able to get done. A 1.3 every single time he plays Atlanta. And that leads to Optic Texas finding the break at P3. This 25 seconds is going to be theirs. You still have Atlanta phase applying pressure over towards P2. They want to try to hold that next hill from the front. Really good shots from Abizi. Makes life easy for selling him to make sure that scrap time does go neutral. Over towards tunnel side. Draza opens things up for Atlanta. Dashy still in position. Pred nearby. So Optic still have numbers for this rotation. Can he get the second? Oh, big from Bruce. That will get the lockdown in. Trophy system's up. Now it's just down to reading how Atlanta's trying to set up this break. Dashy's going to do what he does best soak up that hill time and make sure no one's going to contest that point 
You still have Fred roaming around the middle of the map, just trying to be the cutoff man, but now he gets taken care of. All of Atlanta phase had to spam tax from the front side of the tunnel. Do they have enough trophies to slow this one down? Kenny is going to get hit by one, but it's all out pressure from Atlanta through the front. Here it comes, big flood, three members large. Draws it into the opener, but how about Shotzi and Dashi leaving things up to the last two men. members remaining, and Optic will hold on. 30 seconds still remain. Atlanta trying to get back into mid-map, but Shotzi there to beat him now on three in a row. And this is the perfect play right here from Optic. You find a clean for dead now you have to be aggressive up on the map and now Shotzi just has to play his life he finds another one onto a bz he's able to finish the kill but not able to stay alive so if you are kenny in a crucial position try to rotate over towards that p5 side optic they flip the spawns draza you have to make something happen here trying to play his life stun locks him up and that'll be enough for Shotzi to follow up find the elimination optic with numbers not just on the old time but also trying to get up towards the high ground which fred will clear a bz out of quick transition from optic and a huge stretch of the scoreboard for the team in green. So far, this P4 to P5 chain has worked out flawlessly for Optic Texas. You're now forcing all of Atlanta phase to overextend and trying to fight through middle. They find those initial two kills. Can they find anything else to lead towards the break? At least they flip the spawns, but it's still Optic Texas contesting on this side of the map. The final two players dropped, and that's going to lead to an Atlanta phase break. Yeah, phase swarming on both sides of the hard point, but with that told, Optic still find themselves in. 30 seconds remaining. Off the respawn, Kenny with the tally. One long range shot. That's going to be three dead. Draws the last one left alive, and he does not have enough help to actually get into the hill. So this is already still good for Optic, keeping this hard point neutral. Just maintaining that side of the map. You want to hold three story for the four out of the five hills that we have. And as long as you're trading efficiently, Kenny keeps repositioning around that top snow. He turned up, si sitting at 16 and 11 on a three streak. They're finding all the kills. They're getting this remaining junk time. But now you have to focus that long side. You need to maintain those spawns. All about the long con here for FaZe, trying to play through water side of the map, get themselves set up like you mentioned on the west side of the map, and the spawns will come in just as Draza opened up the hard point. 20 point game or so here, FaZe still trying to float around the middle of the map, but they're just not reading where Texas hits coming from, and with that, Atlanta trying to lock in spawns are once again a little bit slow getting over towards the first hill. Now if you are selling him in a crucial position towards top, no, he finds that kill onto Kenny. Now he's going to be set up for the pinch. Just got to take down these last couple of players. That's three. Next one is Fred, and you get him taken care of. Selium, 15 and 7 on a four streak in full control of the map currently. But you see the player that sneaks out, it's Kenny, to try to make something happen for Optic. And he's just playing his life on the bottom side of the map. And actually, Shotzi on the other side also gets through. Atlanta trying to set up the Iron Curtain defense towards P2, but they have a couple of holes in the setup. Over towards the scrap time. Optic able to get on, so 12 seconds go their way. Still have about a 20 point game as you rotate the two and tally in the minimap. Four players for phase already set up, looking to clock this thing in. Oh man, and they were playing such a tight setup, but they clutch up in those fights and now that's a clean three dead the last player up is gonna be Pred but this is another situation where Atlanta face can get themselves right back into the game it was a great P2 hold the first time and they're doing it again it's all about if Atlanta can hold they put themselves in a good spot but Optic still finding kills prime time to listen in to see how Optic set up this break I'm on the back. 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 I'm back. I'm on the 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 back. Live, they get my long, bro. They get my long. Yeah, live, live, live. I'm gonna wrap you one. I'm gonna wrap you one. I was laying down the back. Push sure, it, though. Push it. I'm gonna go long. Stay alive. Right. I'm hitting outside. Stay long. I'm hitting. I'm hitting long. You're right in front of us, Brendan. I'm going to go. 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 I'm on the top. Mid, 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 literally, I'm on the top. 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 I'm on the top
Oh, so, so. Honestly, got people. Go? He, he could have been like, front. Oh, back I still think he's the the bloom, I think. Once the back, he'll drive somewhere. Okay, what? Where Where time? He's still hold, 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 push. And I got me, he's up. Tough stretch between the second and third hard points. You heard the call near the end. I'm just saying, this is the game right here. They need to find a way to get over towards four, but late in these sub bases, this is where Atlanta starts to turn up. This is usually where they start having that clutch gene in them. Six and zero. Oh. And HPs that are within 30 points. And so far, great hold in towards the P4. Throwing a couple of shoulders. Tip is going to get taken down. Kenny finds him. Fred finds a third. It's all on to Draza. Pistol out. That's not enough. Optic Texas, they get the break. And with only 30 seconds left, you just need to trap them in towards the back. You have Selium working his way through top comms. This is a big kill if you can take him down. It's Kenny finds it. Optic holding strong. Two for one go. The trades. Dash, he's still holding things up. Just sit. Last one left alive. And he feels like he has to try to hit the scrap time and there's the trap atlanta still spawning over towards stock side p5 going over towards this front warehouse position and texas again dominating the high ground we just have to be able to read this over extension draza already finds himself in towards bottom middle maze no, all of Optic, they know that they're not going to attack towards Warehouse. They have to overextend. A big trade comes in from Dashi, but it's still no one on the point. They want to make sure they find all the kills before someone commits towards the time. The AR is really starting to light things up here for Optic Texas. Atlanta able to get over towards five for now, but we're still back and forth, back and forth. Kill for kill we go. Finally, though, Texas able to swing things back over their direction. Problem is their spawns are so far away. Atlanta looking at this last 30 seconds saying we need it. Even with the spawns being so far away, neither squad is getting any time. Optic are holding the crossfires. Atlanta face trying to find an opening, and that two-piece might be just enough. Sit, sitting already at 30, he finds 31, but Soul Man is now Kenny. He falls. The break comes in from Atlanta. Finally, someone gets on the point, but Dash is there for a nade. It's still Atlanta phases time. Last hit from the last two players for Optic over to the front side of Warehouse, and Celia meets him with the Renetti. How about a tie game? Boston won 91-82 for now. Heading back over to P1. Both teams focused on getting these lo spawns locked in and the rotation to try to surround. And the good thing is that Kenny and Dash just went on across the map. They find those initial two fights, so Atlanta face. Those two players will come off spawn. They're now going to realize we're on the bad side. Optic Texas, they cannot win it on this P1, but they flip the spawns and have the opportunity. You just have to hold down these power positions. Sell him in a crucial one towards Snap. So hit some tacks. Let's get him out of this spawn. This is all about, did the game plan for Optic pan out? This is their map selection. Still 30 seconds to collect. Atlanta's got to fight the war on both fronts. Need to hit through old while also focusing the rotation, and Kenny is shutting it down. Another double comes through for him. Trade still allowing Atlanta a chance to fight back, but they just aren't getting the players out of the hard point. Every second is a crucial one here for Optic. I think they're making it all happen. They are trading efficiently, making sure they're soaking that time. Dashi sitting at two minutes in towards the HP with only 10 10 seconds left. Atlanta phase. No, we got to get through P5. We have to push around propane side. Pred the first man to try to cut them off. Oh. Puts down a couple shots, but his teammates are going to be here to help. Him. Abizi gets around the back. What does this do to spawn for Optic? They still spawn in just as the hard point opens up with the kills from the side. Doors looking decent. Pred on three in a row. Still into the hard point. 242 to 188. Atlanta looking for the break. Oh, 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 oh. Got the pistol. Now back. We were questioning Ops' decision to come out and play a map that they have not yet played on the season. But you best believe, every day in practice, they are getting reps on sub base. Perfect game plan overall to start off 1-0 in this series. Because Atlanta Face, they were undefeated in map one. Yep. They were 8-0. Whenever they win that map one, they usually tend to win this series. But if you give it to Optic Texas, that's when it all turns around. And just the perfect play, man, to play a map like sub base. You're thinking about the strengths for Atlanta Face. It's usually through their SMGs. They now have to yep. run ARs. Yep. So that makes it a little bit more uncomfortable for them. And through all the chaos, Optic Texas were able to rise out on top. I got to point to the assist totals here for Optic. Look how much help is coming across the board. 12, 11, 12, and 8. Sure, the assist numbers aren't bad for phase in the other side, but you could definitely see the influence of the team play coming through. Like you mentioned, a lot of good crossing routes being locked in by players like Kenny and Dashi getting a lot of damage while also tailing a number of assists. So really good opening play. And again, the curveball that comes through just trying to trick Atlanta a little bit in the map veto process. It works out beautifully for Optic to start off the series.
and now you're feeling really comfortable if you are Optic Tech. Absolutely. You're up 1-0 versus a team like Atlanta Phoenix. I know you're going against the best search and destroy team in the game, but you are playing a map that you are really familiar with in map number two. And just the way that they played in map number one, you've seen what the ARs are doing. Dashi is soaking time, getting a couple kills, but what Kenny is able to do on the map, he finds himself towards top snow. He finds himself towards top comms as well, and he's also the guy hitting those deep routes to play those spawns. Kenny just played a crucial part to why they find success in map one. Rotation battles, if we get this thing to four, rotation battles are going to be where we're really oh, yeah. looking at, because both Cell and Dashi both have been great, not just statistically in the KD, but how they move around the map, what they're setting up their team for, is all about trying to ride between hard point to hard point. And yeah, I think it's more importantly for this map, with the spawns not having moved between two and three yet with the hill placement, Optic did a really nice job of understanding what the game plan for phases in hard point and almost beating them at their own tricks. And then usually at this moment in the game, Atlanta phase finds something different inside of them. They find a couple kills, they're able to try to clutch on up towards the very end, but Optic, again, around that P1 HP, trade after trade after trade, and with them spawning on the preferred side, they're also trading and gaining that hill time. So it makes it a lot more difficult for Atlanta Phase to make a decision on what they want to do. Do we get them off this P1? Do we play for the spawns? And at that point, it was just too late. Optic, take game one. Yeah. But here's the good news for Atlanta fans as we start to look over towards the search and destroy. It's been by far one of Atlanta Phase's best overall oh, yeah. modes throughout the entirety of the year. And it's happening on both sides of the box. In particular, we're looking at the opening duel percentages. There is no one, it feels like in the game right now, better than finding opening kills than players like Selling. His record is great, but also the same point. They also can get done with their SMGs. A BZ and Sim, super aggressive, often the engagers, and they're often coming out on top of those fights. And they've been doing it for years, man. Yeah. Those guys have been getting it done in this mode, search and destroy for years to come, even before they were pro players. They were grinding s &D tournaments, so they know exactly what they need to do. Yeah. And now looking at this, this is a rematched map here between these two squads the first time they had played. And I think for Optic, it's not just the fact that we're going to see both the invasion here in the search, but potentially for map four. But looking at their control, we are going to get high rise again, which did not really go all that well for Optic when they played Atlanta the first time online. But their attack is super good. And when you look at the high rise, what that could possibly lead them, them towards you're looking at all the different records and how they get it done on offense it's not just by kills they're capping points like crazy that could be big for them and that's big because you know on your attacking rounds you need to make sure you're slaying big you want to stand chances at gaining any segments but the difference for them is on the defense you have to be able to slay with the best in atlanta on the other side, though, for Atlanta, there's not, there's, I've got five map losses is what we're talking about. Man. An unbelievable record overall. However, the thing is, it's not just happening in one place or the other. Atlanta's getting it done all over the place. And I think in particular, we saw in the last couple of weeks that FaZe were squaring up against what they consider to be lesser teams and playing maps that they had not necessarily been, I will say, as comfortable on as compared to what we saw at the beginning of the year. And I think for Atlanta FaZe, the fact that they're looking like this is due to the addition of Draza. Like, we're talking about a guy that yeah get it done in every single mode it does not matter and now with him on the roster it enables the rest of the players to go out there and be themselves so they've been having success in every mode but now they need to rely on that backbone s d to not go down too well it was 6-3 last time that we saw these two teams square up and in that particular matchup atlanta looked comfortable like we continue to talk about on both sides however shotzi has been looking completely revitalized on stage in miami's game he was dominant from start to finish putting up the numbers that we normally expect so can he have a repeat performance here it's optic on the offense first and early eyes aimed over towards the b site shotsy's the playmaker man the reason why atlanta were able to beat him online is because they soloed out shotsy majority of those rounds you take care of that guy and then you force everybody else from out to texas to slow on down but into the attacks Atlanta have no trophy systems to work with, so they just open this crossover towards D. The smoke's going to go down. Full bomb site control right now for Optic. Good stun check coming out from Draza. Also cooks up a nade. The nade will not touch, though. So Shotzi just playing a little bit further forward, seeing if he can catch contact on an aggressive defensive retake. Not to happen yet, though. Also, keep your eye on the minimap, because there is a lot of mixiness that could happen here at mid-tank. They gave him the cross as well, so the bomb's going to get planted for free. It's going to be a what voice a retake for Atlanta phase, and they pop the smoke through mid-cut. Sip finds the first. The trade is there, and now it's a 3v2. That that is an unbelievable defensive retake smoke coming out. Atlanta completely disguises their attempt through mid, and now Dashi deep has to try to work this alongside threat. First couple of the shots will tag Draza, the first defensive contestant, trying to lock things over towards the tank side. No one has hopped as of yet, and this is all about, is there going to be an actual battle for this? Selium gets the first, trade comes out, Pred in trouble, but he's got the rival nine, able to take down a second. This will be a 1v3, but Cell pushes him off, and there's plenty of time for the defuse. 
It's a great retake right there from Atlanta. Starts with him finding that first blood. We saw that very play in the first entire map that we've seen from Atlanta phase on Invasion. He popped the smoke and ended up finding a four piece, but at least he gets one. He sets up a BZ to find the second and then no trophy systems to work with. Optic try to play it from broken. They just slowly get picked apart. Atlanta face strong on defense after they get the first blood, and they show it there. And that's the big key, I think, for this match in particular, kind of looking at where Optic have been good in search and destroy. It has been by way of collecting opening first bloods on offense. On the flip side, though, Atlanta, off their objective play has been unbelievable, both getting the bomb down and holding it, as well as retaking. So already the pattern starting to come through just a touch as Atlanta take a lot of their focus again over towards B, but there is an idea here from Selium to try to get this long range battle with Ashy. Both players see one another, but none worse for wear. Just some information gained early into the round, and now with Kenny putting down a couple shots, Atlanta no, they're both, both the ARs are spread across the map, but now you do you read the positioning of Shotzi. He loves himself some broken. This is where he usually makes plays. Going one for one would be good. Getting a second could be better, though. And the first kill comes through very quickly and very cleanly. The rest of Optic still kind of flooded around, making sure Shotzi stays safe. And oh boy, he's looking to get super aggressive. If Easy does trade this back to a 3v3 in Shotzi's route, very well may eventually allow him a kill on Draza. Bomb down here for Atlanta, and now a 3v2 for Texas. And there's only 30 seconds left. Easy trying to cover some ground, walks right into the premium of Kenny. Now it's Selium left in a 1v3. He spotted Dash early into the round. Takes him down eventually, but the trade is going to be there. But that round simply comes down to what shots he's able to get done. Absolutely. First blood in towards Broken. Does not slow down. Jumps right up to the treehouse. You always got to expect some crazy movement out of Shotzi to put himself in a great position. He gets it done. Optic tie it up. And the mind games that get established with the early conditioning of, hey, look at us. We're going to be playing super aggressive. You have to worry about a lot early. If you are Atlanta Faze, try to come out of spawn. So we'll see if that continues to be the case. We switch the sides again. And I'll be curious if, if Atlanta's going to be prone to wanting to do the same things. So are we going to see a Simp or a BZ try to get aggressive in the same way that Shotzi prefers to? It's back for Optic Texas again. Tashi and Selium just going to say hi all the way across the street. The rest of the teammates are going to push up towards Broken. It's going to fall into the hands of Draza, who's going to first be... The line of defense over there by the tractor. But you see a BZ at mid-cut. He's just waiting. Yeah. He's waiting for Optic to attack. This almost feels like for Optic, it's more of a, can we catch someone maybe trying to get too aggressive yeah. from the phase defense? But not to happen as of yet. 55 seconds on the clock. Draza backs up over towards Tractor. A BZ on the cross. Both teams will get mutual information on this. So Optic slide over. A BZ gives away his position now a little bit more securely with nades to follow through. But Optic are not interested in this battle. They want to get Draza out and now take their focus back towards the pinch. And it's a two for one exchange. Brent turns it into a three for one. Bomb to get planted. And that's already the adjustments right there from Optic. Texas said you smoked mid cut, but this time I'm going to send Brent to go on the reflank. Selium left in the one. 1v3. Position now known. Great shoulder right there from Dashy, but this is too much ground to cover. Yeah. This is going to be very difficult for Self. Pred rotating over through Dark. He will be the one to find him. And I love that call from Optic yeah. saying, okay, BZ, we see you here, Dark. We know you're not going to push through it, though. We know exactly also where your teammate Adraza is. Let's just flood and isolate him backside tractor. Because that first attacking round, they should have walked away with it. Agreed. All they had to do was shut down that mid-cut push, and this time they were ready for it. They get that first kill. They solo Adraza towards the back end. Bomb goes down. Selling him stands no chance. First attacking round of the map goes to Optic. And a great start for Kenny, four and one. And now for Optic, again, do we see those same mind games? What does Shotzi prefer to do off spawn here? Dashy once again, it's going to be another long game of tag, probably with Selium over towards this long A street. And there will be, again, a little bit more aggression here from Optic, but it's not as far forward for Shotzi. This is just a double stack on the B side defensively with Kenny watching mid. There's just so many different looks right now on Optic's defense. Yeah. Like you're expecting Shotzi to be aggressive every single round alongside Prem, but this time they're going to play it nice and slow towards the backside of the B-bomb. Dash, he's putting down a couple shots, he's getting all the info he possibly can. But still nothing to gain. 30 seconds already knocked off the clock, and you are landing face. Just go towards that. Yeah, and, and that's the thing, though. You can kind of see it. Not a lot of forward play up towards B-street because they may be worried about if Shotzi's gotten into the treehouse, but they also haven't seen anything at mid-tank. So this is just, again, Atlanta trying to find information on at least one more member from OpTic, and they're really not getting it. Nades blow up over top of A. Simp will also get tagged, so here come OpTic on the rotation defensively. 
Elise information now again. They know that the pressure is going to be over towards A. Elise, the Kenny fine in the first, but the trade is going to be there. There's only 25 seconds left, and Atlanta have to get that objective done. The BC's collected the bomb, but Optic's threat on the flank has been established. Here comes the commitment. Shot C. Does he see a couple of Oh, Sure does. Bomb not planted. Just falls once again to sell. He'll get the first. Snaps over. Sees Shot C. Top side tank, but the help has arrived. And Optic take back to back rounds. You can just tell right there on Atlanta's attacking rounds. Like, they're expecting to see one of these SMGs up through the middle of the map. The fact that a minute goes off the clock, they're already pushed through Cafe. No one's playing an A bomb corner. Yep. They take so long just waiting for someone to make a play from Optic, but it was both the SMGs up on the opposite side of the map. They come through and they get it done. That's three rounds in a row now for Optic. So much mystery in the Optic setup. Had Atlanta hungry for Intel. Hello, crowd. Here we go. Kind of feels like already for Atlanta, need to establish some of those current win conditions we talked about. Stop the bomb from being planted. So far, Optic two for two in overall plants. This time for Atlanta, a little bit of a forward play initially from a BZ, but he'll back up and just watch mid tank. And this is another different look by Optic yep. Texas. This time we're going to take Cafe Control Kenny. It's going to be the island player holding down broken side, but we do have one player sneaking on through. It is going to be Simp. That bomb is slowly working its way up. Shotzi trying to edge his way out through Freezer. And I think the more that Sim can get established over towards where this control zone would normally be, the faster is gonna feel like he can rotate over if he needs to. Problem is, does Atlanta actually have any intel? How many players for Optic are over the top of A? Lots of tags for BZ, but all of it through the wall. So everyone will stay up. We'll continue 4v4, 40 seconds on the clock. Now Draza's rotated over to help. Shotzi's just waiting. Shotzi does not want to get bad timing. At least a Draza finding the first blood. Doesn't oh. spot Shotzi, so he's at least able to even up the numbers. 3v3, only 30 seconds. Commitment not fully established over towards A. And I don't know if Kenny actually saw the rotation back from Sim. No, I don't believe he had. So the rotation through mid cut works out for one. Sim turns that into a double. Can't quite get away with his life. 15 seconds on the clock for what would be a 1v3 for Bruce. On a 3 3 as well. Bomb will be collected. Draza taken down. 1v1. But Selium is so far away. Dashi. Does, I believe, just have enough time for this plant. Yes, just barely. Selium not able to find the exit. Oh my god, this is a 1v1. I didn't think he had enough time, but the timing not going in Dashi's favor. He does it with the pistol, but Selium is ready with that MCW in hand. Clutches up in the one-on-one -on -one gunfight. Secures the round for Atlanta phase. What was almost a 1v3 from Dash. Yep. Sally gets the better of him. And throughout all of it, the drama of what's the timeout going to mean? <laughs> Were there connection issues on one side or the other? I would imagine that it looked like based on the motion that may have came from Atlanta's perspective, but hard to say. I think Draza dropped. Oh, there you go. I think he's coming back down. Yeah. So we'll see. It looks it's like okay, guys. I'm telling you. Another it's five fine. seconds. We're right back into it. Yeah. Status doesn't change as far as how the round was determined. And it looks like everyone is still locked into the monitor, so everything should be good to restart this one pretty darn quickly. Okay. So, big retake again from FaZe. We talked about this. Their ability to play off the objective has been strong, and they showed it here once again with another clutch round. Just started with Draza finding that first kill. Absolutely. Like Optic Texas, they had full control of that A site with about a minute left on the clock. But Shati does not want to get bad timing committing towards that bomb plant. Just takes too long, leading to Draza getting that first kill. Even though he finds the trade, you probably want to put that bomb down in that situation because it's a lot more difficult for Atlanta FaZe to break right into your cafe to try to successfully retake that site. Yep. So what next here for Optic Setup? We've seen a lot of variety so far. And that's, I will say, just kind of thinking back to their match they played just a week ago, yeah. that it's already very different. It feels like the playbook has really been fleshed out a lot. The thing about it is it's hard to plan against this Atlanta team because the individuals are not just incredible, but their ability to keep you guessing is also just as high. So here we go, right back into it. Not much of a delay, just another 3-2 as Atlanta start to get things going on their next offensive attempt. And a three-man defensive stack here from Optic looking to get aggressive again. It's another different look. This time we're going to take DVD Alley and don't know if Simp's going to be able to read this. Definitely not going to read two. Fred finds the first blood. That's now bombed down at DVD. And this is all about just can you find a quick recovery here from Atlanta? Not just in the lives, but of course in particular to collect this bomb and get back onto your offensive ways. Nades and stuns from Abizu over towards mid-tank. Pred has backed out though, so he'll stay safe when we continue to 4v3. And as long as you're Optic Texas, just not give up anything for free. Don't challenge any one-on-ones you don't have to. Just put yourself in a nice little angle, setting up crossfires, and that's exactly what Pred is doing. Yes, it takes one second up through that mid-tank, and he might get a kill onto Draza. 
is all about isolating Shotzi at the moment. Atlanta just hard pressed to find him and Shotzi just trying to wiggle away. He does at least extend his life long enough for a trade to come through. 3v2, bomb still down. A lot of pressure onto Atlanta to find a kill and still collect. Shots to Pred, decent, but not enough for a kill. Draza scouted, and that's enough damage for Pred to find the follow-up. Now, once again, down to Cell. This will be another 1v3. 15 seconds. Ops to not play for the bomb. Instead, wants the kills, and he gets crossed up. Optic with another round up 4-2. Man, these mid-game adjustments right now from Optic Tech. Time. You can definitely tell. They went back and watched last week VOD and just said, if we throw so many different looks at them, they can't easily read us, and that's exactly what's been happening so far. Pred and Shots to combine for the first blood into his DVD. And then they just let that clock continue to wind down. You force Atlanta face to make a play on their side, and just not enough time left. Selling him in the 1v3 eventually turns into a 1v2, but he just did not have the bomb. That's an easy round for Optic. This gap has to be tightened up here for Atlanta. Need to find some of that objective pressure here defensively as once more. Here come Optic with numbers, but this time it's a BZ through mid. Quick hit up through P1. That's good for first blood. And now a very rare 4v3 for Atlanta. And that's the first first blood of the entire map for a BZ. He's, he's usually Mr. First Blood. Finally, he comes out on top in one engagement. Now in a 3v4, you have Shotzi slowly working his way up through Broken. He is that bomb carrier, but you see the rest of Atlanta face. They're not budging. They're waiting for the play to come in. Shots come out, draws has been seen. Do they expect the second contestant? Now they do, but it's too late. Simp over towards square, good for the kill. Shots, he drops the bomb now, front side B tank. Defense still very comfortable in their setup at the moment in this 4v2. Yeah, you don't have to move. You have everything cut off, all the crossfires being watched. In the 4v2, we just have to trade. Early shots does get Draza to back down a little bit, at least to Kenny finding him, but Simp is there. Selium finds the final. It's too strong of a defensive setup right there from Atlanta phase on the back of a BZ finding that first blood. Yeah, and if you look back to the last Atlanta defense, a BZ made the same play, just didn't extend it yeah. through P1. This time he does, not having any contact from the prior round, and it works out beautifully for phase for a very, very quick opening first that really there was no chance to ever counter. So can they turn it into two in a row to get this thing back to a level terms at four apiece? From Optic's defensive perspective, though, again, it's been, here's us all at once, here's none of us at all. It's just been a lot of this back and forth between tempo, fast and slow both. Let's see how they make the adjustments again in another defensive round. It's all out pressure in towards the cafe. Early shots from Kenny at least gains the information on where the pressure's coming in, but Shotzi already finds himself in towards DVD. Kenny find a timing on this pinch. And how about this from FaZe? Quick plant coming through, and Optic is no wiser for this at all. Bomb planted. You can see every arrow on the minimap just immediately snaps over, saying, uh-oh, we got to go. Problem is, Selim's going to be at an island, so you have to worry about that positioning as this retake starts to get underway. Yeah, you got to move fast. You got to move fast, because you saw Dashi. He did pick the street, thinking that Selim was going to go for a late pitch, but it's Shotzi with the movement to find the first blood. Only two players left on the site. And here comes Cell for a long pinch as well. So for FaZe, it's all about just can you hold off this backside and push Cell, able to take down Ice Cream, and then a follow-up. Oh, the post plant hold. It's beautiful from FaZe. Oh, it's a four-for-one exchange. Age, and we will get leveled up at four apiece. That was just a perfect blind counter right there from Atlanta phase. All our pressure up through B. Shotzi usually plays around that broken area, or at least towards back tractor, but this time he takes DVD. They all walk right on by, and then when they put that bomb down, 100% success rate. Yeah. So it's very difficult to try to retake it, and then when you have Selian working the super long flank to find two on the pinch, it's a greatly executed play right there from Atlanta tied up at four. That's the thing about how Cell plays that island, too. He could reinforce this by on the offensive side playing through B, or he just push right down A Street and have you kind of thinking that he's everywhere at all at once. Optic on this next offense, a key round for both sides to try to get to five first. And this is another different look coming out. Phase kind of stacking over through DVD side where the only intel that Optic are giving is once again, we know that Dash is going to try to take this 1v1 versus Cell. And all you have to do if you are Optic Texas is to make sure anybody's watching over mid tank because now you have cafe yeah. control. You're in a position again where you have full A site. This time we have to just work that bomb plan. Shotzi works his way out. They get the info onto Simp towards the middle of the tank, but trophy system is going to keep him alive for now. Kenny and Draza also near one another. Both will back away. Bomb being planted. Shotzi this time does get it down, even though BZ gets first blood. Trade comes out. Sim has someone in his sights, and that'll be enough for Atlanta to take a three for one exchange. Sim with the final kill. Has Atlanta now on three rounds in a row and on map point. Just comes down to position right there of Sim. 
Like, you get the bomb down for free. Shots he's instantly taken down, but you're not expecting a second player to be aggressive with that rival nine through mid tank. Finds three on the round. Atlanta phases know something a little bit different when it comes to closing out these search and destroyers. Three rounds in a row, now put them at game point. Just their retake percentage is so unbelievable. I mean, for a team that finds as many first bloods as they do, they're not often required to get retakes, but yeah. even in situations of even numbers, 3v3s, 2v2s, they're so good at playing around the objective. So now it's on to Optic. Can you find a way to get this thing to a round 11? Not really any individual that you're looking at. Everyone's played well to this point. It just comes down to the mind games that are starting to develop in this game of chess between Optic and Atlanta. This time for Optic Texas, their setup is going to be a 2-2 split. Kenny towards the backside of the tractor, but Shotzi now information gain. He slides to broken, but that smoke he's able to get out with his life. <laughs> Big play coming in out of Shotzi, but Draza finds the first blood on the Kenny. And they know that Shotzi's only position could be tight up against this B site, so he needs help. Fred's rotated over. A BZ on the hunt. Shotzi trying to make something happen, but that's a square peg meeting a round hole. So Fred steps forward. Atlanta not committing to this play yet, and the longer this takes, the more that there's silence across the map, the more that Optic starts to doubt that this is a play towards B. Yeah, you see Dashy already rotating back over towards the A Street, but now Pred spots a couple players crossing in front of him. Dashy, you gotta come help me. Everyone from Atlanta Phase is on this side of the map, and Sim takes down Pred. Big Brucey, the Batman, 1v4. Good luck, have fun. Smoke covers the cross, so he's got to do this through the ice cream door. Pops everything, the bomb getting planted. So Dashy only finds a single kill. And how about the stretch of rounds in a row from Atlanta FaZe? Oh, man. Optic came out, I will say, with a lot of versatility, but FaZe not fooled, throws it right back in their face. That's what makes them the best search and destroy team that we have in the game. Agreed. The way that they are able to make those mid-game adjustments, those mid-round adjustments, just reading what Optic are doing. Those first couple, those first six rounds was like, all right, Optic are throwing this at us. They're throwing this at us. Okay, but if we take this, they're going to have to do this. Yes. They started to figure that out towards the later half in this search and destroy. What was that? Four rounds Four in a round. row to close this one out. They're the best team in Search and Destroy, and they show it there. They tie the series up at one. And they do it by way of not just finding good retakes, good objective play, but they also started to pick things up in the first blood department as well, which has been kind of their bread and butter, no matter what Search and Destroy map we find ourselves on. So the talents across the board, really no one you can point to to say, oh, wish we could have had more from that person. But the biggest point is both teams should have expected our next map to hit the pool. Optic don't like Invasion. FaZe don't want to give them Karachi. So naturally, High Rise will be our control once again in this second matchup between these two teams. And I think that that's the map that's going to decide everything, man. Whoever's able to walk away with this control, you obviously have the advantage in this series, but just the momentum going forward. Best map for Atlanta Faith. Kind of a mid one for Optic. You need this map to walk away with the W. And then, of course, that also guarantees us a map for Invasion, which is also a rebuttal from when these two teams had played previously. But I'll tell you, to this point, the Optic Phase legacy and rivalry that has continued to kind of echo across the halls of Call of Duty has provided High Rise coming up next. Feels like an important one for both sides. See how it goes when we come back. Start the season strong with the Call of Duty League Pack. Grab yourself the CDL Operator, Weapon Blueprint, and so much more. Check out the Call of Duty store in-game now. The Painted Alabrije bundle is available now in the Call of Duty store. Inspired by the folk art of Oaxaca, this stunning bundle offers colorful, vibrant, and mythical items you gotta check out.
Welcome back to Boston and welcome to Optic versus Phase. Tied up one apiece. I'm Ship with me, Study, and we're going into a high rise control, which, looking at how both teams have preferred to play the mode, this one is pretty predictable. The thing about it is, this is a map, and really every map feels like Phase is just unkillable at times. This is Phase's bread and butter, man. They're 2 0. The only control that they are currently undefeated on. They don't want to play Optic on that Karachi map, so we get that out the way. We have our best control map with them choosing Team B. And the thing that really scares me for them is that they have the best non-traded kill percentage in the entire league. 70% of the time, every single player on Atlanta phase get a kill and they stay alive for an extra five seconds. Yeah. On a map like High Rise, that can come back to bite you because you have to come off small, check every single corner, and they make it difficult. So I think if you are Optic Texas, it's simply about the slay. You have to slay with Atlanta on this map. Confirm kills, especially when you find yourself on defense if you're Optic because that has been statistically their way side and wouldn't you know it that's the side that they will spawn up on phase focused over towards hitting in the underground and with that optic just trying to take long range battles with Shraza starts us off with first blood they first kill the takedown Kenny now you have the opportunity to go over towards that a side but it's still a great trade going down towards the middle of the map optic find three last player up is gonna be simp you get the stun in but you don't win the gunny the trade is gonna be there so optic holds strong in their first line of defense look at the positioning wall initially from Shotzi he was all the way up towards the top side of Atlanta spawns forcing FaZe off spawn to try to reconsider how they want to try to break out B from the front. Unfortunate teammate coming out, leaves Brent by himself. Dashi, oh, 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 that was a critical mistake. Draza gets two, Selium follows up, and now FaZe on with three members at B. That's three members on with a clean four dead. So now Optic are in a situation where you have to work your way out of the spawn. You have to check every corner, and a BZ is cutting you down. That's another four dead. It had to be in the sling, and already off to a bad start. Atlanta up by six live. That's all already be done and dusted we're already working on it now bz could just be frustrating just kind of keep finessing your life for as long as possible quick trade comes out first stick of progress though is locked for atlanta follow up oh my oh, god it's just absolutely perfect from phase now again a three-man stack comes through second tick gonna get locked optic need to find the kill they need to find a way to That's go it. and they are able to do so a lightning fast offense that might be the fastest offense we're going to see all year long. I like that call. We're talking about multiple four deads at the right time. That round ended 22 to 14 in lives remaining. And even with them extending that time over towards B, there was still a minute and 57 seconds left on the game clock. Picture perfect round right there from Atlanta. Wow. Talk about just an absolute complete blowout in the first round. And that's going to bring back, I think, a little bit of PTSD for Optic fans from the last time they played, because it was a 3-0 when they played this match when they had it online. But I know that, the, that attacking round wasn't that damn No, fast. no, no, like, it wasn't, no. <laughs> that's scary. If Atlanta Face come out swinging like that, because Draza starts it off, pretty sure he earns himself a cruise missile potentially as well, but... Yeah, 7-1. If you are Optic, you just got to forget about that round. That one did not happen. We're basically spawning in in the first round on the attack. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Down 1-0. Yeah. <laughs> it's just... It's not good any way you slice it. Small timeout here as it looks like possible situation has quickly been resolved. Jump right back into the mix here again. And it almost puts you in this position where Optic are suddenly just kind of completely slingshotted back into this map saying, we have to kind of do the exact same thing that Atlanta just did to us if you want to have a chance. And the good thing for them is that they're also one of the top teams that we have on the attacking side and they get it done through the slang. So just watch Atlanta face do it to you. Can you mimic exactly what they just did? Abizi with the first slot on to Kenny, already taking bottom blue control. Optic have full B side. Yeah, this is all about elevator alley here from Texas. Couple of long range shots do land though, so Optic get to stall the clock at a minute 12 and focus over towards B. Help is on the way. Dashi able to be the last one still over, holding on to this contest time. Draws the steps in, but does get traded out. Two for one goes the exchange, but Synth is again playing this from the back side of the map, finding eliminations and making sure Optic cannot stack. And that's already the first segment complete, but Draza does take down Kenny off that positioning. So now the rest of Optic coming off spawn. Have to try to pause this game clock. The next person up is going to be Dashi. He's already in towards B. He finds the first. Big stun to slow down Simp because he was trying to oh. go for that trade. And now Optic are maintaining map control. Exactly what you need to do. Oh, and Pred getting a second through mid map is huge. Dashi with a little bit more cushion to kind of play his life over towards B. While Optic are simultaneously making a little bit of work. Oh! oh. On the A side. And how about Pred? He gets seven in a row. Eventually. 
actually taken out by an explosion, but it doesn't make much of a difference because Optic are still capturing on both zones. They're still capturing B, and they have a player on A. All of Atlanta phase stuck in the back of their base. B is now done and dusted. We're halfway to completing this second segment at A as well. That's already two dead in the feed. We ask for a response, and Optic are giving it. One segment left until they take this attack. Did not see this map going this way, but boy, are we Man. here for it. Wow. You are not going to see a better set of back-to-back -back offensive rounds, and wouldn't you know it, we're getting it on plan between two of our top squads. Two of the best attacking teams that we have on this map, and they show it in back-to-back -back rounds. All segments complete, so they're all squared up at six. But that's a great response right there Huge. from Optic to put the momentum back on their side. Crucial, crucial plays coming in from Pred. He earns himself a cruise missile, sitting at 11 and 6 so far. Draza, keep in mind, also earned one of his own. So we've got equal cruises earned on both sides. Are we going to see any defense? <laughs> that's the real question here. Different opening route for Atlanta. Not opting to go through underground this time. It's all through Elevator Alley. First shot's good from Pred. Shotzi, I believe, has been seen top propane, but no one for FaZe could do anything about it yet. And they can't get out. They can't find any kills. Last player up is going to be Draza. He sniffed out. Great read right there by Dashi. Now you're forced to hit the reset button. Everyone has to work their way out through the right side. Blue is that positioning right now from Optic, Texas. You have Elevator shot. Shotzi trying to get forward, does get pushed aside, so Atlanta not in the spawn trap as of yet, but the clock continues to fade away. 50 seconds to go. Couple of the kills keep Atlanta tight in the lives, but again, not a lot of progress to be spoken of when it comes to either of these two zones. Route here from Simtho does get over towards A, so clock stops at 41 seconds, and FaZe will have a chance to kind of, again, do what Optic did, get players on both zones. Oh, and they find three kills in the feed. Last player up is going to be Draza. You have to hop off that point. You have to help your teammates get out of the base, and... With only 30 seconds left, they try to commit towards both points. They find the initial two fights, but now it's Fred's turn. He takes one down from the top, and now it's only him. Everyone else from his team are going to be all spawned, but he's not slowing down. He's unbelievable. 15 and 8. He continues to fry. And the last two members for face were seen on this crossover towards B. Shotzi jumps into contest, but can't lock the shots down on towards Sip. Pred now also not in a position to follow up to confirm the kill off the damage. So B gets the first ticket progress done. Draza, a little bit of assistance from Sip. Also uh -oh. wins mid map. And again, here come FaZe with the stack. Second tick in. Third one looking likely as well. Yeah, now Optic of course to give up that B point. Actually, Pred is going to invest that cruise missile. All the trophies going to be down. They already captured it. Can he find a kill? Yes, he does. It's a big kill for at least to allow his teammates to get out of the base, and that leads to them finding three kills. Just have to locate where Adraz is as he's trying to play his life until his teammates get out. Completely squanders the ability to transition, though, if you're FaZe. Refighting this back out of spawn. Shotzi cleans things up, finally, with the remaining FaZe offensive players towards the B zone. Same foot. Dashy, other side of the map, getting forward. So now you've got Optic looking into the spawn windows of Atlanta. This is perfect. You pass that 50-yard line. Can you hold them for a long time, though? Dashy drops across the map. Do get that close spawn towards the back end, but Shotzi, even with the AR, he makes it look easy. 45 seconds remaining on the game clock. A fortunate team hit again by Dashi onto Pred, but they're still holding strong. Atlanta Fades only have one person on it. And this could also come down to lives. We've got a 10 playing up against nine, but Sims double again continues to allow Atlanta now push a little bit further forward towards the defensive spot. Oh, Sim man. oh mantles over the top of the windows. Pistol in hand gets to four in a row. Still on the zone is Cell. First tick of progress gonna get locked and Optic have to take the scenic route, and it's not very good to look at. Eight plays four. Second tick of progress looking good, but Pred clears the zone. Clock now looking to tick again. Oh, Pred was the only guy out. He takes him off of that point, and it eventually leads to the rest of Optic having the ability to get out of their base, but now they have no more respawns. It has to be picture perfect, but the, all the kills in the feed are going to Atlanta phase. It all comes down to Dashy. 1v4, he gets taken down. Wow. And Atlanta FaZe don't get it done in the segments. They complete five, but they take another attack. And a big decision there for FaZe to not necessarily just stack on towards A. Let's keep Optic spawning so far away that their only choice is to have to rewrap this through the B zone. Beautiful split-second decision from FaZe allows this to stay all offense. I, I mean, based on how these two teams played it the last time, it's kind of how we've generally seen this map go. I didn't have on my bingo card three straight attacking rounds going the way of either of these two teams. No, I definitely didn't have it either. But now it needs to be four if you want to try to force that round number five. If Optic Texas complete all segments, they will have defense just in case. But they have to win this attacking first. Sim starts it off. Great B-side control. 
making sure no one's going to be able to sneak up. But you see the route from Fred. He's slowly working his way up that oh. A side, and Shotzi with the beamer. Yeah, good shots from Shotzi. Keeps FaZe focused on this D zone, and now Fred can make his move. Only able to take down one, but could sneak over towards the defensive windows again. So clock stalls at a minute eight. Optic reinforcing. The only real play here for FaZe to try to hit this from the backside. It's kind of a 2v2 on different fronts. And he's trying to keep him trapped. See, Fred, he's being such a nuisance, not trying to let anyone out. Takes down a BZ. Now it's time to jump into the spawn. What else can you get done? Not taking down Cillium. It's not going to help, but Dashi is going to be there for the trade. Second segment already complete. Now the focus has to go back over towards Synth. He's over on the offensive side, eventually traded by Kenny. Look at the life count. 21 playing 23. We've got 60 seconds on the clock. But for Optic, you've got to find a way to finish off this B-zone, extend the route, and hopefully still see around five. Otherwise, FaZe take a crucial map winner. Over towards B we look, and as Shotzi was trying to get on, he gets taken out of the picture, and FaZe start to dominate in the kill feed. That's already three dead, so now Optic forced to hit the reset button. Fred does take down Draza. He's the only man out, but how much longer can they be held in the back of the spawn? It's only 35 seconds left. You need one segment over towards B, but Selium in the perfect positioning. Earns himself a cruise missile. Only 30 seconds left. Optic have to get a move on it. Dashi tries to move over towards the eight barrels. Pushed off by Selium now on seven in a row. Shotzi, good damage comes through for a double, and that will be enough for Optic okay. to take those kills, rotate back towards B. Two members on. That'll be good for the extra 60 seconds. And keep your eye on Shotzi. He's making a route happen. Selium calling it the cruise missile. Should scout this out. Just comes down to can they survive through the cruise. Time is now extended. Shotzi does fall. It leads to Sip and Ibizi finding two, make it all four dead in the feed. The cruise missile doesn't gain anything, but it gains the information to allow the teammates to push out. Now Optic only have a minute. Down by four lives. Have to work their way out of the base. Have to find something clean as well. Only 10 lives remaining is not what you'd like to fully capture an A zone. Shotzi just reading intel on every single member of FaZe through the back. Gets a lot of simp, but not enough of him as Ibizi on the other side of the map. Takes down two Optic offensive players. Not looking good here for Texas. They need something, they need it quick. Yeah, this is not good, man. Shotzi's just trying to wait for his teammates to find a couple kills, but they have not been able to find any. Only five lives make it four remaining. This might be it if Optic Texas don't make it happen. Kenny and Shotzi do extend an opportunity, but it's a 10v3. Not looking good here. It's been all offense at this point, but FaZe defensively have stepped up when it matters most. Shotzi on the zone. Here comes the final cruise out of Draza. That will land, and the whole map explodes. 8v1. Fred, last one left alive. And here comes the flood from FaZe. It's from all fronts at the same time. And Atlanta clean things up. A 3-1 tally here gives them the edge of the series. Well, such a back and forth control between both of these teams, but I said it before the map started. It simply came down to the sling. It was an instant response from both squads to tie yeah. it up at one. But then Atlanta phase making the adjustments to second half, gaining all the kills, not winning that round by, by the segments complete. And then when they go into a defense, it's just every time they needed to get a four dead. Every time Optic got a four dead, a cruise missile was invested. Exactly. You were able to reposition them. You allowed Atlanta face to work out of the spawn. And they just simply outslayed Optic Texas right there. And that leads to the W. And you can really see the difference, I think, in particular when you focus on the two ARs from both sides. Yeah. 15 to 22 from Kenny. Yeah, lots of damage, good assists. Dashy, 12 and 19. But you look down to Cell, 21 and 13. He gets himself that late cruise, like you mentioned. And of course, draws it almost to the exact same thing through the first three rounds. So, Face really dominating in the long range battles there, definitely a key. And now if you are Atlanta Face, you're up 2-1. You do exactly what you need to do as Team B. When you're choosing Team B in these series, you're giving up that first hard point. You say you can go out there and play whatever, whatever the hell you want as map number one. But the middle maps, the next two, three, and four are all picks from Atlanta Phase. And the next one that we have on our hands is a map that they recently just beat them on, on Invasion, 250 to 235. It wasn't easy, but they got it done. Yeah, and I think the big thing about it is we're going to be able to see this kind of almost an immediate rebuttal towards what we had in map number one, where, again, Optic need to find a way to get these R's to control the tempo, yeah. control the pace, find ways to win good rotational wins, because otherwise, we know what we're going to expect out of Selian. His engagements per map are not necessarily the highest, yeah. but he's winning almost every single one of them, it feels like. He always time. puts himself in a great position. Absolutely. Like he's the guy early off the rotation, holding the Godhead glitch to make sure he's putting his, his team in a position to succeed, and that's always the player he has been. Obviously, in this title, he's not going to have a lot of engagements. You have now Draza added to the lineup, who's also one of those slayers who can take over the game. So all you have to do, Selium, is make sure you hold down the better side for us. You make it sound so simple, Jay. <laughs>
It's a good game. It's a good game. Work. <laughs> and now I'll say it. I mean, Optic, they really need something from Shotzi here. Yeah. He looked really good versus Miami. We kind of had this moment throughout the online phase, especially in the last couple of matches. It was like, where is the shots that we're used to seeing? He could be the one guy that Optic needs to pop off here and just completely dominate, stop Simp and BZ from going rampant, and hopefully, again, allow easier battles versus Celia. And these teams have so much history, so we have so much to look at when we look at this matchup. And every single time that Optic Texas usually walk away with a W, it's on the back of Shotzi. He yeah. drops a 1.2 every single time. Not having the best start to this series, but it's still not over. You can be the game changer in this map number four. You just have to think about the things that they made that, that cost them last year. Yes. We're talking about a 250 to 235 scoreline. They had one hill, the second rotation at Palace, where they were the team early off the rotation, but you let one player from Atlanta face sneak on by, and everyone starts to focus him. So they only were able to walk away with, which is usually a full 60, 20 points yeah. there. And then as you rotate over towards the second half, it was that fact that Atlanta Face were able to breach that 190 point mark at that bathroom hill, set up properly around that tree house, and not even put themselves in a position to play for Palace. They close it out at tree. So they have that clutch in them. But if we saw map number one, Optic will keep it in Mixy. You have to do it here in map four. And that's the really impressive thing about Optic is statistically speaking, they rank some of the highest overall in the league when it comes to how they hold and how they break, which is surprising because their average margin per map is still good, yeah. but their record is only eight and four. It just comes down to when they win, they usually win by a lot. When they lose, they also kind of similarly so often lose by quite a bit. We're on the other side for FaZe. You mentioned it in map number one. Their ability to win in 30-point margin games has been perfect to this point. That has been where I think Atlanta FaZe really stands out is their clutch ability on hardpoint maps. And that has to be the addition of Draza. No panic. There's yeah. no panic on the side of Atlanta FaZe. They are never worried to whatever map it is, whatever mo mode it is, with the addition of Draza. He's installing that confidence in three players who have been confident as hell for the past five years. <laughs> yeah. This team is in full form, and they have the opportunity to put Optic down. All right, let's see how it goes, because it's really, again, pick a, pick your poison when it comes to focusing on one player from FaZe. Simp has been unbelievable, though. Again, just kind of up close and personal, 1.24. He's averaging nearly 24 kills per 10 minutes, and the damage numbers are off the charts. So, again, a lot of shutdown would have to happen here. I think a lot of the focus comes down to what do we get out of Shotzi. But let's load on it. It's Optic Texas, Atlanta phase map number four texas city the back two maps otherwise atlanta will continue to hold the edge over optic on the season to this point yeah and optic with their back against the wall they're gonna need the green wall behind them in this map number four trades are abound in towards the cafe back and forth we go but it's dashy that comes out on top of the engagements optic in early control Rasa from behind, able to take down Kenny. Does not expect Dashi initially, and whoa, got a lot of them, but not able to confirm the kill. So Optic off their second spawns, right back into the hard point, and right back into earning some early You can time. already see what Abizi's doing. He's thinking about that next hill. He's 35 seconds at that next HP. They are deciding to give up all of this time to Optic Texas, and then they have no problem taking it all. Just now, you have to make up for it if you are Atlanta Faze. Abizi in the crucial position. He's going to let one run on by, but now his positioning is known. Uh, basically, a full 40 seconds off P1 to start off for Optic. Spawns have not moved after they were initially flipped, so Faze once again able to get themselves in towards construction early. And every kill from Draza is an important one for Faze. Oh, yeah. Look at this, is already done. Optic spawns back over towards Palace. You've got two members for Atlanta in the middle of the map, and Texas are sitting here saying, well, where are they going to come from first? And now you have Fred and Shotzi who are slowing down. They do not want to spawn all out towards the backside out of Palace, so you want to take your time, find a couple kills on the pitch, but Sip does come out on top of the engagements, and the spawns do flip. Actually, they are adjacent to each other. Everyone's spawning right next to each other, but at least Optic are the team in the time. Little conga line out of Palace. Fred in the hard point, good to get reinforces. Dashi steps forward to assist. Faze still trying to, again, hit this for what is a lot of time, to be fair. 23 seconds still remaining, but kills continue to come through for Optic. Faze trying to pinch this up from the backside. It's all about not only just winning the kills on the exit, but can they get some success reflipping spawns? And Fred already earns himself a cruise miss, so now Optic do a great job at that P2. How long can you try to trap him in towards the back end? They don't find a single kill, and now the spawns flip. The soul man is going to be Kenny. He only takes down one, but Atlanta needed the break out of that back palace yes. spawn, and they get it done at the right time time to win that rotation it towards next. Helps them from keeping this map at least inside of your yeah. grip. It doesn't get ugly too quick. 
And how about this from FaZe? Aggression on all fronts. Dashy, great read. That's an important two kills. Texas can fly. They can just run right in towards bus station. Dash, Darzo rather, part of me, not able to fully confirm the kill from the front, but still able to tally one. Turns back to the hard point for a second. Not quite able to get all three, but still with that optical break, FaZe still looking to get their way back in with 30 seconds remaining. Oh, and FaZe is definitely going to be disappointed about that one. You have players spawning across the map, set up for some easy pinches, but Optic read the play. They find the break with the numbers at the bathroom hill, and now it's all about the rotation over towards next. Atlanta FaZe already have two players in that positioning, but they're not going to send anyone towards that junk side. The rest of Optic slowly working because they don't have palace control. They know that. We need to try to fight for this treehouse side, and Simp is ready for the jump from from Shotzi to start it off with this initial time. Help on the backside though. Draza gets involved, keeps this optic hit from really amassing too much. Pred up top at broken. Able to at least see where Sim's position is, but it's more about the focus with the oh, BZ initially. But Draza able to once again be a part of it. Spawns towards Plaza, come out for Optic, but the focus for Atlanta is all about can they just soak every second here at four? And you have to make that decision now. You yeah. don't have Palace anymore. And if you are Optic Texas, you will take it. We can give up this 40 seconds. You're probably going to take a little lead, but we have the ability to get a full 60. You just have to win a couple gunfights because if you lose these fights, then you start spawning across the map. Next line of defense is Shotzi, and depending on how far pushed up. Draza gets up on the map. He potentially spawns across. No, he's going to spawn with his team. So no more pushing towards that old hill. Opti got to set up perfectly here. Big shutdown on Draza that completely eliminates one side of the map for Atlanta's hit. But the bigger news here for FaZe is the fact that they've got a little bit of room to work with over towards street side and they brought this game back to level footing. Just down to can they actually break. The thing about it is Optic is one of the best teams holding on this map in the game, and you're going to see it really come to light here if they continue to find kills in front of five. Yeah, this has to be a good hold, though. Kenny, unfortunately, does get pushed out by Draza. So now you have a couple players already underneath. Got to try to sniff out where Draza is, but they're cutting off the rest. Draza sneaks on by, but he's the only one. A big one-on-one -on -one from Penn. Can he win it? No, he cannot. Draza makes the play, but the trade is there. Optic right back in. Yeah, Shotzi Kenny saved the day for what looked to be an inevitable break for FaZe. Still 35 seconds remaining. Selium already crossing over. Finds himself elimination into Kenny, but the trade is swift. And with that, Optic locking in the back 30 for a guarantee. Yeah, that's it. That's that's it. No more pushing if you are Atlanta face. Don't want to flip those spawns because you already have a couple players out from Optic Texas and you actually do get a close spawn for Pred over towards the treehouse. So can they get anything done from this positioning? Kenny does get taken down, but now it's on Pred. He finds one. You just got to play your life now. Just be a nuisance. Just sit around the backside. Keep Atlanta really having to focus on everything all at once all the time. Fred, though, is seen trying to make a move around the backside at Mannequin. Draws it with the elimination. Still holds on towards mid-tank. Optic giving him a lot of damage and eventually take him out of the picture. Hard point just opens. 140 playing 96, and Optic have numbers for their break. Here we go. Everyone's trying to find their way in. Abizi starts it off with the first kill. You try to work through that B Street Alley as well, but Atlanta have everything cut off. Already three dead in the feed. Father's Pele push up is going to be Shotzi. He does take down one, but you can't challenge three players by yourself. You got to let those reinforcements come in. Optic still trying to get this done from every point of ingress and a two for two exchange starts to come through. Texas now into the hard point. Draza wanted to battle this one back from Pred, shuts him down. Follow up from Sip, able to take down one. Pistol now back over to the MCW. Tough gunfight, Kenny holds the front door. This is key time for both teams. Final 1v1 for the scrap. Cell, he will be stunned. Nade won't fully damage over the top. Shots, he still puts him down and Optic on rotation. That's perfect. That's a perfect play right there from Optic Texas because if you've killed them all at the right time and once that hill pops, they can potentially start spawning behind you. But you see Dashy in the cruiser position. He just wants to stay pushed out towards Treehouse. Doesn't want to allow his teammates to continuously spawn towards the backside of Palace, but this is the time to invest the cruise missile. Information now gained. How do they attempt to break? Broke system does its job. Kenny stays alive. Shotzi deep on the cross. Also make sure that no one from FaZe can contest Kenny in this tight corner. Good follow-ups coming out. Draza able to tally one. Oh, and then over the top of the tank takes care of Kenny. Optic still spawning close. A chance to jump right back into the hill. 30 seconds to fight for. Atlanta FaZe in a decision now where you have to either apply the pressure or set up that rotation towards next. Because Optic looking like they're going to be very difficult to take out of this HP. Shotzi with the movement finds one. Pred finds a second. And you already have a player in Dash. He's slowly working his way on out. All of this time goes to Optic Texas. They blew this game wide open. Atlanta has to be perfect here. And they also have to rotate perfectly just to give themselves a chance to get back into this game. Draza on the old time. 
trying to make himself just as untradeable as possible. And Texas are actually spending a lot of resources to work through this street. They eventually get a couple of the kills, but FaZe spawning close will have the setup they want for Bus. And this is the break that led to Optic Texas growing the lead the way that they did. They can get another one in towards the bathroom even better. You get the cruise missile, you find the first blood. Now you know exactly where you need to apply this pressure in. Two players through the back, one through the front. Can you win the gunfight? No, Sid takes down one, but it's Optic Texas with the numbers. First two kills are decent. Sid shuts it down, and with a BZ with him, a prime time to see if FaZe can hold this up as the kills come out. We'll jump over to an Atlanta FaZe. Listen it. It's not DVD. Hurt. They're in there, okay? Shot picture dark, okay. Yeah. Oh, I have been strike first. One more take, 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 take one shot, take one shot. Heady. I think I threw. Yeah, take, oh, I'll do, I'll do. Take that standing nice. on the door, on the, on the top part. One more Nate it in new, Nate it in new. I don't see back alley. Back alley, on top. One shot, I'm taking this one, I'm taking this one. I'm one shot. Hey, on top, my shot, one shot. I'm going to have this one. 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 I'm a couple of kills for Optic, allow them a chance to find extra time over towards the old hard point, but the whole focus of who wins this map comes down to what's happening right here at Palace. This is exactly what we saw last week on the online qualifier match, just getting Mixy in towards the Palace. It all is going to come down to who can set up properly, who can find these final couple of kills and put their team on a preferred side. Sip finds another, now it's all on to Pred. He snuck his way through back Palace, can he get it done? Shots going over to the top side, Dashy taken out, but enough damage to give Pred an easy kill. He has to stay alive. Atlanta still also kind of in a conga line set of spawns. Uh -oh. Fred for three. Help has now arrived. 221, 205. Atlanta still in the hard point, but they're lacking on numbers. Fred trying to find this last player on the inside, but six pre fire perfect. Kenny with the trade. We're still going 50 50 in the backside of the hill. It's an all out mix into the backside of the palace. Whoever wins this next set of fights is going to get it done. It's all out trades as well, but now it's only Shotzi in towards the HP. Everyone else on the side of Atlanta phase are there, but they can no longer win it on this hard point. If you are Optic Texas, you are forced to make a decision. Do we continue to apply pressure? And with all those kills going in favor of Atlanta phase, you are forced to now chalk it up. It has to be a P1 victory. Oh, look at the aggressive position, though, from Shotzi. He could still try to hit this, get extra timer. So 1v1. 1v1 on the old time, but the pistol doesn't work out. So now we got a 3v3. Trade fights, only 10 seconds left. Can they come out on top? Optica currently in it. It has to be perfect from this point on. Atlanta spawning all over the map. 239, uh -oh. 239. Phase with a couple of key eliminations. Here comes Selium from the front. Can he? Oh! before the series started. In those clutch moments, Atlanta FaZe usually find a way to get it done. But they were just not ready. They were not ready for the MCW pressure that Kenny just put on them in the cafe. He finds three in those final moments, up close and personal, to hold down that hard point to the T. Optic Texas trading blow for blow again. It was almost the same exact score like we saw last week online, but at this time, it's Optic come out on top, and now we got a game five. <laughs> Unreal stuff. I mean, this is literally the definition of Mixie. Atlanta spawning all over the map, and this is just flat out who's got the gunny, who's got the reeds, because at this moment, things are looking like they're going to break without question. It's a 2v4. They take down Dashie, so now it's all on Kenny. The fact that he walked away with three. Eventually his teammates get back into the play and then gets another cutoff kill on to Selium. A 2v4 at that cafe. It has to be better traded if you are Atlanta phase, but that's Kenny right there showing why he's a world champion. <laughs> Unreal stuff, man. Woo! We're loving it here in Boston.
And the fun thing about this is not only do we get essentially what is this day, your immediate rubber match on the invasion hard point. We're going into a map five search where just throw away the stats. This is just yeah. who wants it more, it feels like, as we take a look at the game flow. Man, it was so back and forth. Obviously, you see Optic Texas, when it got to that P5 hill, they were able to pull away. They chained it to a little bit of time in towards P bun, but when they really started pull away was that P2 HP. They held it for a full 45 seconds, and then at that point, you forced Atlanta face to hit that rotation. They respond in towards the bar in towards the barbershop hill but then when you get towards treehouse it was an all-out mix fest neither squad could win at that hp and then it became an all-out mix fest in towards palace i've never seen so many people on that side of the map <laughs> and not anybody else unreal stuff let's take a breath because we got a map five high rise search and destroy this is another little monkey wrench thrown into the veto process for optic we'll talk about it on the back side of the break but don't you go anywhere you got nowhere else you want to be on a saturday optic and phase tied up in a good one as we head to map number five we'll be back in the back side of the break The Call of Duty Week is brought to you by Monster Energy, the official energy drink of the CDL.
back to Boston and Major One, and there has been no shortage of drama to this point in our second match of the day. Phase and Optic heading to a map number five. Jay, talk to me, brother. It's been a straight banger of a series, man. Like, if you think about how it's all played out, Optic taking two HPs versus a team in Atlanta Phase who were basically undefeated, probably with a couple mishaps when they trying out a couple maps, but they have been able to ice up at the end of these HPs. And as we get into the game five, I got a whole bunch of stats in front of me, but none of these stuff matters. <laughs> it all comes down to who wants it more in this game number five. The thing about it is we talked about FaZe and their clutch ability and hard point. That statistic does echo into game five situations and a lot of it by way of Simp. But a high rise has been very unpredictable. Search and destroy wise and Pred kicks us off for first blood. Big first kill to shut down a BZ as well. You know, he's one of the aggressors on the map. So already in the man advantage are Optic Texas. We know how difficult it is to even work a bomb plan over towards A. So they have shots in position, playing around B. It's still a floor before. Did he actually kill him? I, I thought he did. Did Beezy die? <laughs> I mean, if I saw it in the kill feed, and okay. Okay. <laughs> I was waiting for you to say something. So I was like, I thought I was losing my mind. I was like, surely we saw the kill. <laughs> Kenny's got a chuckle about that. Looks like FaZe are also smiling about whatever may have happened. Yeah, you take that, though, here in Atlanta, FaZe. You know, 10 seconds into the round, you get first blooded. I come back to life. Oh, it's definitely wrong. We got to hit the reset. But if this game five is going to have anything in store for us based off of map number two, this is a map that Optic Texas haven't played since their very first yes. league match the entire season, and they lost it all the way in a round 11 versus the subliners. It's basically like the same thing they did in map number one by playing a sub base, throwing Atlanta face off guard. So now, with them playing on this map, obviously they've been putting in practice. They got reps on it. They know exactly what they need to set up. Just got to make sure you're ready for those mid-round adjustments from Atlanta. Yep, and again, the, the game five is not a stranger to either of these two teams at this point. And, and I think the bigger thing about it, and we already kind of mentioned it once, we'll just hammer at home again. Game five has been perfect so far for Atlanta. 12 and four overall when it comes to game five. So they've not only gotten wins, they've also done it very convincingly. Yeah, they're only sitting at 2-0. Oh. That means yeah. every other team that they've played, either 3-1 or 3-0, they are not making it to this game five because they usually find success, at least in one of the respawns, other than that S&D early on into the series. But if you are Optic Texas, the one game five you did lose is all the way in the beginning of the season. Yeah. If you are Atlanta Face, there's no way in hell you're watching that bot and thinking they're going to come out and play the same exact way that they were versus the subliners. Just another mind game out of Optic. Even if you would even think that Atlanta was sitting here saying, yeah, Optic is going to put high rise into their map pool. I mean, like you mentioned, they hadn't played this since all the way back in week number one. That was more than a month ago at this point. So, yeah, lots of mystery built into the prize picks here, I think, just generally towards how Optic have set themselves up in this series. So, yeah, it just comes down to we saw it work out for them on sub base. Can they find the same success? and another mystery pick here at the high rise. And so far in this series, at least the last couple of maps, Fred has really been the guy mm. when they talk about the slang for this Optic Texas roster. He's always going to put himself in a position to win those one-on-one, those crucial one-on-ones. And he even got it before the reset yeah. happened. Yeah. Around the first ball, so we think. easy. So <laughs> you have to make sure if you are Fred, you're not losing that confidence. You're keeping that up because that aggressive play, that is why this Optic Texas roster picked you up to do what, exactly what you do. And the big thing about it, and we have to kind of go back to what we were talking about in the map too, is Optic have been great at finding first bloods offensively. Yeah. But looking at their break off in that first round on defense, everything was very passive. Read the information first. Don't get caught by a surprise. That could be a huge key for them trying to kind of counteract, which has been another great statistic for Atlanta, which is their own offensive first bloods. Let's just try to at least 50-50 those, it looks like. Especially on a map like High Rise. You yes, can see sir. everything. You can cover every single angle besides that underground, but you're most likely going to have one of your SMGs roaming around there. So, just want to make sure you're spreading the map, but not fully committed because it's very difficult on the attacking side to work one of these bomb plants. It's usually going to go down over towards B, but if you lose those key gunfights, that's what eventually opens up that A site. So Optic just got to stay ahead of that first blow. Yep. Love to hear it. Love to see it. Still looking for our players to load on in, and there's not a lot, again, for us to go off of, just yeah. because not only is it optic situation of having played this map since all the way back in week one, but this is also not a, I won't say unfamiliar map to face, but it hasn't been a staple of their search and destroy. It definitely has not been a staple as well for Atlanta Fade, because you think about all the other SDs. This is the only SD that they are currently one and one on. Every other SD, they are undefeated. They only have one auto veto, and that's terminal. Let's get that out the way. They got caught off guard with this high rise, so hopefully they are prepared for what Optic have in store for them. 
And I think it's time for us to step away from the series, man. You know how many storylines we have in this one? Dude. We're talking about Draza and Kenny going up against each other. They were world champions together, and now they're facing off for a chance to make it to a top three? It couldn't get any better. No, not at all. Hoo-wee! And just to, to get, you want to zoom out a little bit oh further my God, than that, we've man. got decades of history between these two organizations, but a 1.82 KD for Selium continues just to blow everyone else out of the water. Okay, so back into the restart. We saw off the break off last time around. Optic stayed very passive, looking for defensive information first, and it looks like they're kind of doing the exact same thing here once again. Yeah, not Abizi, though. Abizi's not going to that blue corner to get <laughs> yeah. first blooded. They're going to play it nice and slow on the backside of that top catwalk. But Optic Texas with no trophy systems, so you don't want to get pre -nated. You want to play the back of your spawn. Just try to get a read of what Atlanta are doing. And it looked like Kenny did actually scout Cell over towards those right windows, perspectively for Optic. So if he gets the call saying, hey, if Cell's playing on an island, this very well may be kind of a show that Atlanta are looking to go to A. And Simp was the bomb carrier as well. He actually drops the bomb. He said, I'm going to take mid-map control. And he's slowly working his way up through middle. Are Optic going to be prepared wow. for it? No, at least it's Simp finding the first blood. What a commitment from Simp. Beezy now pushing forward to join him. Bomb collected on the way over. 4v2 situation. Dashing a couple of shots into Simp, but still just such a tough gunfight to take. And Simp now looking for the ace. Shotzi gets a look at him. Topside heli. Simp able to find the intel and a lot of damage. Can't confirm the kill. And eventually, an explosion does take him out of the picture. A flawless round for Atlanta. And that's why Simp is one of the goats of Call of Duty. We now have that feature where you're able to drop that bomb. And he realizes, I'm gaining all this information through the middle of the map. No one is watching over this lane. He drops the bomb on the backside of the steps. Works right up the middle. Finds the first kill. Finds the second. And then also finds the third. Almost earns the ace. But Ravenine isn't that good from distance. Atlanta phase dominant in their first attack. This very well may be a search and destroy that is determined by who finds the most amount of success offensively. Yeah. Just due to the statistics we're already kind of laying out, Optic has been great with first bloods on this side of the bomb. 2-2 two, two split. Fred looking to get aggressive through the A side of the map, just over towards his heli stairs. Nades tag Sim, so he's stuck in the elevator at the moment. And whenever you throw nades over this right street, you're thinking back for a pain. You're probably not thinking inside the elevator, so. Sip is in a crucial position. He has Draza watching over him. Gets some bad timing, but at least something blows up onto someone. Dashy's a little hurt. Everything takes a pause. Under 60 seconds of play. Dashy taking extra steps forward, and now you look to Simp. Do they know that he's still stuck in this position? Or is he even stuck in this position? Shotzi first, couple of shots, good. Simp now known. Fred over the middle, cannot find the elimination. Doesn't get baited by the smoke, but he can also see that there's no exit here, so they should know that Simp's still in position, oh but it doesn't make a difference. Oh, it's filthy. Dashy for the trade, bomb down, 35 to go. It's a big kill to take down Simp. No cruise missile is gonna be earned, but look at the players from Atlanta face. Double committing on the deep flank. Right behind Kenny, he's not gonna have an idea, but the bomb does go down. 1v2 left up to Kenny. Oh, first shots don't land though. So now with Selly Madraza at range, looking to double up and take Kenny off this hop heli position. 30 seconds for the defuse. Cell tagged up, but staying alive. Nade is still here. This is going to be cooked up. There's no trophy systems on the zone. That's enough for damage to be confirmed. Kenny has to check this. No one's on. Everything resets. Now the next hit, not going to work out. Draza and Selium push the envelope, and that's enough for the kill in two straight rounds for Atlanta. That's just another round from Sint. Right off the rip, he gets naded on that B Street. He's tucked in towards the elevator, but you get Draza to put down a couple shots. You get them to overextend in towards the site. Sip finds the first and then finds that second onto Pred before he is traded. Once he's finding all those kills, you know that Optic has to put a lot of focus on that side of the map, and that's what opens up that deep pinch from Atlanta phase. Two men, 2v2, two two. you take the guy off site, and then you just slowly work to find that kill onto Kenny. Two rounds in a row now for Atlanta. And a lot of it coming from Simp's hand. Yeah. Five in one start for him. That is a problem that Optic will need to find solutions to and find them quickly. Do not want to go down 0-3. An important round here for Texas fans trying to get themselves on the board. Offensively, Atlanta looking to go with a little bit more pace and tempo, and this is heading over towards the underground with an idea that this could still be a stretch play towards B with the amount of AR support behind it. We're just a corner away from a potential fight between Shotzi and Sim. He's going back and forth, but Draza now gains that information. Him and Simp gonna try to team up to take down Shotzi, but holding the nade, Shotzi's able to catch him. First blood off there. Good push forward for Draza, confirms the trade. He's also on three in a row, BC collecting the bomb. 3v3. 
Still a lot of mystery, though, to what the Texas setup looks like until Dashy drops to the AR of Selium. Now Kenny has to find two, but only collects the first. Fred left alive in a 1v2. If you're Fred, you're in the perfect position to wop both sides. Not going to be able to sneak a bomb. You know Atlanta phase, they're going to wait. Try to see if he tries to be the aggressor. It's already 15 seconds knocked off the game clock. He's trying to realize, like, Fred is coming from somewhere. Yep. But little did they know, Pred's not coming from anywhere. <laughs> He's just still tucked in a corner. But the longer this is taken to develop, the more it's taken away Pred's ability to check over towards A, under threat of what could still be coming through elevator side. So now the plant's starting to come through. Get down, Mr. President. Selium's watching over a BZ. Bomb will get planted. Dead silence pop, and the 1v2 continues. And the 1v2, Pred's going to revamp his base. And I don't know if Atlanta Faze is going to put himself in a position to at least read it. Potentially find the first kill on to a BZ. No, he does not. Too easy for a BZ. Secures the one on one. That's three rounds in a row for Atlanta Face. And it's just the way that Faze creates so much gosh darn doubt. You get two kills over towards Heli's side. Pred says, I've still got the ability to make sure there's no quick plant, but what, 30 seconds goes by and Atlanta doesn't make a whisper across the map. Pred has to be so worried about everything that eventually the play towards A does not fully get checked. So 3-0 the count. And now again, we're still looking for first bloods to come through and find success. Optic have two first kills, but no rounds to follow up with that. Yeah, you got to start leading the Ws when you get in that first kill. Now they're on the attack. You cannot go down 4-0. You need to have Open a response stun. here. Big stun gets the info in towards bottom blue. Oh, actually, the propane blows up a BZ. Man advantage in favor of Optic. Shotzi in trouble, but there is no follow-up. Actually, it's Pred who forces the engagement, and that will still state numbers with Optic as Dashi and Kenny will combine for some team shots on Bedraza. Now Cell, once again, left in 1v3. Good shots to Dashi, but such a tough angle, and Optic Texas get on the board. Yeah, well, sometimes you get the first play, you don't lead to wins. This time a BZ takes care of himself, and that <laughs> yeah. leads to a W. You know that he's one of the aggressors on the map, and right there in that final gunfight, Pred gets the info to Dashy. He's able to prone towards the top of the propane, find that kill, and finally Optic have a round on the board and attack at that, but now they yeah. need to have a response on defense. They've been good at finding first kills again. Yeah. So, I mean, just to re-hit it, just have to turn that into successful plays, because like we mentioned in map number two, Atlanta's ability to play off the objective is rivaled by nearly no one in the league at the moment. Nades over the top of Heli. Lots of early focus for Atlanta over towards the front side at A. It's matched, though, by Optic. Everything stays neutral. But look at the aggressive route being hit by Pred. This is the pace change right after Optic Texas. You already have Pred behind enemy lines. He has no dead silence. It has not yet been earned. But he should find a freebie on to Selium. The first blood goes to the Predator. Time to get out with your life. Be a nuisance as long as you can. Really smart heads up play here from Pred just to not stay where he was and just help the defense out where it matters most, right from the front doors. And you can see, I mean, the bomb for Simp, he's like, yeah. I got to make sure office is completely clear. You don't want to give up mid-map, though. So, I mean, it just feels so desperate already because of that first blood. Yeah, they're just in a situation where we have to play for Pred. We yeah. can't allow the timing of us not watching our pitch and him making a play happen. Well, and that's God. exactly what it is. Finds that kill onto Simp. It's now all left up to BZ and Draza, but BZ still has one in front of him. Whoa, nice shots out of BZ. From a 3v2 to a 2v2, bomb collected, or at least it should be by a BZ. Draza working on the opposite side of the map. Can he find anyone by surprise? Top heli, he's got Kenny just behind the tail of the heli. So now it's just down to dash it for the 1v2. Has a BZ right under his nose, looking for Draza to confirm. First battle goes the way of Dashy. 1v1. It's got to go by way of the kill. There's not enough time to collect and get the plant. So here comes Draza. Not able to expect Dashy. And a 1v2 clutch for Bruce. That's just a perfect read right there from Dashy. Only 13 seconds remaining on that game clock. He wins the one-on-one -on -one versus the BZ, and then Draza knows that bomb is going to be down towards the back right window. I do not have enough time to commit towards the bomb plant, but no sweat off the brow for Mr. Brucey. He's been in that situation multiple times. He comes out on top again, two rounds in a row for Optic. And the energy in the building has been reset. Can it be a three in a row on the other side here for Texas? Back to the offense they go. And think of the mind games after Pred's first blood came through the last round underneath. But this time, it's just straight bull rush in towards A. And Pred will be taken down by Abizi's explosion. Opening first blood goes the way of phase. Big first kill from Abizi. 
blew that prayer, was applying pressure through bottom blue. That propane has a really big blast radius. So it gets the first kill, but now you have Shasi to position. Time after time oh. again in a playmaker spot with that smoke in hand behind enemy lines. This is bold with the bomb. Yeah. But sell again. I mean, at this point, he's got to start getting frustrated. Like, dude, are they just always going to be in the back line? What the hell gives? So now from a 3v2, we start to work forward for maybe even a plant. Kenny seen down low with Sim, able to find the trade, but the bomb's going to get planted. Shotzi now for a 1v2. He does get away, smokes himself out, but oh boy, this is, wow, okay. Well, this is bold as well. Okay, Shotzi trying to make it happen with the movement. It's going to be very difficult for Atlanta Face to read this positioning, but I think Sim was yeah. able to spot him just now. So now positioning known with only 25 seconds left. Shotzi has to make it happen. Glass broken. Shotzi getting the sound cue from that. Here's the check from the front. Oh, my oh goodness. My. Now to the 1v1. Tries to go prone, but Simp quick to follow up. Make sure there is no finesse, no exit. And that's the streak broken. Phase up to a 4-2 tally. It's just that split second of timing right there. That <laughs> split second. If Shotzi would have made it to that back window, Atlanta phase are probably still in a situation where they're trying to locate where he is. But once you sniff him out, first person gets a one-shot Simp instantly there for the trade. Atlanta phase able to stop the bleeding. Now up 4-2. Clutch up on the defensive end. And it was all in the back of another first blood of Abizi. And how much do these last two rounds start to affect Selium's positioning? With him being caught by surprise twice in a row, does he try to get maybe a little bit further forward? Does that lead to possible advantages for Optic or for FaZe? Do you maybe just help him out a little more and say, hey, just make sure you watch your back 30 seconds into the round? Yeah, I think they're definitely going to put someone in a position to make sure no one sneaks through their underground door. And you're still going to have Selim playing slow and towards the back base. He's trying to give cover fire to his teammates, but that bomb does get dropped by Simp again. He's feeling something. He sees something. He's going for the attack. Puts down a couple shots, but doesn't lead to the first blood. These two defensive players for Optic, are kind of having to make individual plays happen. Yeah, Dash again cut at range means that Shotzi's got to go rogue a little bit here. Has Draza from behind, slips away. No trade to be found as of yet. The smoke oh no. goes off the map, but Simp still stuck over towards Elevator. Does get traded out. We'll continue into a 2v2. Shotzi with the pistol, not able to fend off the trade. And now it's down to Kenny. Nowhere to go. He'll drop and FaZe put themselves on series point. FaZe are just waiting, man. They are waiting for Optic Texas to make the first move. And they are picking them apart every time after that. Sip does a gun through that elevator side. Least finds a trade on the first, but every single time Atlanta phase are in an engagement, you best believe someone is always yeah. right behind for a trade. That's exactly what that round was. Atlanta phase at game point. And it's still a map so far that has been Optic Texas finding most of the first bloods. Just not able to convert, and that's got to feel so frustrating. So over to what has to be four rounds in a row. FaZe, they have so much wiggle room. They can make some weird plays happen here. They've got such a cushion. And this time it will be a little bit of a double stack immediately onto the B site. Optic taking their time, still working over towards top propane. Yeah, they're a lot more aggressive though. Up the B street this time around. No trophy hit. Marcus doors the deep left street. The draws again some information with player being aggressive in towards bottom blue, but it's already 30 seconds wiped off the clock. I have a feeling that this yeah. is where the pressure's coming from. Look at this setup for the rest of the defense from Atlanta. They're so far back. Dash is seen on the cross back, but the first blood good. Simp looking for the trade. Does he get caught? Maybe trying to get a little bit too expensive on this. No, not the case. Finally, trades are out, but it's again, levels the terms to a 2v2. It's 2v2, and look at Fred again. Pops that dead silence as Selium finds that nade onto Shotzi. By the time he gets here, you already see Draza in a position to potentially play for it. That sense is about to run out. 30 seconds left. And he's stuck. Draza, seen. Damage in. Kill not here yet. Pred will have a chance to get off the regen. Bomb collected. 20 seconds to go. Doesn't quite see Cell on the hell he steps. That will be oh, enough no. information, but he falls off. Now time is an issue. Pred's got to go. And he's going to try to take this the other direction. Atlanta wrapping the other way, though, may lead to an opportunity for a plant to come out. No, the time will likely expire. He's got to stick for it, and Cell will punish. It goes all the way to five, but once we got there, Atlanta, no worries. No problems, a comfortable 6-2 as Atlanta will move on, sending Optic down to the elimination bracket. S&D wins you championships, man. Yes, S&D wins you battles versus the top teams. And with Atlanta Faze going 2-0 in this series in that mode, it leads to the game five victory.
It was just a flawless game five plan, man. Really? We're talking about a high rise that they barely play as a unit. That's now the third time that they have played it. It was just every single time. You can just tell. They were reading the map so well that Sip was dropping the bomb so he could push up the middle of the map to make plays happen. Optic, which is a little bit too spread apart, and when you're too spread, when you go in those first engagements, Atlanta face always got someone right behind them for a trade. It was just better in that regard. And at least it was 6-2 victory. Atlanta move on. Yeah, and the first blood tally, again, it, it, you look at it and you say, okay, Optic should be in good positions. Yeah. But the one thing about this phase team is it doesn't matter what the number situation is. They find ways to clutch up. 2v2s, 2v3s, so often they, again, use those non-trade to kill percentage numbers that you're talking about just to finesse, stay alive, confirm kills, and then get out of dodge to make sure you have a chance in rounds that don't look particularly good in the first 30 seconds. Yeah, and the beginning rounds in this S&D were all about tone setting. Yeah. You see, yeah. you have some players spent right up middle, and then in the defense, they're also sending players right through underground, aggressive up through blue side. They were making it happen. They were setting the tone on that S&D, and they deserve that W. Absolutely the case, but for Optic fans, they're fighting, for sure. Still have to battle to the elimination bracket while Atlanta, our first team to make it into the upper finals. We got Blaze and Sip on stage to give us our post-game reactions. Thank you so much, Shift and Study. Boston makes some noise for Atlanta Faze as they come out on top and they go to the winner's finals. Sip, what a series that was. Right away, how do you feel coming away with that dub, taking down this Optic team? Oh, we feel amazing. I mean, just coming out on top in the winner's semis, being able to go to winner's finals, especially against a team as good as Optic, feels super, super good. Yeah, being in that winner's finals is super important, especially trying to come away with a chip in this tournament. Now, the one thing is that I really noticed in this series, maps two, three, and five, those limited life game modes, the S and Ds, the controls, you guys are able to set the pace so well and take control of them. How, how do you guys do that? Uh, I think our church has been got like the entire year, honestly, but I think before the event, we really kind of talked over control, like our ideas, what we want to be doing, and just, you know, just want to make sure we play with some confidence, and that's what we've been doing in our controls at this event, and we've been slamming. Definitely have been, and I know one big piece to helping you guys there has to be coach replays, okay? We don't talk about him enough. What has he been doing to help make sure Draza gets in place and you guys are on point this season? Oh, I mean, Crowder's always watching back our scrims, always watching back the bot with RJ, and always just going over what exactly we want to be doing. Um, you know, he doesn't exactly force it, but he's always asking questions of like, if this is what we want to do, if this is where we want to be, and like stuff like that. So he's just a good mind out of the game to watch the mini map, and he's the coach. All right, he's the coach right there. Lastly, what do you want to say to these fans out here with their phones up and everyone at home cheering for you? Oh, uh, you guys are amazing. I mean, this is the first major, and I can't wait to see what this year's like. So yeah, thank you guys for being here. You guys are awesome. Give it up for Atlanta fans one more time, Boston. Chris, take us away. It's the biggest match on the day, at least that's what we said coming in, and it lived up to the hype, going all the way to a game five. And what's kind of crazy here is all of our round one games, basically three O's. All of our round twos are going to game fives, and now this means Optic falls to, to a surge team that's also a two, three, five squad. No, they are. I, I mean, listen, obviously Optic, it's just, this is the best SD team in the world, right? But I think Optic were very prepped for this match. You saw sub base come through, and you're like, hold on here. Obviously, this is something they've been working on with their vetoes. They were able to win that map one. They win both hard points. They're probably going to go back and watch a little VOD with the surge. I thought they played it well. It's just you had a guy like Sim take it over at times. Ali, we saw FaZe take both of the search and destroy. Yes. They took the control as well. Who do you give MVP to? It's got to be Simp, easily, especially in that game number five. I think what impressed me most about Atlanta phase in the game number five is no matter how many times Shotzi got behind going through bottom mid, even though he would get the first blood, Atlanta phase didn't seem phased by it at all. They instantly would go on the hunt, make sure that they got that player out, and Optic Texas didn't try to take advantage of any of that confusion. So for Atlanta phase, they always seemed like they were one step ahead, but also Simp just not dying. You talk about the non-traded kill percentages the amount of times he got into elevator and was getting unreal kills where he should have been picked off. He is simply that guy. Nameless, talk to me a little bit about the emotions of the players right now. For FaZe, you're done on Saturday, right? You're waiting for that winner's bracket finals tomorrow. For Optic, you have to play basically in 90 minutes. After Toronto and Minnesota yeah. are done, you're back on that stage against Surge. No, I think you're, if you're Optic, you're feeling pretty good right now. I mean, your hard point, obviously, it's looking like the best in the world right now alongside, uh, you know, Toronto. And then for Surge and Destroy on the side of Atlanta Phase, they're feeling good as well. Both teams leave this series knowing that they have something to work on if they are to win this tournament. For Optic Texas, they know that they can make this run. Honestly, they lost 6-2 in that game five, Chris, but they had a ton of opportunities. You just heard Ali talking about it. They were getting behind, getting those bloods, just not 
not able to convert. And as we see our bracket here, they're going up against Surge. That is the Illy Revenge game. That should be a, a good one. Joe, you're not going to be with us at the start of the next match. Will we get a perfect round two of all game fives? Can Minnesota take Toronto the distance? I don't think so. I do not think so. I, I don't know. I'll trade this look to Joe. Honest. But I got one word for Crazier you. Can you guess what it is? Yeah, already. Giga. Giga. Yeah. Giga. I mean, I get it. It's just, but maybe Rocker surprised me. They've been doing it the last few weeks. Here we go, fam. Take a look at the schedule. We are about halfway through. When we come back from this break, it's Toronto Ultra Minnesota Rocker. It's going to be a party. Boss, to make some noise. Y'all are awesome. I don't think they heard you. No, they can't, Egg. right? You gotta go to the venue.
take a sec, but Mark just cut me off. He told me that I go on stage and tan. Walk out to my own shit on the main event. Javinci, my cologne. After the show, she told me it was a favorite sense. Bring the fan spacious, we can take it friends. What happened next? You can take a guess. Push on up. You have three players on the spot. Maybe a chance here. Accuracy. The back. Linz is ripping Boston apart. Boston to close this lead. And Linz is going to just continue to push space for this Awoba Bob's team. Wow. Oh! Maybe oh! 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 comes straight through as well. Awakening versus the world, and he's coming up with a dub. And if you can transition this to New Hill, Awakening is trying to put in. Absolute work. Slashes up next. Here we go, winner's bracket round two continues as we have the battle for top three. Minnesota, the surprise dark horse still in the winner's bracket, taking on Toronto, who've had a bad taste in their mouth. After failing, getting second place at the World Championship, they want to make a run here in Boston and make a statement that they are the best team in the game right now. Study, welcome back to the desk. This is a big one between two purple squads, but I feel like Minnesota has a little bit more pressure on their shoulders right now. Yeah, we just saw a big match, and we're in store for another one, especially with the way that Minnesota have been playing as of recent. 4-0 in that last couple of series. They've been getting it done in the opening in HP. So what's that, a 7-1 overall record? Mm -hmm. And now at land, you're starting to see those ARs really be who they're supposed to be. Minnesota started 0-3. They've now won four straight. They're the most clutch team. 7-0 and in clutch maps post break. Walk me through this roster Alley Cat. What did Minnesota put together? I mean, they put together a surprise squad, right? Like a proper dark horse where nobody really saw this coming. And what's really interesting about this specific matchup is these are both teams that are game one merchants. Minnesota Rocker is 7-1 and in game ones. We're on the flip side. Toronto Ultra is also 7-1. and one. So, it's all about that first heart point. Alright, Nam, let's walk us through the Monster Energy pregame here for the Rocker. How do they get it done tonight? You know, for the Rocker, I mean, looking at this series going up against Toronto, you have to be absolutely on point. You're yeah. going to need Big Wake to start off Brian again, once again, in the hard point. Linz has been great in search and destroy. Accuracy as well. So you need everybody to be on point. But for me, it comes down to the control. You're going to have an invasion in this series. That's a game mode where they have turned it around, and that is the swing game mode, as we know. Also, night and day since break. 0-3 start with a 4-9 map count pre-break. This is a team that turns around completely with practice, and a lot of that is due to Accuracy's leadership. He has been the guy to get them out of some tough situations. 2024 is been their year so far. They haven't dropped a match yet, but their opponent, well, this is the biggest dog you're going to fight yet. You look at the new addition, Envoy, world champion from LA Thieves, joins the likes of Kleenex, Scrap, and Insight. This is just a squad where anyone could drop highest kills in the lobby at any time. Yeah, everyone going into this event had Atlanta Phase and Toronto Ultra. 1A, 1B. Usually for Atlanta Phase, it's through the S&D. Toronto Ultra, it's all about the response. They beat a majority of teams by an average of 90 points in HP. That's when you take a look at those stats. They're all above a 1.2. They are dominating in the respawn game. I will say to that point, though, that Toronto Ultra is still strong in Search and Destroy. So if we move to the Monster Energy pregame, even though they are dominant in respawn, they still do feel comfortable in those map two and five. So Minnesota Rocker cannot get caught lacking and try to focus on those first bloods. Nameless, you are the only one to call Rocker to win round like one. To they are able to move into round two, and now they're playing Toronto in a best of five for top three. Let's take a look at the five maps. We got Skid Row, Karachi, Invasion, Subbase, and High Rise. Question number one, if we go to High Rise, uh, Minnesota wins the series. Minnesota beats Toronto? If, if we go to game five, Minnesota wins the series. They've been absolutely phenomenal on that map, sitting at 2-0. and oh. And honestly, if you look at this, the way that they match up map-wise, Minnesota are very happy to go up against Toronto Ultra. So it could get really interesting. It's time for some quick picks. Scrappy, I saw him backstage. The man is giddy. He is caffeinated. I'm going Toronto 3-0. Yeah, I talked to Scrap this morning. He told me today is going to be easy work, so I'm definitely going Ultra. Allie? I agree. If we do go the distance, it could be Minnesota Rockers game, but I'm going to go with Toronto Ultra and 3-0. They just look unstoppable. I'm going with Toronto Ultra as well. This team holds six world records right now. That's <laughs> absolutely insane. It's time for Minnesota to make us look bad as we set it to the stage with Guy Blaze. Thank you so much, Chris. Boston, we got two more teams on this upper side of bracket, and it's time for an icy matchup that even Wim Hof would be scared of. But the first squad coming to the stage, let's see if they got that real ice in their veins, because here comes the Minnesota Rocker. Make some noise for Lynn. 
mercy, awakening, and vivid, the Minnesota Rocker. This is a team that is standing on business right now on that stage. Not a crack of a smile in sight, but they have surpassed all expectations already by making it to Saturday. Now they have a chance to go up against the number two seed in Toronto Ultra and possibly not get sent down to that Elam bracket to meet Atlanta FaZe. Blaze, you ready? I'm so ready. And I don't know a team on the stage already is ready to go giga, but this next squad is ready to come out and blow the stage up. Get ready for the Toronto Ultra. absolutely dominated their last series. This team holds six records right now for this season in the CDL. They are firing on all fronts. Everybody looks like a superstar since they brought in Envoy. They're trying to dominate. Let's see if they can do it. Let's get this match started, Blaze. Let's get it started and see if they can make some more records here on the main stage. Boston, let's set the stage. Are you ready? Miles Chance, let's get it. Guy didn't ask if we were ready, but we're both ready. Thank you very much, Guy Blaze. We are indeed ready to rock and roll the battle of the North, the battle for top three, and the third battle of the day, Chance. Yeah, and we've had two game fives. It has been incredible Call of Duty all day, and you know with a team like Ultra, they're going to deliver. They're going to bring it and play outstanding Call of Duty as well. The question in my mind, can Rocker continue and match that? Because they've been outstanding in this tournament. They were able to 3-0 the New York subliner. So Rocker right now on point, but they cannot slow down an ounce. These players need to play the best Call of Duty they've had all year. I think this is the number one question for me coming into this matchup. How good a Rocker? Yes. We are about to find out. If they can bring even a semblance of the noise that they've had coming into this matchup, they should do fine, right? I mean, they have that spectacular potential. You have Vivid tying the SND kill record on the year. Accuracy, we've seen him like some of the best COD he has played since like World War II, way back in the day. And obviously, this is a big test for Linz as well. The rookie against a team like this on the main stage. He might be top rookie of the year candidate at the moment. Well, this is your chance to really try to seal that deal. To rock and rookie so far here in the CDL in the 2024 season. Let's find out how they fare. Skid Row Hardpoint, map number one. Here in our throwdown of the purple teams, and there's only one man we're truly worried about, and that is Kleenex. And he did that 25 and 6 performance on this map. It was disturbing, it was disgusting, and good luck trying to contain him. <laughs> Ultra, get the good spawns as well. They're going to get to this hill first. Kleenex leading the charge. But here we go, straight into P1. Watch out for the uh, mild confusion. On the minimap, Minnesota Rocket will be the purple arrows. Toronto Ultra will be in the white. And that is an instantaneous there. Perfect four down. Awakening, the only one showing up in the kill feed there for Minnesota. But the AR is beginning to deliver. Insight gets traded. And now you already think for Minnesota, not only did you get the break on P1, you might have that early rotation as well towards P2. And Awakening off spawn is shooting. Nice shot. Some insight. Not enough, though. As accuracy cleans house. A nice even start in the scoreline, but it's Vivid, the man on the top left-hand side of the screen, already got towards P2. The final battles in fire now come to a close as P1 is extinguished. Yeah, big wake though popping off again, that 4-1 and one start. He was the only surviving member of the team, and he has set his squad up for that rotation. Kleenex can't find that route. He gets caught as well. No hero plays there. Ultra got to regroup and try once again, and obviously you see Minnesota all across is covered, and Linz <laughs> just dancing right now, trying to buy some time. Oh, Linz, what an annoying play indeed to deal with. He's still going back and forth like an old Western shooting gallery. Right now, the shooting start. Linz, once again, a four speed for him. Here's nearly number five from the top row. Looking towards streaks. I mean, that is spectacular. Might have the kill on the cross as well. This is going to be for the cruise, but Envoy, disgusting shots to shut him down. He does get traded out. Obviously, that player made one shot by Lin, setting up Awakening, but a big gunfight for a lot of time, and it looks like Ultra might have done just enough to get it. Accuracy, the last one to do some damage, but that's what you're going to see. A P2 break, but Lin's right now shooting for Minnesota. A little bit of scrap time sort of mixedness for the end of tail of P2. Not too bad at all. Not bad whatsoever. Might not get too much of that time, but you're very happy to receive it if you're trying to Ultra. Rotation is already long done. Ultra in position for this one. Kleenex, no, he has not lagged out. He was just holding that back line. Now he's going to contend with Linz. 
A bit of a protracted gunfight there comes to a close. Linz wins it. You've still got more manpower here for Ultra. And Linz is doing the smart play too. He is waiting for his teammates to group up together. He just bought them the close spawn. Now you got to make good use of it. Here we go, Linz. What can you do? Not a whole lot. Jamie Craven cuts him down. Awakening, though, immediately picks up the pair. The third? No. Scrap's there for it. Scrap gets two. And it's not just the good hold. It is the spawn out as well. Minnesota had a strong opportunity, but they get punished. And obviously, the AR is inside collected, too. Scrap now looking for that cruise missile turning up on this new hill. Certainly one more. Doesn't quite get it. Will he be able to take on the next gunfight? Nades are out. 20 plus seconds to go here on the back alleyway. And it's still looking fantastic for Toronto Ultra. Can we get the cruise missile? That is the question. I mean, either way, he is just collecting this time. Scrap has himself an ounce of pressure. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> Awakening slides in for the kill, but no cruise. Still get a lot of time, and more importantly for Toronto, way ahead of that rotation. Linz, though, might be the only player to do some damage. He is dancing in between their setup and at least does some damage. That old zero HP looks good, but so does that rotation for Ultra. Speaking of looking good right now for Ultra, yeah, getting that new hard point. That's exactly what they want. 12 and 4 from Awakening, though. He's still come to play today. Demon Joe is yet to be exercised. Envoy now. Line up. There's the stack. One, two, all three. A perfect hole there from Ultra. And I don't know what those comms were, but nobody interested in checking that corner. That's the early rotation and a bit of a dagger moment there from Ultra. Right now you have Minnesota, two avenues of attack, but Envoy's got the window and door covered, but you make the cross, pressure on inside. Couple kills go through, but Lin's inside the point, able to get it for a moment. Tagged up one HP and the support is there. Rocker clean on the break, but that's just the fight that they're showing right now. A mixy old hill and over towards new. Right now Awakening, the only player keeping it close. Awakening at that range in a very, very good place. He has to contend with Insight and Kleenex from this position. New hard points up in five. And already Ultra, another rotation. Oh dear, that could be going their way. I mean, Awakening literally is the only player keeping it close. He has 16 kills, but as soon as he gets shut down, that is the opportunity for Toronto to get the stranglehold on this P5. Kleenex the one collecting the time, but all the reinforcements are here. Holding on now to the hard point. It's open for business insight. Trying to push these players out. Still a lot of presence here from Rocker towards the point. Nice shots from Linz. Pressure now mounting. Accuracy's there. Last man on the point. Kleenex. Plenty of time to be had here. Can they get the break? They do. It's clean. Now guns up. Counterattacks on its way. I mean, hey, that is a beautiful P5 break. That is not easy to get. Awakening though. Can't get enough help. He's a little bit too close. And on the cross, Ultra are right back in the action. I mean, this is a team that is simply overwhelming with their pressure. Couple shooters on Minnesota Rocker, but still that time just keeps on racking up for Ultra. Yeah, Rocker may have got the break, but barely any time gained from that one. Awakening and Co now back towards P1 you fly. Rocker certainly not out of this just yet. Spawns up to the top side of the map, which is very good for the next hard point. Not fantastic for this one. We'll see if Rocker can get a presence here in the apartments. Oh dear. Scrap with a two. Accuracy trying to get involved as well. Hey, nice little battle. Got the trophy around the point as well. A battle against Envoy. Wrong gun for the job, but the right moment. Accuracy on a three. Looking to get this P1 time and talk about an important moment as well. Gotta get it done. Well, they're holding it together. Accuracy. On a spree! Five now in a row. Rocker are holding on. Let's go for a quick listen in. I'm in the tunnel. 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 I'm in the Nice, nice, nice. Could be a new. Come on, Major. Yeah, that's what. Because there's one up. There's one up. Yeah, that's what. Because there's one up. There's one up. Yeah, that's what. Because there's one up. There's one up. Yeah, that's what. Because there's one
Toronto Ultra have shifted gears, chance they are not looking back. Over 200 now, we find us. Yeah, Ultra being outslayed, but still have a 70 point lead. And now the slaying started to heat up just a little bit. You see Insight on a five, and they are putting that pressure on this break. Back alley though, Rocket out in control. How long can they hold it? Here comes the hit. Shoulders. Envoy's out. Insight's not going to push. Waiting for the reinforcements. Needs another rival nine, another some machine gun to get up here and help out. That's Kleenex. Here come the tacticals, the lethals. The pinch is on. Oh dear. Oh dear, we'll take it. Rock a hold. I mean, hey, if he was playing wall, well, that's a perfect name, but Kleenex just going to falter. And this is the opportunity to get back in the game. Final 20 seconds you're going to collect, and you are way ahead of the rotation. This is Rocker's single opportunity to get this map won. If they mess this up, they're in trouble. 3-3 three, three from Vivid. Comms are there. Kleenex gets it. Slow. Far too slow indeed. That's going to be the new hard point open for business. Yeah, Vivid, little poor moment in that moment, but Accuracy and Awakening spawn up over towards Ooh. new. Nice shots from the MCW, all to get traded out. Now for Rocker, it is three players around the new zone. They are surrounded. Lovely shots from Accuracy. 24 and 21. 50 seconds now on the point open. Can Rocker take the lead? Holding perfectly so far, Demon Joe. No more help there as the trophies are gone. Over to the now, the side doors. Here come Ultra. And the AR set you up. They bought you those initial kills. Now it's the SMGs that need to hold the line. Lane's first man. Vivid, the pinch, the pinch, Vivid! All three of them gone! Last man, Kleenex! He's trying to stay alive. The contest! And there we go, lead change. They buy you that lifeline, and on that rotation, new, it's the SMGs all spawn. He switches to the MCW, but he gets caught. Couple trades back and forth, but Ultra chopping everybody down. Vivid falls as well. And now that is Ultra's early opportunity on this P5. They get a very clean setup, get a spread across the board. Perfect AR work there from Ultra. 224. The clock will stop there for Rocker. Now flying forward towards this last hill. This could be it. Scrap from up high. He and Insight ringing out. The shots across map looking fantastic. Accuracy makes it a little closer. Taken down by Scrap again. And they're dying one by one. You have to group up together. The problem is Envoy is pushed out so far. Going to slow the push down. At least you get the trade. But Ultra can win it on this hill. You have to make this perfect. Got to get in there somehow. Purple Arrow's now lining up. Here comes the stack. The trophies are down. Forward you go. Vivid cut down on the cross. Insight, who's next? As the damage is still being dealt, it's Envoy at range. Accuracy can't get close to it again. All down for Rocker. And now you got to fly. It is going to be the one by one. Dominoes falling. Ultra might have gotten out Slade, but they're going to get this map one way. It's perfect hold so far. A few more seconds. Nades, no one able to get it. Scrappy finds the pair. And that's the map. One poor rotation and Ultra just picked you apart, bullying their way through P5. The hold on barbershop from Rocker, that was it. That was the kill shot they needed, but they couldn't deliver after the fact. And I mean, I gotta say from Ultra, that's one of the first times I've seen them get outslayed in that fashion. All four players negative at one point in the final hill, Scrap and Envoy caught back up, but you might outslay them. Doesn't mean it's an easy dub and Ultra just gonna punish them on Skid Row. Yeah, it's the execution towards the good those breaks and the open spaces here on Skid Row, they're so, so tough. Quick look at the stats there. A lot of kills across the board for those members of Rocker. Again, not quite enough to get the breaks. We'll say Dylan Hannon, Envoy, 5K damage alongside Awakening. Massive production from both of them. I mean, look, Big Wake was absolutely frying, right? Right from the jump, started off 4-0, single-handedly took over P1, set his team up for the rotation. But even another theme of Skid Row, it's those P2 holds. Rocker got there first on the first go around, simply could not hold it. So, yeah, Rocker played fantastic. Ultra, though, just a little bit better. There's a few things we can take away from that as well. I mean, Ultra get a break on a P2 it was so fast. They were lightning when it came to getting that hard point back in their hands. It was, what, 20, 30 seconds out of side. Looking at that final score, Plays like that as well. Check it a corner. It seems so basic, but in the moment, it's a slight error in communication, and it costs you a play like that. I mean, so many of those little moments, right? It's the not checking the corner for inside. It's the break on the back alley hill where Linz actually bosses his teammates to spawns. They can't get the break. It's both rotations over towards P5 that they struggled with. So much was going right for Rocker, but again, perfection is demanded against this team.
Credit where credit is due, though. Obviously, the ARs were absolutely frying for the side of Minnesota. And of course, David might have struggled early on, but started to catch back up. But that is just uh, maybe the answer to the question. Rocker do look good, but very long way to go. Hey, long way to go indeed, but a fantastic performance nonetheless against a squad who we did imagine uh, would be having their way with them. Again, if you did see what Toronto Ultra did to Seattle Search a few days ago, it was ugly. We put it up on the hub. It was so delightful. Well, now we're going to see what Rocker can do in the Search and Destroy. As a quick look at the game flow chance, I mean, there was a definite drop off. P2 to 4 in the second set. Ultra were nowhere to be seen. And and that's the thing. So that P1 to P2 to rotation on the second go around, you had Ultra getting that full 60, 59 points. The response on the P2 was strong, but not strong enough to actually make that catch up. So again, Ultra just doing things a little bit better, even inside those moments. Going on five sprees inside of P2. So he's absolutely electric. And of course, going towards Karachi. Oh, it's going to be a heavy hitting matchup looking for that bounce back performance from Vivid. But yeah, search and destroy very strong has been for Rocker. We'll see if they can get it against Ultra. Invasion control, sub base, hard point, and that high rise. If we have to go to game five, Bane was called it. If we get to game five, that's Rocker territory. Very strong performance on the map and mode so far. We'll see if we can get there. But until then, Karachi SD up first. Charles, we're going to look at the uh, defense metrics of both these teams. Is there anything you coming into this series prior that you thought about? Well, the fact that Ultra is going to be outstanding on defense, not even just for search and destroy, for control as well. But this is where they have just been completely dominant. Number one overall team in the game. Their opening duels is especially strong. You already know Ultra with their teamwork. If they're getting the first blood, they're going to convert. And the fact that they are getting the first blood so often is just a devastating thing to have to play against. Maybe Rocker around the objective a little bit stronger about getting the bomb plants on Karachi. Retake's very difficult. However, Ultra also the best retake team in the game, specifically on Karachi. This is a team that is almost tailor-made to handle a team like Rocker. This is why Vito's certainly pay off. We'll see if this does line up the way the stats have called it. Ultra looking very strong coming into the series. If you've just joined us, that first hard point was very close indeed. See if the magic of Rocker can keep rolling as the two teams' wonderful histories against each other in competition. We'll find out if this series is one we get to add to the history books. Here we go. Karachi, map number two. Yeah, and Toronto Ultra, again, they really are just extra. Anything that different teams in the league are good at, talk about like your invasion control defenses, they're just a little bit better in insight, in search and destroy. In case anyone needs to have this explained, a 2.33k deep is completely absurd. It is rare for any player to ever average more than a kill per round. Insight has currently been doing that. His damage output is insane. And also, one of the most, if not the most, clutch player in the league. He is a constant value in Search and Destroy. Here we go. Attacking round up first for Toronto. Ultra Envoy is going to be the man with that bomb in hand. We're rolling towards the A side of the map, Chance, but again for the defenders, for Rocker there, you see the arrows towards the low left. Well, you say defenders, it's only one. Lin's by himself for the moment and able to get some good damage in. That means Rocker need to respond to this pressure very fast, that bomb right next to sight. That's quite the angle from Awakening. Oh, the timing is rough, but now he's been pinned down. Lin's fighting for his life for the inside of Red. He stays alive, though. Now Scrap been also pinned back. So wonderful suppressing fire from Rocker. Yeah, and you hear all the tacks getting baited out as well. That's a lot of explosions, the smoke as well. Linz, though, for the timing, knows oh. the players are down low. Not an easy kill, though. Envoy going to fry him. Open up the odds. So unfortunate. He saw the feet. He couldn't do anything about it. Awakening taking care of in the middle of the map. Is that space now to move over towards the bomb site? Yes, it is. There's the plan. That is a big gunfight win by Scrap and Envoy. Gets the full cross as well. They have the intel, but you have to take him down. But Envoy's got the help. This will be a 1v2 for Vivid. Bit of a journey. Scrap, right weapon, right time. Nails it. Toronto draw first blood. And that is just instantaneous. Again, that is a moment where Ultra, we talked about how good their opening dual win percentage is. They lose it. Lens gets the first blood, but he stays alive in red. He had the jump on Envoy as well. Simply not good enough. Envoy going and making the bigger play. And obviously Envoy making things easy for his teammates. Scrap gunning after the fact, picking up three in that round. Yeah, Scrap's three kills really help. That's good comms out of Vulture as well, a team that we know has fantastic communication skills, very calm gameplay. Everyone's aware of one another, and the teamwork certainly shows. Let's see what they've got now on defense. Rocker, they're on the attack. 
Well, nades don't connect on anything. No, the middle of the map is going to be at least mildly opening. Awakening for the deep shell, and that's a gunfight both players happy to toy with, but neither going to overcommit and throw away their lives. Lynn's towards the middle of the map, maybe just waiting for a first blood to fall into his hands. The Ultra, they're not going to move too much. It's very, very slow prod to check out those attacking lines of Rocker. And there's a, a little bit more than a prod there. The scrap caught out, first blood. And we talked about Ultra doing things extra. This would be a 3v4 retake if they can get it with the bomb down. Incredibly difficult. The hardest bomb site to retake, but Ultra already have that man odds. Waking's got all the mid map covered. Accuracy's now got to watch for players on the bomb. Here come the reinforcements from Ultra. Eyes on at least one, smokes are down. Accuracy taken care of. You're now on top of the bomb. Is there an opportunity for Awakening to maybe check this from this angle? He better get there quick because that bomb is nearly diffused. Oh dear, that's the round. And it is just too fast. Ultra simply do not waste time. Another first blood that goes their way. Completely free towards the middle of the map, but you have to be perfect. I think the hold rate on this map is like 84% when you get the bomb planted. They just had the bomb planted and the man odds and they lost it immediately. Ultra is a team you cannot play with. That is a sweet retake. And the kills certainly flowing in favor of Ultra as well. Scrap's still on that three. A two spree though from Envoy as well. Let's see what they do now on attack. A bomb site. They managed to hit first and foremost. Now we've seen some love towards the B side. Vivid's trophy, will it come into play in a moment? Damn! And there's Kleenex for the first blood. It does get traded out, but obviously it is just trades all over the map. Envoy winning his individual gunfight as well. And it is going to be, what, a 23-second bomb plan, and the shot's good, but not good enough. Now it's Ultra's turn with the bomb down and the man advantage. Somewhat lacking in the velocity department right there. Nice stayed out scrap. Cause a bit of damage. Envoy trying to back him up. Insight's got the flank covered. Lovely nade from Linz. Now makes it a 2v2. It's your opportunity. It's your opportunity to try to gum these players down. Envoy trying to just put the pressure on. Linz from the top rope is going to find him. Can Insight clutch? He cannot. Awakening shuts the door. Back-to-back -back rounds with a bomb plant retake. Talk about a round rocker we're desperate for. That was a wonderful rebound. Again, the retakes on that B side. No easy feat. There's big tags from Awakening there. You see how hard that gunfight is to win. Yeah, we'll see you in ranked next week, friends. Yeah, that's a scary moment, too, when you see Insight's last man alive. Again, most clutches in the league at the moment. But they execute, they take care of business, and, I mean, taking turns doing the impossible. Seems like whoever gets the first blood ends up losing. A modest but loud turnout for Rocker fans here in Boston. Ultra as well, some staples that always seem to make it to these tournaments. Here we go, stun checks through the middle of the map, nobody home for Linz. He's going to fly on forward. May have been spotted, but he doesn't know that yet. I'm not sure that he did. Well, if he didn't before, he certainly did there. Kleenex and Scrap just find two instant kills. Awakening at least finds one. It hasn't collected the bomb yet, and the pinch is coming through. Awakening, oh! spicy gunfight gets him with the Renetti. Unbelievable, that's the fourth kill in a row there. As Kleenex heavily damaged, he's off to back up. Awakening now in the 1v2. The 1v2 and the ace, and it would be for a cruise. No pressure, Joe. And he can take his time, 40 seconds on the clock, wants to collect the bomb, or maybe looking for an errant kill. Both those players from Ultra playing together. This is not an easy situation to isolate these gunfights. Kleenex and Insight basically sitting on top of each other, ready for those flanks to come through. Here we go. Kleenex, dealt with, pistol. That's for the ace and Insight knows it, he's long gone. Awakening can recover the bomb. Is he gonna go for the fight? He has got to move. All right, he's just taking so long to get this. What decision does he make? Back to A we go. It's gonna be by gunfight. A matter of seconds. He is gonna be able to get it, Insight now knows to check that bomb. He's gonna make his way over, there it is. The fight is alive. Ooh, baby. The King of Clutch strikes again. Ice in his veins, too. That could have been a devastating moment if Big Wake pulls off that moment. <laughs> would have had the cruise. Would have been a 1v2. Would have been an ace. It would have been it all. But Insight delivers. That's honestly a hell of a read, too, to turn and be ready for Insight to be on the dumpster. But 
Dancing with the Devil, and if Insight wasn't perfect on the timing to check that A-bomb, things could have been different, but Insight always perfect in these moments. Man, I mean, just think of every little decision made there. The Insight decided just to make sure to check the bomb within that five-second window in case Awakening was planting. So many choices made that resulted in a win there for Toronto Ultra. Three to one. Someone's got to get that bomb. Thank you, Clean X, for turning around. Everybody up from Ultra, full speed ahead. A square up over towards B. This is aggressive out of Rocker as well, but you're a little too fast. You're going to get caught. Vivido trades it out, going against Envoy for the next kill, and Envoy delivers. Five and two for the Dark Prince. Awakening trying to keep those players at bay. That little archway is now going to open up, and here comes even more pressure from Ultra. That red dot is a bullseye, and Scrap. His arrow lands true. Yeah, that's the AR player sprinting at you, Linz. Pressure's on for the 1v3, finds a freebie, and knows where the final two players are. Big issue, though, does have that rival nine. It's not an easy gunfight to win in any situation. Trying to isolate Kleenex. Scraps in position here at the back line. Good tags. Not enough, though. Ultra with another watertight setup. It's four to one. And you see Kleenex again, he's never going to take that gunfight. He's just playing to slow him down and scrap, making sure to keep his distance. Efficient work in that round. And again, Ultra will make things mixy. Rocker tried to match that pressure and try to slam him on defense, but they get caught out. Vivi gets traded. And after the fact, Ultra just on cruise control. I saw the timeout that will pop up on your screen by the looks of it, a player from Ultra did timeout. Got to wait for that old Envoy rejoin. Yeah, we're going to get Envoy back in the lobby and get things rolling once again. 4-1 so far with Ultra very much in the lead. Only sort of major takeaways in the stats department we've got right now. Accuracy yet to get on the board with a kill. First blooded in that last round as well. So tough stuff from them. But so far, Charles, yeah, fantastic looks out of Ultra. No one's really sort of doing anything too crazy. It's just very, very solid teamwork. It's again, Ultra, you already know they're going to play solid teamwork, as you said, but incredible call of duty. So if you're making small mistakes against them, they're going to punish you. That was the theme in the hard point. A few different moments on a few different hills resulted even then, even with the slang being there from Rocker. We've already had two different rounds this game where Rocker not only get the first blood, but they're non-traded kills, and then they just lose the 3v4s. The pressure from Toronto a little bit too much. So, I mean, again, they tossed away two rounds, a 4-1 lead from Ultra. It is rare that they throw these away. A couple of opportunities for the big clutches that we've yet to see there for the Rocker players. And now, look, if they've had them, I mean, well, they have two rounds now. In addition, that'd be pretty much where we're at. Envoy's back in the lobby. We should be good to go any moment now. But going into this one again, Rocker setting themselves up brilliantly. Oh, and it doesn't like Actually, we might be restarting the game. Yeah, I saw a, uh, an expletive used by Ultra in that moment. So there's going to be a lobby reset. Got to get everybody back in the mix. But score is going to stand at 4-1, to one, obviously, for Ultra. Yeah, 4-1. to one. As we uh, will get these players back into this one ASAP, folks. We appreciate the patience. It's not like day one, though, is it? Woo! That was something. Well done to the team for getting everything moving very, very smoothly. As our players on stage remain warm, that lobby's going to be booted up ASAP. This man on your screen, though, <laughs> the league record for search and destroy at 15 kills. That is no easy feat. I mean, you're going to need that type of performance, I'd say, to make this comeback to absolutely go on a tear. Here's some USA chants in the background, and I think Linz might be a little confused. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> I'm sure Linz is thinking right now. For a closer ultra, two more rounds will get them the win, moving 2 0 up in the series. They're going to that control, feeling very good. Yeah, and I think Ultra just want to have this map be on cruise control as well. They haven't expended really any effort thus far in the tournament. And obviously, they look very relaxed. Insight might take a nap before we load back in. He's meditating. He's not asleep. Scrap, though, don't meditate. <laughs> well, he does is absolutely fry. What a brilliant, brilliant run this Toronto Ultra roster has had since adding Scrap to it as well. Uh, speaking of runs, I mean, this is where we are. Oh, my God. Get him out of the screen. Show us the bracket. This is where we're at in the tournament so far. Still in the winners. Again, this is a matchup taking you to top three here at Major One. And if I see a potential ultra phase in the winner's finals, that is just shades of Cold War. These are two teams that have to square off.
constantly at the later portions of tournaments over the years in the CDL. Rocker want to make their impact, though. Again, they kicked off their tournament with a dominant 3-0 victory over the reigning world champs. So the potential absolutely there, but Ultra right now going to be that stopping force. Indeed. Well, again, the loser of this matchup goes down to face the Los Angeles Gorillas. A lower bracket matchup. That's the final match of the day today. More of that to come a little bit later on. Of course, Optic Surge waiting in the wings. That's going to be a fun one as well. We'll play that after this matchup. But for now, Toronto Ultra certainly just run, wanted to run on towards that winner's bracket final matchup. Phase waiting in the wings after that strong showing against Optic today. And we'll see, man. I mean, as far as predictions go, a few fans have asked me, who do, they, who do I think is going to walk away with a win here? I mean, right now for me, Ultra and FaZe, they look like the strongest teams. But Rocker, we see if they can turn things around, especially after icing them like this in the Search and Destroy. If they can turn it around, oh boy, that would make this tournament far more interesting. And again, Ultra is a team that is extraordinary at the easy things and extraordinary <laughs> at the difficult. Bombsite retakes, they have no cares in the world. Every single detail of this game, the guys have already mapped it out. The game plan set in stone. We load back in Ultra 4-1 lead. And again, they have barely felt any pressure. Might have even gotten out slated in map one, but an easy P5 rotation. They close the door. These guys looking for perfection on their second series. Simply two rounds. That's all you need, Toronto. You start this one off on defense. Vivid with that bomb in hand on the other side of the map. Here we go. Woo. Shaven eyebrows flying through the middle. One boy checks every corner. All clear. The boys are moving forward. Aggressive stuff out of Ultra. I mean, he's finding the opening. He's got Kleenex here with him, too. So they got two players on the flank ready for the trades. Nobody's even turned around. Accuracy gets the first blood, but this round might collapse. Envoy's going to jump Whoa. on it eventually. Still, though, to even up the odds for a 2v2. Mixiness, he gets traded out, and it is all up to Insight. One HP in a dream. He's in a pinch, but he might have just found his out. Oh, dear. Pump the brakes. Insight now 1v2. 45 on the clock, and he's going the long long way round, but that means Rocker have seen him, and they're going the other way as well. I think Rocker didn't get the intel. They might be wrapping this straight into his the trap. How's this going to play out? God, God, say your prayers. Did Lin spot him? That is no. unreal. Insight's gone all the way round. Oh, my word. This could get ugly real quick. Nobody home. There's the tags. There's the plant. Trying to isolate the 1v1. Linz holds his nerve. Score is now 4-2. to two. And that is a, a spicy little moment where they almost thread the needle to find that opening. Two players were a little bit separate, but Insight not clutching that one. And that is a hell of a round, too. If you had Rocker that aren't just jumping on the kills of those initial portions, that flank would have been the absolute dagger. But they win those initial gunfights before that flank commences. So 4-2 lead still from Ultra. The Minnesota Rocker on the defensive end. Clutch up here. Game gets very close. And that's the kind of round that everyone's going to be watching and go, hey, I quite like that. We'll put that one in the playbook and we'll be where? Will we play Ultra later on in this tournament, maybe? Nades up from Linz. And Linz again, going to be the lone defender of the A site. Might have a teammate above him wakening for the cross, but still a lot of pressure on the rookie to deliver. Well, Ultra have managed to make their way through the hotel. They're inside red now, shoulder to shoulder. In sight. Heavy tags, no problem though, gets away with his life, as does Linz, somehow, a zero HP. Awakening might have just dished out 300 damage, but in the meantime, Bomb gets planted, pure 4v4, and Scrap again, the AR player is hyper aggressive. Lin gets that first blood, but Scrap is behind enemy lines. Oh, there we go, Scrap gets involved, 3v3. Now the race is on. Rocker cutting their way through the hotel side. It's all gonna come down to Envoy. Can he slow these players down? They might hear the door bang, there's the check! Envoy finds one! Smoke gets away with it. The teamwork prevails now down to accuracy. And that smoke is going to be such a problem, too. The Iceman, no time on the clock. Two very difficult gunfights and difficult to read and scrap guns him down. Another masterful play coming out of Envoy. Gets that first kill, doesn't he go child, doesn't overheat. He sets up scrap. Hey, cover back ticket for me. I'll play on the inside lane. Scrap and Envoy out here making plays and Scrap again, hyper aggressive as well. The island player right now from Ultra delivering time and time again. So aggressive. Map point, Toronto Ultra. Accuracy unable to win out 
that very, very difficult 2v1 situation. It's one more now for Ultra to close out the search and destroy here in the map. Right now, Ultra easy to breathe as well. They make the game very simple. Awakening and Scrap, we've seen this before. We'll see it again, but in the meantime, Envoy's gotten in position. A very common spot, but Rocker needs to be on point to check it. Linz has been very aggressive as well, top red. So a few different SMG players. Interesting moments, but you see Kleenex actually sniffs it out. There's the first blood for Ultra. Envoy. Bit of noise, accuracy gets the player above. Awakening trying to fight back, trying to create some space, an opportunity for his teammates as Rocker starting to bleed out, oh. but they make it a 2v2. Yeah, nice shots on that little one way. Vivid taking advantage and that bomb is gonna go down. Awakening now has been tagged up. Kleenex, he and Envoy. I'm now gonna try to take care of these players on the defuse. Oh dear, Vivid though, locking him down. Vivid staying alive. Here comes the reinforcements. Envoy sends it. But Rocker hold their nerve. And they win the round. And those shots from Vivid are elite. Ripping somebody off the bomb when he was invisible on their screen and making sure you keep the chow going and protect your teammate. Envoy not afforded any action there. No clutch potential. Rocker still alive. 5-3. Rocker, can they start to string together these rounds? A little bit of momentum, everything changes. For Ultra, it's just hold it together. They've done such a good job to get to this place. Here we go. Back towards B we go. Those nades, everybody dishing them out. Nothing connects though. Trophies used on the other side and you go back to a standard round. Vivid playing the same spot as Envoy. Maybe trying to be a little more aggressive in tough angles, both sides right now. Smooth shots inside, managed to take care of Vivid as well. First blood goes to Ultra. You're waiting for these perfect angles to play into your advantage. A slight advantage now for Ultra. A man up and the bomb planted. I mean, you got to retake with two players. This is going to be near impossible. They're sending Linz on the flank. Scrap, though, going to be paying attention to it. Slides out for the damage, gets out with his life. But now you are just going to be running out of time. Less than 30 seconds on the clock, and you got to kill three. Got to kill two now. Linz somehow pulls that one out. Sends it, finds another one. I do not believe what we are seeing. All down to one boy now, but the clock is ticking. They have to apply the pressure immediately. 15 to go. He's got no utility either. Got to be perfect on the gunfights. On the bomb we fly. Envoy now. Do we kind of stay alive? One last player to check. And that is the search. Dylan Hannon does not fall for those parlor tricks. And it was a very strong attempt from Linz and Awakening, but not enough. Search and Destroy comes to a close. You almost had a lot of pure matchup battles in that game too. Linz and Kleenex constantly squaring off, awakening scrap, trading back and forth. And again, great plays from Minnesota. Linz out here is popping pieces, but it is just not enough in the end. Ultra, always clutch, always making the correct plays. A near impossible team to beat. Yeah, it's tough. It doesn't look too flashy. We talk about this for years now with this Toronto Ultra lineup. They're not doing anything crazy. You don't slide and fly and doing any mad stuff, jumping off the top of things. They're just playing very slow and very, very sensibly. And score lines like that, they do show it. Invasion Control coming up in a moment, guys. We'll go to a break before then, but chances are an opportunity here for Rocket to bounce back. Uh, an opportunity, yes. I mean, Invasion can be a defensive shootout, but similar to Search and Destroy, Ultra is also one of the best defensive teams in the game. Well, there you go, friends. The stats may not lie. We're going to go to a very quick commercial break. On the other end of it, we go to Invasion. We play Control. We find out if Toronto Ultra can go 3-0 here in the series and continue their dominant run. Or will Minnesota Rocker, their rivals of the North, manage to pull something back and force ourselves over to a hard point? We'll find out after this. Start the season strong with the Call of Duty League Pack. Grab yourself the CDL Operator, Weapon Blueprint, and so much more. Check out the Call of Duty store in-game now. Tune in throughout Major One this weekend to earn awesome in-game content. You can rock the Frostbite Blueprint, Charms, Emblems, Calling Card, and get XP tokens. Be sure to link your account now to start earning.
Game three now awaits us Toronto Ultra taking on Minnesota Rocco with the purple team. I'm kidding, they're both purple. Rocco are in the lead. Two, oh sorry, Ultra in the lead. Two to nothing. Rocco have got a big comeback to Mount Hitchcock. Uh, you got the wrong script there, Bob. I did. We're paying attention to a different what one now. Ultra Saturday? had that 2-0 lead and we are going into evasion control. Ugh. Obviously we know this map can be a defensive shootout. Both of these teams have had a little bit of success on the offensive side of things, Ultra especially. However, even on the defensive end, and the thing to look out from Ultra, they give away the fewest ticks in the league. They are able to set up the stranglehold and defend both zones to near perfection. So again, Rocker have been playing very strong Call of Duty. The slang has been there. The plays have been made. Accuracy on point as well. His damage numbers absurd on the last control he played against New York. You're going to need that and then some if you want to try to take down Ultra, who will be on the attack first. Yeah, good luck, folks. Here we go. Ultra, 2-2 two -two split. They're leaning heavily towards A, though. They're flying for it. And accuracy's going to be mad to get the nades in. The damage there, no. Viv is trying to help out. Scraps managed to get the kills, and now he's on the zone. And it's going to be a three stack as well. So this thing is going to fly. One tick is good. Yeah, yeah. If you get it, it's even better. The nade is on his teammate, but he's still got two men on the point. Rocker going to surround oh. him, and it is awakening. Picking up a feed. Either way, though, that is the type of play that can just win you this map. Two ticks on A, secure. That's a huge amount of work, despite the heroics and spectacular feed from awakening. Still trying to fly forward now as Kleenex, he is moving with purpose. Three to nothing so far in the kills department, and B is getting captured, a two-man stack. And I gotta say, it is baffling that teams in this league just don't constantly basically four-hit that A zone, because when you get it, it is fantastic, and if not for the team kill, what could have been? Either way, despite the nice angle, that is also nearly the B zone, fully complete. I mean, this is what, maybe 12 seconds or 27, whatever it is, taking off the game clock, and that is to get one zone and two ticks on the other ultra so much time to work with and kleenex jesus i mean that's six and oh he's got the cruise he ain't dying good luck tracking him down kleenex is moving diffy today friends one final segment of a as we fly across towards it rocker are they in a position to catch him seven Oh my god, can he get on the point now? The spree is done. I mean, dude, there's a forfeit, but you might want to hit it. 0-6 from Vivid, 0-5 from Accuracy, a 2v4 right now in this control. Just bodies for target practice for Ultra to shoot. Plenty of time, plenty of lives. Here left in the round, Envoy trying to soften up the attack as a frag goes in. Yeah, no trophy on that zone, so Awakening forced it at least back down a little bit. You see Ultra taking their time, slowing the pace down, trying to isolate this like a round of s &D. Envoy gets caught, couple trades coming through. Looks like Rocker might be out on top. Yeah, that was the cruise as well, so Rocker have managed to weather the storm. They've survived the ordinance, they've survived the naves, now they have to survive another wave. They're yeah, gonna have to survive a, a few different waves as well. 12 left on the board, but of course, you are going to have to force Ultra to stop this clock if they want to end up winning off lives or at all. Awakening has been alive inside of showers for the longest of times. He has a trophy now for reinforcements. Woo! Trophy's looking good. Here's the aggression. Oh, dear. Accuracy caught out. 40 seconds to go. A seven life differential, but for now, it's only nine lives to defend with for Rocker. A bit of space to go here. Awakening's got to go huge. If Insight can find this kill, that's one thing. They're now onto the point. Scrap going for the capture. Two-man capture. Here comes Awakening. That should be the round. That's it. The defenders are done. The zone will fall in a moment. And Toronto Ultra take the first. I mean, that's the round, and honestly, for Invasion Control, that might very well already be the game. Off the opening break, just a four hit. Kleenex starts out 6-0. and oh. Frankly, would have been 7. He got the team kill as well. I mean, there was a mistake. The, the biggest mistake made in that round was made by Ultra, and they still just execute you on offense. Wheeling and dealing right now. Toronto, looking perfect. Yeah, 252, that first round flew by. We saw how quickly the two segments that A went in the opening hit, and then B was cleaned up promptly afterwards. Here we go, Ultra on defense. And we also know Vivid, hyper-aggressive play style, but against Ultra, he has just been getting battered and bullied. A 1-8 start for round one. 
Looking for the bounce back in round two. It is more of a default push right now coming in from Rocker. A very slow capture on this B zone. Two big kills, though. They're getting the ball rolling. Getting the ball rolling, and now we've got trophies to work with. Awakening stays alive, keeps the cap going. Two players on it now for Minnesota Rocker. Accuracy across the map now. No, hey, how much ag aggression can he pull? Not nearly enough. Lovely win there from Kleenex. And another team kill. Yeah, Envoy getting his revenge with that stun grenade. And the idea from accuracy is there, but still going to be that slow capture over towards B. Rocker playing with the idea of applying some pressure and well now you might just be back to square one you've lost the pressure on B Rocker is sort of spreading across the board maybe toying with the idea going to A accuracy again shades of Gavutu <laughs> trying to be the lone man to draw some attention this direction yeah man what it's the rowback tags in one boy slows down ultra have moved in towards B they've taken care of that final segment can we get a segment complete here by A Again, accuracy, not enough on the turn. He does manage to, no, he doesn't. He doesn't finish the segment. Envoy's gonna drain that work as well. And now you're losing the war on both fronts. This is what I was talking about from Ultra. These guys can set up for the kill on defense, the best in the game, and not allowing any ticks on either zone. You gotta get past Scrap. Oh dear. Well, there you go, you get through Scrap. You gotta get through Kleenex now. Linz, oh, Kleenex, three in the feed, 16 and five overall. And he's looking at a few more players now down the sites. Right back to square one. And this is not an easy player to deal with. You got insight right behind them. Four players trying to deal with two. Nice little start, but you're crossing potentially into death. Ultra, so strong on defense time and time again. We're all fighting in the streets here and it's insight. He's managed to get three now. I'm going the last one, 20 seconds to go in the round. Rocker have got to send it, fly forward, desperately get on one of these points. Insight posted up in the tank. Can they get him down? 10 seconds for the move. Viv is trying to make his way towards A. I don't think it's happening. It is absolutely not. It's not. Fight back. Trapped. Minnesota Rocker getting bullied on the main stage. Edge getting choked out here on Invasion. Two to nothing. Match point Toronto Ultra. I mean, this is terrible. I began off the opening break. You try to go for those standard pushes. Ultra, it might take a bit for them to orchestrate it. But once they set you up, they are just going to body you on the way down. Five minutes into this game thus far. Already two rounds in in Ultra. I know they're going to be on the attack, but we already know they might be able to get it done. Scrap told no lie today to Jeremy Studd. He said this is going to be light work. And so far in Invasion, it certainly is. We still have an opportunity for Rocket to pull this back but it's going to take one hell of an effort. And look at Envoy. He has six kills in two rounds, and he's on a four spree as well, so he has been coasting through. Not a lot of pressure on him. Ultra faked out A this time around, and now back towards the B zone. No reason to make things mixy. Woo! They can do whatever they want. Little style points with the body shot there. even swapped out. Kleenex is feeling himself today. 27 lives either side. The B zone safe. That's just a reminder, maybe, of the little bit of difference between the two teams. Kleenex let him know. Get a nice little stack around this B zone. Trophies out and about. Everybody, every player, every trophy in the right spot. The coverage is perfect. Ultra, I mean, they are just simply terrifying. Kleenex so far forward, causing so much problems. Second segment of B gone. We're flying through it. The ARs of Toronto posted up, ready for anything that Rocker can throw their way. Now to the south side of the map we go. Last chance for Minnesota. And Scrap catching players as well. He has maybe made his way to the A zone. He does get caught, but his teammates always there for the trade. Leonex is 21 and 7 yeah, thus he far. Is. He is absolutely rancid. Insight with a sub. Finds one. No way, he gets the second. Yeah, Viv is going to clean house. Trying to push forward once again, the Rocker not out of this yet, but Kleenex and Scrap in the feed. That just hurts. And Envoy is going to get the next kill as well on ASD. Maybe actually baited out by a corpse, but doesn't even matter. Still there for the trade, still applying the pressure. Scrap living in your face. Still holding it together. Probably work from Awakening, staying alive in the back line. Linz gets pulled down. Middle of the map made all that more safer now by Rocker. And finally, for the first time in this round, Rocker maybe can feel a little bit stable. They don't have map control, though, and for the moment, you think you might get it. Envoy right back in your face. Ultra, never a moment wasted. It's a difficult task to keep these players pinned in from here, but Envoy is doing what he can. Now, coverage from Scrap. Kleenex is moving around as well. Everyone doing what they can as Vivid trapped in spawn. Opportunity now to get towards A. You've just lost one of your primary defensive points for Rocker. Vivid has got to go huge. Yeah, nice kill on the cross, though. It's going to slow the push down, and accuracy wins his one as well. 
So Ultra back to square one. Looks like they got a couple players working down the B Street. That's just for the pressure, waiting for number and eight and number five to work down A Street mid-map. But a lot of kills going their way. Seemingly everybody winning their ones. Linz, though, looking for the trades. He's going to get them. The rookie continues to impress. Linz is right place. Nice stun. They would have saw these players down somewhat. Inside, though, opens the mid tank up. 25 seconds now to go. Is awakening. Can he keep these players away? 20 seconds. Guns are up. Everything he can to buy time for his teammates to get out of spawn. And everybody on Awakening team is going to fall. He's in between everybody. The trade is going to come through as well, but Linz is there for the coverage. One more player to beat. Rocker holding it together. That should be it. Final five seconds. I do not believe the Envoy will be able to get onto the point. He's been pinned down, taken care of. And there you go. Rocker by another chance here in Invasion. Well, one of the easiest things to do in MW3 when a defensive round on Invasion. They deliver, take care of business, but now it is the opposite. One of the most difficult things to do. They got to win on offense. They got to do it against Ultra, who has steamrolled their way through this tournament. Granted, this is only map number six for them, but they have been playing perfect Call of Duty. That was a three-minute round of control. A long time here on the streets of Invasion. Now to attack for Rocker. Oh, no. Vivid's dead. And that's going to slow the A push down. They want to be aggressive and do the more difficult thing first. But if you lose a man that quickly, yep, you might have to stop in your tracks. Linz has made it to the zone, but those white arrows are swarming around A. Yep, there they come. Inside's up close. Scrap caught unaware. Nice work. Lamar trying to help out here on the back. It's okay. like Are they cleaning him out? Yes, they do. Linz is now cycling in and out of the zone. Pressure now from Envoy. The spawn is still so close. Now the battle rages inside the zone. Kleenex up next. Linz gets his third in a row. And he's got a little bit of help as well. So this is your moment. If you can get this A zone, that is your opportunity to win. Ultra might even have to chalk it up. Two bodies on the point. And that's going to be the fight done. Rocker had pulled this off. A zone secured in two minutes to work with. Linz is causing all kinds of problems as well. Vivid. Tags. The kill stays alive and now the B zone is being captured. And they got the extra kills as well. Rocker applying the pressure. Vivid. Nice kill with the Renetti as well. You get a trophy on the zone and you get a massive stack on the point. Here comes a big old stack. Three players here from Rocker now on B. First segment gone. Gunfights at the ready. The trophies will be absolutely ringing. Second segment gone. Is this an attacking round win? They're going to get it. Kleenex is just going to flood into oh death. Oh my god! And that is a fast offensive round. It started off poor, but they pick it up immediately. And that is some good news. But again, when we set up and talk about Ultra, about how good they are on defense, the earlier defensive round they had where not even B gets captured is the type that seals the deal. So I'm fairly confident Ultra are going to have defense again for the final round. So, Rocker. They made it here for the round five. You get to test your clutch, but you got to do the impossible twice. You have to do everything you just did again perfectly. Ultra know what to expect this time round. Looks like, yeah, we're not going to go to A, we're going to B. Will Ultra see that on the defensive run? And will they make any adjustments? Well, Ultra double stack over towards A this time around. Didn't want to that slip through the cracks, but... Still going to be that slow capture on B. Try to find as many lives as possible. Vivid going to get spotted and dang, killed as well. A trade comes through. Linz now, the furthest man up from Rocker. Taken down by Scrap and Ultra again. A little bit slow, but slowly working over towards B. Yeah, no problem there. You got yourself a bit of work done towards that B side of the map. The first segment in the bag. You hold on to that for now. It's not going to go anywhere. But you need to keep the play going. Lovely shots from Awakening. The second. Nope. With Matt Demon Joe. Woo, he's turning and burning. And you still have, again, Linz, maybe the next man up. You have to stay alive from Rocker. If you ever lose the pressure, you're going to get punished. That time is ticking down as well. A little bit less than a minute on the game clock. Not a ton of map pressure and accuracy. He's been living on the street. He's just drawing that attention and maybe waiting for the moment to actually jump on the A zone. Ultra, very reflexive. They keep wrapping over towards A just to stack it on defense. But playing with the idea doesn't make it easy. Awakening behind enemy lines, though. Envoy looking for the kill. They're looking for the two-man stack over towards A. It might actually happen. Can actually get any more kills out of this? The trades are done. Insight has got to go big. Toe-to-toe -to -toe now with Awakening on the point. The B zone still being captured in the background. I mean, it's all for a distraction. The main focus right now from Rocker is still going to be on B. Linz has been there the entire time. 
They wanted to apply the pressure if they could get it, but they bought themselves that extra minute, a minute and 44 to capture this A zone. Long time, 20 lives to go as well. This game of control is far from over. Kleenex now trying to comb through the middle of the map. Those white arrows so tightly packed together, desperately trying to look for those attacking rocker players. And it's still just accuracy living on that bridge. He's going to be feeding his team that information and maybe move up on the map with him. Vivid though, freebie death towards the middle of the map. Trade doesn't come through and accuracy is going to fall. Not biting on any of the pressure. Stagnant, every cross covered. Ultra remain perfect. It's a lot of kills from Ultra now. Rocker have been slowed immensely. Just over a minute to play. Looking to find that one solid wave, but they've got a long journey, even after they get those kills, to get down through the streets and down towards A. And they're flooding through the B street, but Kleenex is the man here on defense. He's going to fall, but able to call out too. A few players right now from Rocker, maybe behind enemy lines. Scrap though in a nice corner. Able to get there for one. Flynn's is trying to show up, but they are just desperate for map presence and map control. So little time on the clock. Kleenex wins another in mid. Insight wins his. It's just one by one by one. Accuracy in this position. If he gets killed here, this is going to sting. Envoy hasn't seen him. This might be the difference maker. 27. Trophy down. He has to make the big play. Accuracy has to stay alive. And he wins the big gunfight. The Iceman holding on for dear life. Can his teammates get forward? No, the bridge is being held by Insight. No reinforcements through there. Up close and personal. Envoy down. Trade's complete. The clock keeps running. They just can't get past them. They can't get past Insight on this bridge. He has been slowing everybody down. Awakening sliding maybe into death and no respawns remaining. A hell of a try, but not good enough. Ultra are gonna do it again. Another 3-0 added to the tally. And that was one hell of an effort from Rocker, but it was simply not enough. Toronto Ultra, clean house. Three to nothing in the winner's bracket here. Signs of life out of their Northern conflict counterparts chance, but too little, too late. I mean, look, when we see the scores at the end, Rocker, they played some good Call of Duty, but Ultra didn't break <laughs> a sweat. Their heart rates did not spike up. That is just Ultra at their finest. They have made it to the winner's finals, but they'll face off against face. That's top three secured. Rocker will drop down to the lower bracket. We'll see them later on today playing Los Angeles Gorillas to stay alive here in the tournament. But for now, Ultra, woo! Squeaky clean, man. I do feel like they kind of let the gas off a little bit in the uh, in the game of control there. It's a tough one to call. I mean, they look so fantastic in the hard point. They're fantastic in the search and destroy. It's a different one to win. I mean, we saw attacking rounds be given away. The defensive rounds pretty sound as well. Very, very strong stats as well. I mean, non-stop from the boys. The current kings of the north. Yeah, and I mean, offense, defense for scrap, it does not matter. 15 kills on both. Obviously laying down the law in the damage department as well. The scores are close through the entire lane, but again, I don't think the heart rates ever changed for Toronto. They were always in control, always comfortable. And that's the thing, always being in control and never really let anything get away from them. That's just what they've always done. They've done it since Cold War. It's been uh, something the coaching staff has been preaching, and I doubt anything will change. But that was a very, very convincing run so far. Uh, yeah, we've got, uh, we've got the interview ready on stage. Oh, what do you know? It's our boy, Jamie Craven. Insight on stage with Guy Blaze. Thank you so much, Miles. Boston, show some love to the Toronto Ultra as they go to the winner's finals to take on Atlanta FaZe. And Insight, it's cold in Boston, but I'm thinking I'm standing next to the coldest right now, okay? Because the way y'all handled that series was a master class. How did you get it done? Honestly, we just stuck to our game plan. We know coming in that like we are one of the best teams in the game right now. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, Rocker, no pushover. You see they're on a hot streak right now. Yep. They're like 12 and 3 map count or something like that. But, you know, we stuck to our game plan, we stuck to the win conditions, and we came out on top. You definitely did, okay? The win conditions were locked in. And, you know, one thing here that's, you know, I've seen on the stage that has, you know, definitely elevated y'all gameplay has to be Envoy, okay? Oh, yeah. You know, we've seen him in the league and what he can do, but talk to me about finally sitting next to him on land, in person, and how that feels. Yeah, you know, the kid's been around the block. He's won a ring. He's got an average placement of under four. Mm. Uh, you know, I can list everything about him that's unreal, but what he brings to our team is just nice comms, unreal plays, and I mean, you see him on the map running around me. First map, he was going crazy, so kid's a beast, man. Definitely is a beast, okay? Yeah.
and I think the crowd loves them as well. But also someone who loves him and the rest of you guys are the fans out there in Canada and all around the yep. world who is cheering for you at home who couldn't make it here. We are going to Toronto at some point, but what do you want to tell them that came here and who are at home? You know, the fans that came here, you know, there's some familiar faces, new faces. We love them all. We appreciate the support. The people at home, we love you guys. You know, our, our fan base is getting bigger and bigger every event, and we just love you all. All right, plus ultra for Toronto Ultra. That does it for us on the stage. Chris, take us away. Thank you so much, Blaze. Fantastic stuff from Toronto. They entered the tournament and they're leaving tonight with the same amount of losses, zero. <laughs> you can't make that up, Ralph. Like I'm telling you, we all knew, like Toronto Ultra are just on a different level. It's not like Minnesota didn't play them close. I think it's the first time Toronto Ultra had a 250 to 200 scoreline in HP. They beat everybody by the average of 50. So that map number one was cool. But the search and destroy improvement from Toronto Ultra is what really blew my mind because you're just seeing Envoy. He finds so many openings on those defenses and he makes play after play for this team. If he continues that, they're definitely one of those teams that are going to be difficult to beat. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from this one. This, of course, is coming from game three, but Kleenex was on fire the entirety of this series. What else did you see, Ali? He's been on fire since he touched land, <laughs> let's be honest. But I have to talk about Toronto Ultra. And what I love to watch specifically in this map number three was the fact that they understood that they did not need to take every single gunfight. And I think that's something that separates Toronto Ultra from a lot of these teams is understanding that sometimes that information is a lot more important than trying yeah. to take the chow. Because a lot of times, like you just saw in that play, there was a player in that back street. They knew he was there. It was accuracy. But instead of trying to take that gunfight, they just took that information, knew he was trapped, and instead tried to play for the rest of his teammates and just not let him cross. So for Toronto Ultra, they're putting the rest of the league on watch. This is going to be a banger of a winner's finals. Yeah, and Ali, I totally agree with you. I, another thing I think separates is like the zero hesitation that you see from Toronto Ultra, yeah. right? Like think about the ending of that hard point. Jay, what was the number they've been beating teams by 90 points yeah. in HP? Yeah. A very close game. Vivi gets three kills. They all spawn together, but they're in a disadvantage because two rock players are at the new hill. If they die there, they lose that map. What yes. happens? instantly off rip. They all go to the correct spots. Envoy goes to New Hill, wins the first gunfight. You can trust them to do that. Other two players push out P2, win that gunfight. They trust each other so much, and that translates perfectly to Search and Destroy. When you're seeing these four-man hits left and right, sometimes they slow it down, sometimes they play fast. It yeah. doesn't matter because everybody knows and they're confident that their teammate is going to make a play. They're finding success, man. I have to say, this is the best I've seen from Minnesota so far. Despite the 3 0 loss, look for this team to potentially cause some chaos in that elimination bracket. Speaking of the bracket, where are we at after three days? Well, we still have two more matches to go tonight. Ooh, and already man. we've got Atlanta FaZe and Toronto Ultra locked up in that winner's bracket. That means they're in for top three. The matches that we're about to see are for top four, Jay. That's insane. We got Optic versus Surge. We're talking about Illy and Hook. Story. Trying to get the revenge on Optic. And obviously Optic trying to bounce back. That's going to be a goodie. And somehow the Carolina Royal Ravens Vegas Legion walk away with cash and our world champions do not. So, well, our defending world champions, excuse me. Yeah. So there's still a lot of money to go away going on Sunday. Right, Royal Ravens and Legion needed those Damn. points. They Jeez. got them $150,000 on the line for the number one spot. And you have to wait till Sunday to find out. But when we come back, we got another banger. Optic Texas takes on our cities in the Seattle Surge. You don't want to miss it. Favorite map and mode, I'd say Old Patch Terminal Hardpoint. 
Uh, I'd say the favorite map in mode is probably Karachi Hardpoint or someone with Karachi just feels like a skilled map. Probably Karachi SD. I think Karachi Hardpoint. Karachi Hardpoint? Hardpoint Invasion. Subbase HP. It was the old subbase Hardpoint, but that's because it was super mixy with the old spawns. But now, probably like a Skid Row Hardpoint or something. Maybe a mixy MP1. Karachi Hardpoint. I would say Karachi Hardpoint. Definitely Karachi Hardpoint. And that's just only because you can run a sub on Karachi. So it's a it's a really heavy sub map. And you know when you get in red, anything can happen and as a sub, that's like my world in there. Probably high-rise control. Maybe just Karachi in general. Um, I played the original MW2, so I'm a little ancient, but um, it's just cool to see, you know, fast forward a decade from now that we're playing the same maps that I did when I was like 12 years old. So maybe like a Karachi or like a sub base, or no, sorry, Karachi or terminal. You can't forget about a good terminal. High-rise control. It's literally, you can jump everywhere on the map. You get top third, jump top heli, it's the playground. Invasion Hardpoint. My favorite map in mode is Invasion Control. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, I, mean, I, I mean, I'm giving intel to other teams though. Like, if I answer that. Wait, that's a hard one. Wait, I can't be giving away the vetoes. Favorite map in mode in the current rotation. Oof, probably Subbase Hardpoint right now. I skid real Hardpoint. Map in mode, Subbase Hardpoint. Best player in the game on that map.
come from a city, you hear signs when we sleep. Heaven sent, hands down, vibes so unique. It's time for another elimination match as we find out who powers into our final four. Surge taking on Optic Texas, a Texas squad that went so deep against Atlanta phase, but eventually fell short in the second surge. Yeah, it's one of those things that all of a sudden the 2-3-5 starts to look really tricky for this Optic team. But them introducing a new map to their heart point pool has to have the green wall feeling really good because the sub base looked really, really polished for them. Ali, uh, Optic's trying to avoid the Illy villain are continuing to grow here in the venue. The former teammate now on the other side of the stage. What do you want to see from Shotzi and the boys in this matchup? Well, it's a double doozy, right? Because you have the Illy and you have Hook, Hook who has yeah. been on Optic Texas in the past as well. So it's scripting on scripting on scripts. But what I want to see from Optic Texas is honestly what they showed us versus Atlanta. They played it fairly well. They just didn't have search and destroy under their belt. It just has not been a strong game mode for Optic Texas. But honestly, they played that high rise control really well getting behind enemy lines. They just weren't confident enough to collapse on the plays throughout the majority of it. And again, those hard points, so clean. Their breaks were amazing. Dashi had two minutes in map number one. Dashi, Dashi's the hill kitten right now for this team. So I'm hoping they open it the same way. But according to the pregame, again, keep the hard point on point and clean up the search and destroy. I kind of already said it, but if you read deeper into the stats, they're 10 and eight in opening duels and they're converting six of 10 advantages and they're two and seven round count on attack. So they've got to be better. Optic Texas coming in here as the higher seed. We'll see if they are able to get the job done in front of the fan favorite crowd. We'll see, of course, on the other side of the stage, what's going on with the surge here, Alan? Walk me through this lineup because they get booed anytime <laughs> they walk out front. Yeah, you know, it's taking the villain arc in hand at the moment, but the thing about it is as much as surge have looked particularly great in the search to destroy, they're still really having a tough time locking in their respawn. Across what they've been able to do in hard point, it hasn't looked particularly particularly great. They're only holding at 12%, which, or pardon me, 12th in the league, which is obviously not good, but they're also not breaking either. So really at both fronts, when it comes to the hard point, they're not finding the success that you would need to see. I think a lot of that comes down to their tempo. The pacing has just looked a little mismatched between what the subs want to do versus what the ARs are following up with. And that's got to change here. Nameless, here's our Monster yeah. Energy pregame. And I got to get your thoughts real quick. Three and two in both of their matches, two, three, fives for Surge. Yeah. They're basically the opt counter here, right? I mean, listen, and that's absolutely fine. Some teams are just com are comprised of that sort of formula. You got to win your search and destroys. They've been fantastic. They're high level gameplay we've seen, especially on that terminal. And they have it again in this series. The map and mode, it seems like optic panic when they pick some of these maps after the last performance first phase. But for the Seattle Surge, I'll tell you point blank period, simple. On rotation, they are really, really good. We saw it map one of their very last series. They're just getting broken instantly. The comms have to be frantic. They have to calm down in the middle of these games and hold down a setup. So as we take a look at the map, the modes what's the most important I mean, I feel like Optic sort of panicked. You see, they ban high rise search and destroy in this series, which is, you know, obviously a knee-jerk reaction from there. Going up against Seattle, now you're stuck with a terminal SD where they have been absolutely lights out. And usually Texas auto veto invasion yep. control, and now they are playing it. Another knee-jerk reaction, I feel like, from the last series. And this is again another problem when they're so good at Karachi, and then you have a hard set veto, like you mentioned, in invasion. And this is all about how Seattle have said, okay, we're not gonna let you get Karachi. And like you mentioned, a knee-jerk reaction saying, we didn't play the high rise particularly the way we wanted to versus Atlanta. So yeah. now we got to go to another flex pick that we have not seen them perform on. It's a mystery. We didn't even talk about the terminal hard point. That is, these are like the two best terminal hard point teams in the game. Good right point. Now. So this should be interesting. All right, we're done talking because the match is ready. It's time to get the official predictions locked in. I'm going Optic Texas again. They fell just short of phase. I think they finally get it done in four this time around. The two, three, five is what I'm looking at at Optic. And there are worries there. And for that reason, I'm taking Seattle. Battle surge losing in four. I've got Optic uh, taking oh, all the respawns. Okay. Uh, I got right. a curveball for you. Uh -huh, that was so cute. Actually. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it straight. Uh, I believe in Optic Texas. I don't think they're going out here. I got Illy. I'm going with Seattle. I, I picked Optic last time. They let me down. I'm going with Illy. He can't stay that good all day, Nameless. Trust me. He went crazy. He had 19,000 damage in the last series. 1.3. The man is on fire. Enough from us. Let's get it started as we send it to Guy Blaze on the stage.
Thank you so much, Chris. And I can tell how split you guys are on the desk. But when it comes down to this crowd, I think I know exactly who their favorite is coming to the stage. Get ready to make some noise for them. It's Optic Texas. We got Kitty, Shotzi, Pred, and Dashy looking to build that dynasty brick by brick. It's Optic Texas. Optic Texas have battled their way this far, and now they have to go through some old friends in Ilian Hook on the other side. If anything, Shotzi should know no one better than those two. The green wall's got to get it done for the crowd here if they want an opportunity to force it into Sunday for an Atlanta rematch. Blaze, who do they got to go against? Man, they got to go against the team who has already broken this crowd's heart twice. And they've already showed you if you disrespect them, they're going to do it again. Get ready for the Seattle Surge! have decided to play them on their best maps and they look happy to do so. Listen, this is a revenge game 100%. What do we say about that in COD? The revenge he always gets the revenge. We'll see if they can do it. Who can Illy trying to lead the charge? Let's go, Blaze. Oh, it's time to go. Boston, this is going to be a good one. Are you ready? And I can't think of a better duo to cast this one. Merc, Maven, let's get freaky. Here we go. I'm down to get freaky. Let's have a blast. Hey, you're a freaky man. Oh, yeah, that is very true, Joe. But, you know, when we talk about, like, uh, this whole revenge thing, you and I highlighted that a bit back in, like, week two when they were first going to play each other. I'm like, oh, man, I got a feeling about Seattle. Like, Illy's going to want this bad. Hook, too, blah, 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 blah. Didn't really matter. Optic Candle business, they won that 3-1. Yeah, that was one of the last times Seattle won a control. It's been a, it's been a long time. It really has. Yeah, that was yeah. the only map they won. Uh, I think here for Optic, yeah, I mean, you heard the desk kind of talk about it. Maybe you need your reactions with these vetoes. You're you're not playing high rise control. You're playing invasion, which you haven't played an official match. You're playing terminal search and destroy. Uh, one of uh, maybe you just I don't know just wanted to get rid of these maps, but I, there is some question marks here. I think it is surprised this because you know we just talk so much about Seattle and terminal for the opening month of the league. Like they love terminal, they love terminal, they play terminal, they beat people on terminal, and then they got banned and banned and banned and banned and banned. So when you see a series now and they get both. It's just sort of, sort of like, what's going on here? I think, yeah, the whole knee-jerk reaction, you're just sort of surprised when you lose a map to a team like FaZe to make a change. But you got to trust Barlow and this team. They know what they want to do. They caught us off guard with the sub-base, and they came out yeah. and fried. Um, maybe they got something in their sleep. Yeah, I mean, maybe that's just it, right? A sub-base, obviously, we don't we're able see to... every scrim. We don't see every practice. No, you, you, got you are wrong, but I, typically those are telling trends, right? It's just yeah, the way yeah. it is, right? They're, they're going to play matches in maps that they are comfortable in. We're going to take a look at hard point metrics for both of our squads. I mean, I, I got a feeling this is going to look pretty one-sided. Here's the thing for Surge. They are winning one per match. These last couple of uh, matches, they are doing enough. But you can see right there, just, uh, yeah, Optic is a much better hard point team. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're talking overall. Pretty stats here, basically last and close to first. Um, Listen, we don't have to dive into the stats too much. You have a good hard point team here. You have a bad hard point team. But I think the thing that we're going to be looking at it's going to be the search and destroy. When you just think about how Optic lost their series to phase through search and destroy, we think of how Seattle won their series through search and destroy. Yes, there are three game modes, but I think you and I are we're looking at search. Uh, yeah, big time. Absolutely. But I, I mean, you know, search, they have stolen a hard point. They did it versus Carolina. They did it versus Boston. They're trying to find one. They're, they're trying to find one respawn. Again, the last time they matched Probably up hard point. with <laughs> Optic, they were able to win a, a control. Again, you're going to an invasion control, which Optic have not played in a match. So. We'll see, man. I don't know. This this Seattle team, they're just kind of getting business done. And uh, I think, you know, Blaze kind of nailed it. Nameless talked about it too. Like, they've been booed this entire event, um, you know, through the GA stuff. Um, you know, they've just become these villains. They're used to it. And, like, it's one of these things where, like, it either gets you down and faces you or you just kind of own it and have fun with it. And so far, they're owning it and having fun with it. I don't think this crowd is going to get to them. Do they have the talent to hang with Optic? I don't think so. But you never know. You never know what they might be able to do. Is yeah, there's gonna be a lot of that. Every time they're on camera, there's gonna be some boos. I mean, anytime you're up against Optic, there's gonna be some boos. That's just the the way it goes. But you know, 
Who, Gilly? <laughs> Obviously, they won a, a ring with Shotzi on Empire. I mean, they've teamed so long. You were just on Optic last year. You don't get the results that you want. But Surge here just trying to stay alive in this tournament. Optic trying to bounce back from a loss. Oh, my. That's great form. That is really, really strong form there. Absolute athlete on your screen. I mean, we, we are gamers. We have some great forearms. Yeah, yeah. Very, very powerful forearms amongst those Call of Duty players. But those, the boys are getting locked. They're having some laughs. It's a very different vibe just to, when you take a look at each four-man roster getting ready to go. Yeah, I mean, you kind of said it. The first match we, we had with Surge in Toronto, it was just, I don't even know what this team is no. doing. And then they started to have a little bit of fun. I am in completely and utterly impressed that they got to this point. Just yeah. you said, you know, casting with me over the past like five, six years is one of the more one-sided series we've ever been a part of. How bad they got slammed by Ultra. If you had told me they were getting to top six, I would have been mind blown. As we get a bit of a reset of the game, we'll be into it here shortly. We're going to take a look at our bracket, give you a quick update while we get waiting and ready to go for this map one. Base and Ultra waiting in the winner's bracket final. And Joe, take me to the loser side of things. Yeah, I mean, Minnesota Gorillas will be up next, and then you got uh, Opti versus Surge. But you see Surge surviving two game five wins, one over Boston, one over Carolina, and then up top, yeah. I mean, FaZe versus Ultra, that was just sort of... A match I think a lot of people predicted to be here with what we saw online and what you have seen so far this weekend. I, I just want to see Ultra get pushed to the limit a little bit here. If there's a team to do it, it's going to be FaZe. No, I think it's a matchup that most people have really wanted to see because we just haven't yet. And at times, you know, you think FaZe looks like they're so far ahead. Ultra looks so, so good. You're like, how are these two going to battle it out? And to be fair, since the inception of the CDL, that matchup has brought us some of the best moments in the league. It really has. Whether you have very different rosters, obviously, what you have on, well, both. You've had changes all over the place, but you've had some juggernaut matchups between these teams. Oh, I heard uh, something fantastic, which is the game is ready. All so, right, let's do it. Let's so do it. Hopefully we load on up here soon. I hear the countdown and it is time. We are getting ready for this map one. Optic favored massively in the hard points. They need to come out swinging here with a map one victory. You saw what they were capable of on sub base. They can obviously be a threat. We hadn't seen them before. Really impressed with what we saw. Well, I mean, take it down FaZe. Obviously, FaZe, uh, you know, the solid, one of the best sub base teams that we have seen. But yeah, I they haven't, like, played it a ton. But I noticed, like, based on scrims and stuff, they're nuts there. Like, yeah, and I, and I think this is just uh, what we saw throughout that map. Obviously, Pred had a fantastic game, but every time they were kind of put into the bad spawn, the right side of the mini-map, Optic got out of it quickly, sort of flipping those spawns. They're going to be starting on the bad side. Let's see what they can do. Giddy up. Here we go. Fans roaring early in Kenny. My, what is this route? Finey pick. Shotzi. The guy's Michael Phelps on. He's going for a deep swim around the flag. Shotzi. Or is it Aquaman? Coming up from the depths. Yeah, but the kills going down around Kenny to be the final member here. Kenny, he has been so good for this team in so many big moments and respawns online here at land. Starts off 3-0, gives his team some map control, and we just know this guy. He is a winner. Let's see if he can get him to Sunday. Yeah, I know you were real excited just to get the pedigree, the type of player he is over to this Optic roster. The guy can be nuts. He can will people forward. We'll keep an eye on him throughout the course of it. But Fred right now, who is on three in a row, see what else he can find. Uh, runs out of ammo, right at E up, able to pop again. But Abuza threw on the flank. Abuza follows that up with a second as well as we get ready. And into this second hard point. So far, so good for Seattle. You're lining things up. Yeah, behind that three dead, you're going to see Optics going to spawn all the way out. Seattle, they're going to give themselves some buffer. What, 15 seconds really before this first attack going to come on through. And Abuza. He finds first three of the match. He's on a little three spree hoop, locking down the middle of the map, but you're staggered here. So Kenny is going to have to slow things down, control top three, and find those spawn kills. But he does get traded out. So, so far, so good here for Surge. Yeah, yeah, they're looking good. Abuza was rolling. He was on four in a row. Shotzi able to take him out before maybe he builds towards any kind of streaks. Now we focus on the next rotation. You can see those white arrows, top left, getting set up, looking to lock them in, in transition now from our R point. You'll get back within about 10 points now if you are Optic Texas. Two in a row for Shotzi, two in a row for Fred. A little bit of rhythm and rhyme to bring into the next four. RC says, no, sir. He's able to skirt away from the third and nearly take that one out, but the movement is there with that movement, Renetti. 
from Shotzi. Now next hard point up early. Setup for Surge. What can they do this time through? I mean, it's not really an early setup. Really, it's a boost. The last player alive just kind of hanging out. Well, he's going to get taken down. A steady one there for Opti. They're able to push on through. So they're able to find that break. And I mean, you take this because you broke the P2. You at least made it messy. Surge a bit of a lead, but you, you, you would love to find some more time as the nades do connect from Arceus. Hook and Illy with the shots. Yeah, Hook will win another one. As he drops, Hook will try to pick that up, but Kenny is shooting four heads right now. First to get to double digits on three in a row. Shotzi, he is a hunt. He's a player to work with on either side of it, though, and the trophy, uh, trophy not going to allow him to make any kind of play. Now to Preds cross, you see the shots he's able to hit. Lead change now, Optic go out in front. Yes, he's just trying to set up this pinch, but you have RC's locking down the middle of the map, so Illy on the hill. Trying to see if there's any trophies around. I feel like I hear one, so Illy just trusted his teammates. Same with Abuzo. Here comes the crossfire. Illy almost nearly. finds three. Almost finds three, but the number's too strong for Optics. They're able to break on through. Yeah, look at the close spot and be able to reinforce that as well. See if they can build upon this lead. Fred right there with Kenny, mash him into the double digits. Illy trying to slide in, Kenny is slamming him, and Pred will make it the third. Pred just chows out behind that for his fifth in a row. Sends it to get that fourth player, try to push out these spawns a bit, alleviate the pressure from the hard point. Yeah, I mean, it's just the newcomers here to the roster. 25 and 15 star, make it 26 for Kenny. Has these two both in double digits. We're gonna have around a, what, 30 point lead here for Optics. We're gonna head on over towards P5. And really just both teams fighting for map control, right? You haven't really seen anyone cash in on a full 40 or 50 or so points. Really, the most for Optic is in that P4 that we just saw. So we're gonna hang on to this lead as here jumps Hook and the rest of the Surge boys. Yeah, you're gonna have one person to point. That's me, Dashy, who's picked out of it. Now you get in, try to set up. On the other side of the map, to maybe stagger them a bit with some early kills will be Abuza, will be the point man. The dealing with this push, he tries to get top AC, not going to work out. Hoop gets some info, ripped the one HP instantly. Is he's trying to back up? Will he even get back to full HP? Not going to happen. So he's still at half. You get three through there for Optic Texas. You're in the point. You're so good up time again. Nice little stretch here from Texas. And you and I have casted a lot of surge this weekend with their hard points, and that's just been sort of the struggles. Those yeah, early yeah. pushes in their holds have not. I mean, they've just been destroying them. You have not had great holds throughout the weekend. You look at Karachi, you're seeing it here on sub base. So just a big gap in their play right now in yeah. all point. It's not like I want to say they're like outplaying people, but they've at least like slowed it down and rotated when they've needed to. You just then don't find any of the kills in like the first wave or the first push, and suddenly you are in trouble. Awkward little gunfight there with the railings, but still a 50 point advantage now for Optic Texas. Next hard point up. As the fights go down for map control round mid, Kitty's trying to finesse, but not quite able to get out of harm's way. Okay, yeah, see who just kind of finessing around here towards the ladder, and well, he's gonna find one, but again, there's just always one more optic player dealing with the player on the hill, and Fred's gonna give his team some, some good spawns here for P2. Surge do find some early kills, but they're just not finding the time on the hill until right now. Illy's on it. Is it just the thing where you're trading more effectively if you're Optic Texas? Like, how many times it felt like one more? There was one more. If you have one more player, you're okay for Surge, but you don't have it. It's not just that. It's just sort of their, their setups where you have one kill and then that player is off the hill. Optic up 50 points right now. Let's go to a listen in with Optic Texas. On the tunnel, yeah. Yeah, the, the, he's dark. Oh, one, 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 oh one, one stock could be Alec. But got me tunnel. Tunnel color. Tunnel, 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 Alec, three. on you and me. I hear you. You're right up. Top third, I think. I don't know where Alec is. I'm playing for him. You're right up. Right up. Right up. Right up. I'm waiting for you guys. Third, sorry. Loading to me. Nice. Nice. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, my God. Let's go. 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 Let's
Crazy, crazy, crazy color. I can't crazy see guy color. dark. And okay, no, it was P2. Crazy color. Yeah. I killed the guy dark. Okay, it was Illy, it was Illy. We're missing him. He's mid lane there. Okay, okay, yeah. He might be tough. Time Illy, absolute, absolute time. Nice job, bro. Two part color. Back left to me. Loading. Two part color. One is reloading. One shot. One shot loading. Last two loading. loading. I'm flooding. I'm flooding. I'm flooding. I'm flooding. Yeah, last two. They're absolute guys. Top me too. Top me too. We we'll get back into it. Abuza currently on five in a row, but you've got just under two minutes in the play clock too. So you were talking early about a lot of fights for map control, a lot of scrappy moments around hard points that could come into play. I mean, it's not like this is, you know, the, the sub base that we saw off the launch, right? Yeah, yeah, true. It's close spawn, close spawn, just trade, trade. Nobody really on the hill or just contesting time. This is a very different, it's just both teams. One player seeking through, getting them off the hill, fighting for map position. And in turn, is Kenny's able to win another one up to 27 you have this 40 point lead but a minute 40 on the clock i think will absolutely come into play dude illy was mind blown i think after that one once he got a hit marker with a pistol too but he can't quite win it abuza though with a slide and the uppercut able to knock fred out of this one but the fresh hard point abuza sliding out winning it clearing the trophy as well as abuza is making plays trophy then toss i think rc's got one out to give him the cover. So you still have Abuza in the point, but he gets gunned. Pred once again coming up with some big multi-kills. I mean, that's just really, it's these multi-kills that are coming in, whether it's Kenny, whether it is Pred, you heard him roaring in the listening. Who kind of pinched out? Can he find a double? Able to do so. So you need to cash in here if you are Seattle Surge. This would put them within 20. You still have a cruise on Abuza to work with as well. So not out of this yet. Yeah, stunned himself is a little cherry on top, I guess, but 30 seconds now between the squads. Abuza tucked in behind, it takes a few too many to finish that first kill, so he ends up paying the price. I thought maybe he had two freebies out in front. Who can't quite get the tracking on? And that'll be a double now for Shotzi, but we get ready for our next hard point. Optic in position early. A chance to take a significant edge. If you get a good chunk of this time, you sort of have been the play clock working against Surge and the scoreline. Yeah, I mean, this is sort of worst case scenario here for Surge. You respond all the way out. The full setup is in. Cruz not going to connect. And then afterwards, Dashi finds the first kill. Kenny with another one. So you're in a bit of a trap here if you are Surge. Who's going to find the opener? It is the rookie right now, Abuza, who's been playing so well throughout this game. Illy trying to find one more, but this is a, another solid lead. It was 20, now up to 50 points here for Optic. You're able to push towards the point, though, if you are Hook, and you'll be able to get in now. I didn't see that was a spawn that close, or if he just tracked there. But he gets in, wins the one-on-one. -on -one. 40 seconds now between the teams. They clear him out of the point for now. We get ready for our next hard point. Now you see the lock popping north side of the point, trying to push it out his Shotzi, but he's got multiple players to deal with, so... You get a moment to breathe. Now, if you are Seattle Surge, but the next wave is starting to come forward, it's a bunny hopping Pred looking to make a pay. And again, just the way Optic's playing this, control top snow, control top three in P2 window, force them to have to come to us. And while there's a minute left on the play clock, 50 seconds either for Optic to play this, but they are playing this very calmly, the way that they want to play with map control, and it is working out so far. But can Seattle find an opening as Pred with another two? He's up to 35 kills leading the way. Well, that's the luxury of having this 40 or so point advantage in the play clock where it is. But yeah, you can definitely play a little just lock him in. Like, we don't need to worry about the point so much as just getting kills. But as Dashy slides through, he's trying to dish out some haircuts as well as he gets two. He gets the damage damage through, nifty little trophy to protect him out in front. Now to Pred's POV we go, 210 on the board, and 40 points now needed for Optic is Pred, snapping back and hitting the shots, knocked down to 70, give my guy another. And this is the issue, this man gets going, and it just feels like he is unkillable 38. at times. This is maybe the last chance here, Hook's able to find two. Surge need a break here at P2, Kenny in a spot with a double of his own. It is a long and glorious map number one is the play clock dwindles, but Kenny is still hitting. 35 for Kenny, 38 for Pred. They're looking for double 40s if possible, but a Shotzi we go, who's lined up the kills now, 25 needed. Snap through the window, but Arsenis is there. Dashi now lining it up the other side of the duo, and Dashi and Shotzi trying to make the plays inside, Joe, who's trying to track across it. It's a tricky one. 
almost a 40. There it is. 40 Bob for Pred. 40 and 25. Only a few more for Ken now. Is he hits 37? 20 seconds on the play clock. 20 seconds for the win. Dashy hitting. I, I mean, it, just everyone is taking their turn. 14 seconds away. 20 seconds on the play clock. After what? These last couple of minutes have been all optic in the feed. The slaying battle is going one way. Is Dashy's five is free gonna pop on up? But it's looking like Matt number uh, one is might have double forties. As double, maybe, maybe double forties. Not gonna happen. We'll get it to him anyways. <laughs> Fred and Kenny providing the slang. If they fry, they're in that map one. Putting up some bombs. Is it's, it's a long hard point. I mean, you've got like nothing left on the clock. They close out the dub, but they were getting fired up and the fist bumps are out for a good reason. 40 up for Fred. I mean, we've seen it. I mean, not even on Opti, Seattle, right? Ever since he has been in the CDL, when he gets going, gets roaring, just feels like he is untouchable. Yeah, I mean, it it, uh, it feels like he was born for like a close hard point. Just how many have we cast it back when he was on that Seattle team where it's just, when all hell breaks loose, Fred's the one standing at the end of it more often than not. But as close as it was at times, I mean, Optic certainly felt to be in control over the final couple of minutes of that game. Um, especially, I think once it became a play clock and scoreline thing, you really struggled to get involved. You've got almost 7,000 damage on both Pred and Kenny. I mean, you outslay by what? 20-ish? 22? Yeah. But I mean, it's not just that, it's a non-traded kills for me. 31 for Pred, 27 for Kenny. Uh, kind of yeah. just putting them in the blender. I mean, it finishes 250 to 165. I think really until that final, you know, the second P5 setup from Optic, going to that P1. I mean, it was a pretty close game. They got it down to 20 points. Yeah. That's when that lead comes back into play for Optic, and they just played it at their pace. You know, they pull this one out of the bag in the last series. Haven't seen them on it. They show how strong they can be here. But this is one where, like, you need to win this. If, you, if you're Optic, if you're coming in here, this is your pick. You know we have a terminal maybe looming in map four. You know Search and Destroy has been a little bit sketchy. Like this one you needed to win. They handle business. But yeah, as we both talked about, it's close throughout this. You're really trading blows. But I don't know. Yeah, just once once it's a threat of the, the time and the scoreline, Surge have to keep scrambling and scrambling and scrambling. It felt like when it came to that, that's when Optic Texas really started to light it up. And it probably... Like for both teams there, throughout the first like set of hard points, it was just like always one more player, right? Finding one more kill. Yeah, 100%. Just getting them off the hill so you don't cash in a majority of the time. That's when it got to its closest. It was around 164 to 140. But then from then on, I mean, Optic just pretty much put them in the blender. Of course, some big gunfight wins go the way of Optic. Out of Pred, out of Kenny. Well, they just really controlled this side of the map, and we know how tough it is on sub base. I think it's just going to be tricky for Surge because it felt like, you know, we were casting them against Ravens, right? Like when, when they really found success in respawns, like, what were we were saying, they, they were shooting. Like they started to go lights out, black out, and just kind of fry them. I don't know that they have the firepower to do that against Optic. Well, it took them a minute. <laughs> it did, it did, it, it did, did, but take them a Optic aren't Carolina. Yeah. Like, I, like, I just don't know if you have the firepower to do that. Well, we'll see. But in the map one, you look great if you're Optic. Now, can you continue that into the search and destroy, or is it going to be Illy's playground now? Because he put up, what, 13 in an earlier search and destroy. He's been lights out on stage, playing in maps two and five. He gets a terminal search and destroy, which they feel very comfortable on. Yeah, I mean, you saw the, sort of the game flow of those last four hills. You got 11 points if you were Seattle Surge. Uh, yeah, they got put on clamps. Yeah. yeah, they absolutely did. But yeah, over to Terminal SD. I mean, this is uh, what Surge needs. But they are not used, to, or they are very much used to this feeling. Down 0 1. Let's just play our game. Well, I mean, you, you don't win this, you're getting three up. It's more than likely how it's going to go. I mean, could they possibly win a control? Potentially. Sure, sure. Just, but like, they just haven't. I, yeah, I mean, I mean, you lost to, it was like the first ra first Ravens control win they're able to get against them. Like, you're not, you're not looking good there. There's not a lot of confidence for them, so you have to come out and fight in this terminal S&D. When we casted them against Ravens, like, what really stood out about their search to destroy was that it was their one-on-one -on -one wins. They were doing such a good job of that, like those early picks. And Abuza really stood out, I think, with some of those key first bloods. Well, I mean, it's not, it's not even just that. It's like when they were down a man, they knew where they took the fights, right? Carolina didn't reposition. They gave them two-on-twos, and that is where Seattle took advantage of it really inside of the plane, starting with Hook. So we'll see if we can find that. But they were just proactive. They knew exactly where they wanted to go on the map. As soon as there was a fight that went down, Illy was jumping through the middle hallway, doing whatever he wanted. Yeah, and, and to be
be fair, when you, you sort of talk about Carolina struggling with the first floods, like that's where Optic struggled a bit too. Like they get a first pick, they do so well in opening duels, they have the gun skill to do it. But like when you get to those four v threes, they're not capitalizing nearly enough. Yeah, and this is a map where you just feel like, especially on defense, like getting that first blood at that point, I think you just kind of regroup it and play around map control, even give up a bomb site, play around a retake that we have seen some of our better terminal SD teams do. Sounds like game is starting. We are about to get into it. All right. To map two, we get ready to go. Can Optic clean up some of their search and destroy woes? You know, they're thinking off after that last series. Like, obviously, that's where the improvement has come. But how, how often has that been a story for an Optic gaming team? Joe's trying to take me out of this cable, I swear. We good? Yeah, you're good. Don't tear an ACL. Oh, no, you almost wrapped that around my leg perfectly. I fell over. But unfortunately for you, I'm very athletic. Illy, a bad man. You see Major 1 search to destroy stats. He's sitting just below a 2 KD. He will be a guy to watch in this map, too. Yeah, you're 3-0 on this map if you are Seattle. Surge, 1-2 and two for Opti Texas. And this was the man versus Carolina to find so many opening picks, but nobody inside the plane. It's a little bit different of a setup here for Optic. You have two players outside. And who's going to go for the Whoa. peak, and instead it's Pred, who was so good in map number one, and our city just flies out for a trade. Yeah. I feel like he was playing jetpack cod. Yeah, he flicked too, but uh, still got clothesline. It is a fast one here. Illy now by himself in a one versus four, and they just send it at him. It's all smiles. Fist bumps are out. Hey, Kenny's got a beautiful smile, huh? He absolutely does. Oh. And there are shots. We saw his form on stage with that right hand, and you're seeing it right here in game. That's a good point. So just talking things over, but you see a bit of an off Mighty angle there. Arms. Bit of an off angle there for Pred. And I mean, yeah, I mean, Arceus goes quickly for that trick. Yeah, you don't say. He did snap on his shot. No, he really flicked, like, but it just didn't matter because there were two players to deal with. But not a single kill for Surge in that opener. All good for Optic Texas. They want to bring the pressure to B. You're getting pretty aggressive as well. On the other side of it, it's Illy and Abusa trying to get involved. Abusa does get that opener, but traded quickly by Kenny. Some help comes over the top for Seattle Surge. You've now got Illy and Arceus there. But look where Bomb's starting to move, starting to wrap. Yeah, I mean, really, I mean, so early in that round number one where I, I don't even think you got trophies or anything. So maybe trying to find a nade with this guy. With another headshot, gives them a two on three advantage. It's, you can see Hoot now trying to find one, but Elite does make this a two on two. Yeah, he gets the information, and it is beautifully done. There's another one here. He tries to make a play in the smoke. Just trade a little bit of clayoffs. Now, Fred just gonna be the last alive, trying to spot him. He's in the smoke. There he is. Fred able to get the kill now down to one versus one. With just under 40 to go. Fred versus Illy. As Fred has been. Just taking off heads. Illy just got the spot. They spotted each other. Snap it out and challenge. Can he catch him on the cross? Some damage in. Illy trying to stay up and finesse. 20 seconds to go and Illy hops out, wins his ones. Is I think Pred like got to that spot. He's sort of like, now nah, I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> uh, I mean, good, great job by Illy here to just really finesse. I mean, as soon as he went behind the truck, I thought maybe Pred was going to go for some shots towards Ooh, his feet. Or but like reposition, like I thought, like, get behind some cover. Because once you get back to full there, if you're Illy, like you went. I... Oh, man. The We Love Illy chants in the venue are so beautiful. We got nothing but respect and love for each other as gamers here. That's absolutely what we have. Yeah. Man. We all accepted that thing when we loaded up COD. It's yeah. like, yes, yeah. absolutely, yes. <laughs> Friendship. Oh, I always love the one like, did you have fun? No, I did not. <laughs> no. I was fighting 200 ping players. They're coming from here all over the place. Okay. Another first blood for Pred, though. With the man advantage, but here comes who. This is where he was so good, but Shotzi's gonna catch him. Four versus two. Booza almost able to get away with one, and he's trying to reposition because hit down to 50 HP. Still just being patient inside if you are Shotzi. And you see bomb down right in front of him, just hold him. Yeah, I mean Illy's trying to take a couple of gunfights, but he's got the duo in Dashi and Jetty Top B. Booza trying to find any angle that he can. 40 seconds left, has to collect the bomb. A lot of work to do for Seattle Surge. They are just 
locked down. But Abuza does find one, and he is full HP, so a chance here for Surge. 30 to go. You recoup bomb. Pred just outside, able to hit slide so quick, quickly. Now you lose Illy, so Abuza in trouble. Last up. One he knows three. someone's around. He knows. Just where is this player in Pred? 10 seconds, not going to opt for the bomb plant. And that is going to be the round. No time to do anything. As he was really relying on his teammate to maybe get one, you turn this into 2v2, maybe you pull something out, but no openings there for Abuza. He's so worried about the close player that entire time. He accomplishes uh, just about nothing after his kill. Yeah, a couple of uh, defensive round ones here for Opti. I mean, it's just really the plane pushes from Surge getting shut down. Hook it, one and three, RC's 0 and three. That was that duo starting off one and six. Yeah, and whether it's, uh, you know, Hookie or Karachi, like, he just gets into a rhythm, right? Like he can be a rhythm player. Like he finds these times. I mean, he, finds these he, he was on this team last yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, right? they get it. They the get kind it. Kind of play he could be. He's not finding them right now. Shotzi nearly dropped, but so up, still up. Abuza so good from that side of getting kills. He gets the damage, and I think then Illy gets the kill through. Pred is just lurking. The drop shot hits up to five and one, but Illy gets a second on the other side of it. So the push completely shut down towards B. Now we'll see what Pred and Dashi are capable of. And I think he kind of saw as Hook's able to find what, I mean, Shotzi is hoping a trophy was there. And there was a trophy in the, in the area. But Dashi's going to turn this into a one-on-two. So once that eight hits, he's, he's looking at his cam like, what the, what the heck? Yep, yep. And Dashi's just thinking, Abuza, Hook, all right, you guys give me one-on-ones. You're both getting fried. Just like, can he find that fight? 35 to go. Oh. Abuza, spotted, bomb, picked up. Honestly, I think that's best case scenario because he was snapping onto both of the, the positions Abuza yeah. was in. Yeah. He knows Hook's watching this cross. There it yeah. is. Yeah. Four yeah. bullets to the face. He spots Abuza. Dashi! Back down. Back down, but he does. He backs down, lays down. Bruce goes for the push and gets dropped. Abuza there. Probably is terrified in an inch of his life, but he makes the play, goes prone, and gets the kill. What the hell was Ooh, that first shot? I have no idea. That was just four beamers to the face of. Like, that's one where I'm like, I hope he's weak, but like we know he wasn't. No, so we know he's not. <laughs> <laughs> and those are those kills that Dashi gets sometimes that don't make sense, bro. Like nobody else does it. Yikes. He doesn't win the round, but. It looked good. He made me feel a little. Mm, See what Surge opted to do here on their attack. Over to Hook. Has not found any success in this position. RC's 0-4, still trying to find a kill. Abusa, right off the 1v1 clutch. Into the first blood for this round. RC's yet to get unlocked. He's at 0-4. Thought the nade was going to blow up, but Kenny able to stay alive. Almost that first for Alec, but not quite coming through. But we sit at 2 2, and we'll see what they can do behind the 4v3, Joe. Yeah, who's just playing patiently. Wants to make sure no one's going to overpeak. Find anything on this flank, but the gamble from here for, from Opti might pay off. You have Shotzi and Pred inside the plane. You have Kenny watching that flank. Here we go. What are they going to be able to find? Goes for the ladder peak. Are they going to check for Pred? Guess what? I have a friend. Oh, oh, but he oh. drops down. I don't think that's what he meant to do. No, Hook, 1 HP, has to dodge an 8, 15 seconds. Surge has to plant. They have to go for a plant here soon. Abuza is popping off. Not quite the ace, but he's going to get three in the round now. Shotzi, I'm the pilot now. No, he's got to be inside the plane for that. You don't fly the plane from outside the plane? No. Okay. He's not the pilot right that now. May, that makes sense from a safety standpoint, Joe. <laughs> But it starts with Abuza finding that first blood and then getting two more. Yeah. I mean, I love the play there from Opti to set that up. It's just a little bit unfortunate. Pred drops on down. I think, and even for Illy, like, I think he's like four and three right now, but he's still leading the lobby in damage, too. He's like 1,250. Like, he's shooting. He's putting in shots. Abuza's getting a lot of those kills. RC's only has one, but, like, Illy has been doing damage to this team. He's been so good in search. And we continue on. 3-2 now for search. You got to win this one if you're Seattle. If not, <laughs> Optic poised to run away and make this a very fast series. Darcy's can he get the opener? Absolutely not. 
three headshots yeah, on the yeah. map right now. And Illy, Abuza, no, they're going to have to reposition. They've been great in these scenarios. Abuza, seven and three, looking for a 1v2. It's similar to when we were talking about Dash, like, can he get a fight and get this to a one versus one? Dash is continuing to jump back and forth, spot for info. Bomb planted now. Abuza, it gets even harder. Gotta find the fill, kills, find the defuse, get tagged up through the window. The double chow is in. Good luck with that one. Good job there from Fred and Dashy. Good position. They'll take the round, tie us up. Yeah, much needed offensive round one there for Opti. Don't want to go down two rounds, but again, just the start. It's that duo. It is Hook and RC's playing side. So far, this game not going their way. It's just. It can feel like such a, I mean, obviously gameplay is better with Cobra Sneakers and Deddy in the game, but sometimes like little skirmishes like that, they're just such like, <laughs> it's just a timing thing, man. Oh well, yeah, like, three headshots, everybody just got melted. Yeah. <laughs> or that, yeah. Welcome to, yeah, Fry Airlines, bro. <laughs> Heads Look at are this. popping like Look clones. at this, Fred getting aggressive. We have not seen that push and he just, Wanders up mid hallway, goes in a book, finds a first kill, and Arceus is gonna, he's sitting at one and six. Yeah, he's got time to read. Hook, trying so bad to get an impact in this one. He's got a teammate to work with here. Yeah, yeah, this is where they were so good, down a man. But this time they have just been shut down on the map. Hook is able to find one, but look at this. You have all the green arrow, arrows here. Pred, able to take him down. So one on three for Abuza. Yeah, bomb in a great spot. Good luck. And they're just kind of hunted like a wolf pack right now. You spot one. Great shots there for Abuza. Update in four. He's thinking they're playing though, and they are just not. They are top three. There come the team shots in. He is still alive. 20 seconds to go. Well, I thought they thought they had bomb down. They're just going to group up around that. But yeah, they all reposition. You're hit to 51 now. You're updating four. They know where they have him isolated. How do you even think about getting this one planted once again? It's Abuza and Blaine. Now down to one versus one. The reads there, but the snap and the centering. He can't get there as the slide comes in underneath from the slide push. Abuza nearly another play. It's just you get underneath him there if you are Pred. Pride now up to eight and three. Yeah, and he's just winning some key 1v1s. I oh, mean, yeah. he, he took over in map one, but on this map so far, having that rival in that scenario, finding those trades on yeah. the hook in the last round and then in that big one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, if he doesn't have the rival, I mean, maybe you have a time to recenter, sort of yep. like an MCW on MCW or like a melee comes in, but like you just, unless you're perfect there with the MCW or you get some crazy hip fire, you're screwed. Fred the man on your screen as he's eight and three. I don't know this spot that Hoot likes to play and it's just gonna be RC's. This might be an early retake here for Seattle Surge. Stun gonna go down, kind of slow everything through and there's the wall banks. RC's has to be careful though. They could just drop down. We know shots, he can be that creative player to do so. It looks like Elite looking over him for now. He likes to be creative, that's for sure. For now, just going to back it up, play a little more standard, work to get this bomb planted. RCG has been struggling in this one, going to be a key player. Some tags in, Shotzi. Real weak, and the wall bank comes in again. I mean, it was with the stun from RCG that set the first wall bank. Damage through from RCG this time to set the wall bank. Maybe not a lot of kills with this one, but he's making some plays. But Bruce, not out of it yet. They're on it, though. Is he going to be able to get there and even check it in time? The answer is going to be no. That's going to go through while the one fight is going down round to Seattle to bring us to 4-4. And that's just, they give them up playing, but it's Illy with the wall bangs. The team yeah. shot comes through. He finds the first and then right there on the shots. See, after the bomb is planted, RC gets, RC gets some shots in and then Illy's just got the lineups. Yeah, I mean, RC's a one and seven, but still a key player in that round. Staying alive as long as he did. He hit the stun on the maybe two, three players in their first pushing. Just getting the comms in to kind of set up Illy to hit those wall bangs. Listen, one and seven is not good, but like <laughs> you had some moments there and Abuza continues to fry as he gets up to 11. Pred though, in the mix as well. Shotzi, so then fast. through the cut. Pred trying to get away with his life, up the double digits as well. Arshi's able to answer to get his second in the round. Now two versus two. 
Lots of time left in the round. I mean, just what a quick route here from Shotzi and Prey to help their teammates out. It looked like Surge was going to run away with B control. Instead, they had all the help in the world. So you're into a two on two. These little skirmishes can be so fun. Shotzi, Pred, Illy, and Alec. I mean, they're pretty much just giving up this bomb plan for now. You see both teams don't want to give up a big bomb going down. So it'd be on Shotzi and Pred to retake. Trying to reposition. Oh, the old twisted. <laughs> Your favorite game. Huh? Smoke out. Now they work forward. Pred, just through the window. Trying to get any kind of eyes and info. RC's with the first. Pred trying to trade. Just able to get down. One versus one. 20 seconds to go. Illy. You'd probably have to have a blunder here for this one to not go your way, but you're worried he's going to hop it and shallot, and you're just going to tease it. Just putting some shots, playing with your food. Yeah, but he's on it. He's almost done with it, but he's got the angles, and he finds it. Well played for Millie. Well played for Millie, as you said, just spotting that defuse with where that bomb is planning in our cities. Able to find the first pick in the two-on-two. -two. <laughs> he's, he's kept shooting like a shot here and there, just trying to make Fred nervous. Well, yeah, you know, he jumps up. Pred's like, I got to hop off this bomb. Playing that clock. He had a shot. 5-4. One more round now needed for Surge. Abuza, 11-7 in this one. Pred going toe for toe with him at 11-5. Can we get this to a round 11 if we are optic? Well, they're looking like they want to hit A, and it's looking like nobody's home, but Seattle Surge. Thinking about getting aggressive early, but it is a full-on B stack for Surge. Yeah, I mean, you, you pretty much did this last time, right? Just gave up the A bomb. You had one player towards the back ladder, but look at this, the repositioning from Hook. So he's going to get put into a spot, and they're just going to trust the team shot to find a kill. Ailey's like, don't worry, guys. Let me get shots in the play, and I'll take them all out. I have all the lineup spots is Hook. Watching this cross and able to find that one-on-one. -on -one. Those gunfights have not gone his way throughout this map, but maybe here to tie up this series gives him the advantage in round number 10. Hey, you're right. Like He hasn't had a lot of moments to shine over here. There, though, does it, but the bomb plan comes in. You got to work this in a 4v3. It's still going to be difficult to do. Still have trophy up inside for coverage if you are opting. That one goes to a trophy. Kenny gets a pick. And they got to focus on Dashi as well, but Kenny finds a second in the round. Now the reposition, the 4v3 into the two on two. Crossfires there, wow! A win there from Arsenis, my god, now to Shotzi. How much time there? 15 He's play seconds, time. they're pre-fired. He's able to get the kill, he eats the second. He's gonna get dropped, time for the defuse. It's a five streak for Illy to close it out. We're tied up now at 1-1. I mean, that is just Shotzi just worried. They're, they, they were shooting through everything towards the end of that round. In every single SD scenario that Illy has been put into, he is winning. Yeah, All I thought Shotzi was going to get one and try to get out, but it's so tough, like, with that angle there. Like, no, there's no way. Yeah, you just can't. So he, he goes for both know kills. on the bomb, right? So yeah. we just yeah. wall No, 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 100%. But Surge, they are just sticking with their guns winning this SD. So far, both teams have done, you know, kind of what you expect them to be able to. You come in, you win the hard point, you win your pick if you are optic for that map one. You answer back where Terminal has been your bread and butter. If you are Seattle Surge, you tie us up at 1-1. And now we get ready for a control. And this is one where you played Ravens really, really tough here. If you were Seattle Surge, you had some really good moments on defense, not so much on the offensive end of things. We look forward to the invasion, but... For search, just a little bit too icy right now. If you're Seattle, they continue to make it work. And when you can win these searches like they have been at the clip they have, you can shock people. You no, can. You not, can really again, shock people. This is an invasion control. Optic has not played in a match. Zero in zero. And as you said, they got it to a round five defense. Can they clutch up this time through? Yeah, and Royal Ravens a little bit different than Optic. 100%. It's hard to compare the two teams. But listen, you, you got a rep today. So you have a chance to do it. But we're tied up 1 1. We're getting ready to go to a map three. Before we get there, Quick break, don't go anywhere. Tweet your friends, family, loved ones, maybe your pets. Get ready to go. Break time. We love you. We'll see you shortly for the control.
Start the season strong with the Call of Duty League Pack. Grab yourself the CDL Operator, Weapon Blueprint, and so much more. Check out the Call of Duty store in-game now. The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Monster Energy, the official energy drink of the CDL. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, Boston. We love you. We're hoping you're having a blast in the venue and at home. It's Major One here for the Call of Duty League 2024 season, and we are ready for Map 3. It's a big one. Two squads battling to make it deeper in this tournament through the loser's bracket. 1-1. One, one. Search. Optic. Bang. Yeah, I was kind of heating up there, huh? Yeah, you were, you were, you were in your, <laughs> your flow, dude. You were dancing in the break. Yeah, no, dude, the music got me going in here. Yeah, your moves are impeccable. They yeah, really no, are. really, I, I, I'm very nimble. <laughs> you are an athlete. Yeah. Really are. But yeah, I mean, all tied up here, as you said, 
And then uh, Invasion Control, we saw Surge earlier on it today. They do lose in a round five, but Optic zero and zero on the year. Which is crazy, <laughs> like, you don't expect to see that maybe in a series like this against Surge, but that's going to be the call. And now what will we see from Optic? I mean, it seems like a map like they should be good at. <laughs> you know, like it's kind of like your more standard control map. But away we go, 1-1. One, one. It'll be offense in the opener here for Seattle Surge. And I'll tell you what, that one, that man right there in the kill feed, Abuza with two. Throughout map two, he was really getting going for the Surge team. He was slamming them. Yeah, no, he was winning his one, sometimes two, sometimes three in the round. He was unbelievable. He gets a 2-0 start here. He's still shooting. Like, that's right onto Pred's forehead. Pred just up to the challenge. Yeah, Pred has just been so consistent for this team throughout this series. He likes to deal with these players. He continues. Able to take down Abuza a couple of times. Who's trying to find anything with that rival? And now you can see all map control over to Optic after a nice start there for Surge, but immediately this flips on its head. Yeah, you start to farm him a little bit now. You keep pushing up. You keep taking space here defensively to try and keep them on the back foot. And you keep going three for one in the kill feed as of late. Pred on four in a row, maybe working towards the streak. I curse them there as the Simtex come in and Illy takes him out almost immediately. But you've only got 35 seconds left in this round, Joseph DeLuca. And that's what I mean. I mean, honestly, Surge in this scenario, they should not be getting pinned this way. You're so early into the game, you don't really have trophy systems set up in this power positions for optics. So finally, the nades start to connect and now they're able to get on a beat. Uh, one A Street will get cut down. Those Pred, though, will be able to tally in his fifth. He got two on the point, starting to progress this. 22 seconds to go. Dashy jumps himself out of that fight. Almost. He, like, gets his centering right above him and ends up dropping. But still a good presence here from Surge. Should have the minute extension as Illy and RC start to go. Well, Illy and RC, yeah, they're going get, to get this B point. I think that one Surge fan in the venue is hearing it right now. Something like that, yeah. As you're gonna see Surge now, what on maybe, seven? Maybe Rambo Ray is trying to crowd surf. Yeah, seven in a row here for the Seattle Surge team, and they're just gonna get onto the same point. No trophies, but so much map control. Zilly's just gonna find a free two, and now you have a chance here to win oh this first my. round. How has this turned on its head? Five in a row for Illy. Six life advantage. The transition, a thing of beauty. Hoop trying to stay up. Second bit of progress is done. Pred able to win that now. Three flying forward. Still two inside to try and hold this. And you've got a trophy for covered. Pistol out, Willie. It's seven in a row. Number eight nearly. But Dash able to take him out just barely. As there's about an inch left on that one. Now we slow down. Now we take a breath here for a moment. Seven lives for Optic. Eight for Seattle. You regain if you're optic. Yeah, you saw that uh, POV from Hook. That's attack stance. Right there. It doesn't connect onto him. But yeah, as you said, 40 seconds remaining. You were <laughs> what a, so what a cool mechanic. You were so close to winning that round. Just that one pick. If you had two players on it, the round's probably done. Now what does this turn into? 25 seconds left, trying to be back and forth. Adios. And Dashi winning big gunfights. Potentially put Optic up 1-0. There's some sort of war going on with the fans right now. There's a battle, Joe. Like, we're battling here in the game, but there's a battle going on in the venue as well. It's getting freaky. It's getting late. We're deep into our Saturday. We still got another match after this. But Optic, they hold on. It looked like Surge found an opening to win the rounds. But at least you get five ticks done if you are Surge. So I'm trying to follow multiple storylines right now. <laughs> but that, that ends up being a way crazier round than you expect after the opening. Like, Optic have them locked down, complete control. Things get flipped on its head. Nearly, nearly a haymaker in the round one thrown from Seattle Surge in an opening offense. But Optic, the answer, they show the poise. You get, you get 2,000 damage from Illy in round one. That's impressive stuff on offense, 11 and seven. I mean, he almost goes crazy on that eight point. I mean, he oh, does yeah. go crazy. Yeah. What was seven in a row he had, eight in a row? Like, sheesh. Yeah, he almost wins that round himself. But he's gonna have a cruise to work with later on. Fred with that first blood. It looks like Optic, they're gonna opt to try to go through A. One, one more player through Mannequin with Dashy on a street. Can you at least get a player in that spot? Nice shots 
in from Kenny, but it's Illy locking down the middle of the map. Yeah, no, Illy is uh, not really missing right now. Abu's able to clear Dashi off of that A point. And you think like what would almost happen that round one, maybe just a product of you really haven't played in official matches if you're off of Texas. Yeah, I mean, maybe you some openings, right? Yeah. I feel like that could happen, right? Just a little mistake here and there. Yeah, matches do play, tend to play a little bit differently, a little bit slower. 100%. Surge almost catch him, but over to B. It goes Optic, a nice setup here. Oh. How does Surge want to go for this? You have Pred in the base of Optic, locking this down, but Illy just continues yeah. to win some insane one-on-ones. I was going to call Kenny the Slate God, and he has got zapped. <laughs> 15 and 9. Illy leading the lobby by a wide, wide margin. Is Optic still just trying to get this minute extension? You're fine, the lives department stayed about even. Illy continues to find kills. Dashy getting back into it, two in a row. The read's there, maybe for the third. Abuza just gets the pick and he'll back it up. Dashy will soak up the objective, try to get this time. Now, what do you do if you are Seattle? You know, we saw in their match versus Ravens, sometimes they'll take an extra gamble at this B point, it can cost you. Yeah, no, they're gonna go for it again. You already have two dead. They're gonna contest it, try to play around the time. They found a couple of picks. That meant, you know, green light, let's go for this. Arsides. The defensive spawn. He's sorry, ready for P5? Spawns. Ready he's, for P5? He's ready, yeah. He's ready for the spawn kills is what he's ready for. To lock this down, only finds one, though. Yeah, I think I think there you're just like, you get your one, ow, you're shooting two, you're thinking about three, and just doesn't finish it. But this is what we were kind of talking about. You send a few extra players over towards B. Now, kind of softens up this defense middle of the map. So Optic do have some map position. They got to find a couple of ticks on A. Serves going to have the advantage for round five. 11 lives remaining now for Optic. Elite playing from the deep truck. His teammates stepping up the RCs and Abuza through on the feed. One guy still lurking, kind of the point man right now will be Pred, waiting for his team to get back into it. You still have some time. You got 50 seconds. You can develop another push, but you're going to need to be close to perfection. There's a start. Kenny and Pred. Two are going to drop. You got a chance to go. Hook. Trying to hold your mid-nap, not going to happen. He's going to drop Abuza, they're going to pounce Abuza. That's he gets Rihanna, a second Rihanna, there, Rihanna, how big it can be. Stacked in as he goes to use the iPad, a core explodes. You're inside, progress is going. Second bit is done, third nearly there. Abuza trying to get there, you are not fast enough. Round to Optic. That looks so awkward with the streaks. He's thinking streaked and boom. Well, no, he, I think he pulls out the wrong streak is what happened. Oh, 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 I didn't realize. Yeah, he pulls out the wrong streak, and uh, then he's got to put it away, try to switch it, and while that's going on, he blows up that, to a that car. That makes sense, yeah. That, it looked so awkward. It, but even before that, just they had nobody pushed up A Street, right? So what happens is you have Illy just trying to lock this down over towards A Search with one player kind of helping him out, but he gets picked. You had the player from Opti back door is able to find another one. And you saw what the last two players from Surge were kind of doing. They were just camping corners, trying to find picks. They find nothing. Now Surge Ooh. is desperation time. But Kenny shuts that down over towards A. That's one way to get it done. A slate Lord Kenny, five in a row. Optic fans roaring, the gun's getting hot. Pred is hunting. Maybe you get another streak. Into this game, if Kenny able to get another kill. The snap, not quite there. Arsys puts him down. Shotzi wiggling like a worm. He's going to get locked down as well. On the other side of the map, you're going to have Hoof is able to win a one-on-one, -on -one, then get on to the A point. So Optic off at spawn, you're going to have to deal Sheesh. with him. So what does that mean? His teammates can work back over towards B. So you should at least get a majority of B done here as Hoof just trying to do what he can, be the one-man hero over towards A. 100%. Oh, a few people on, so it's... It's moving, but now nearly second point. Pred just taking a gander. His, he gets a kill quickly and then gets picked. Dash, he gets the angle in from second story deep. So that clears them out of the point for now. Waste some time off the clock. That eight point has not been cleared for that first bit of progress. Not quite done, but it's quite close. They opted. They're just trying to win this game right here. They're trying oh, to yeah, 3-0 yeah. them before they get beat. 30 seconds to go. RC's. The only man forward for Seattle Surge. One player spawning or fighting in the spawn of Surge. And Illy, he's going to have to use his cruise missile maybe to find something. Does connect onto Kenny. Pred is still here. 
We're gonna have Dashi with the crossfire. 15 second surge, what, seven in a row? Looking for eight control losses in a row if they do not clutch up in this moment. Yeah, you're setting records, not the right kind, unfortunately. If you are Seattle Optic, chance to close it. Kenny, hit easy up to 17. Clock will stop at 8.1. You've got one player across on the point. That'll be Illy. Looking to hunt him down. Able to do that quickly and efficiently. Three through on the feed as well. Five seconds to go. The cutoffs through mid trying to get here to B. Make sure they cannot get there in time, and that will do it. It's a map three victory for Optic. The control woes continue for Seattle. And I mean, how differently that map might have gone if, depending on that round one. Yeah, I mean, round one and then I mean, even, even the round two. Like, again, true, they go true. for that play. True. Optic gamble over towards B. And two players off a small well, surge gamble, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Into a, a bit of a spot on round two, and yeah, they don't get into that setup. Yeah, that's that's. I mean, that's been one of those things we've had a conversation with with control ever since it came into the league. Yep. Just sort of like those those late gambles onto the opening point. Like, is it worth it? Because it feels like if you clear them off, like yeah, you have a chance to maybe win the round without them getting the first point. But it feels like more often than not, like they eventually get the point. Well, and then right you there. can really get punished. Yeah, it's worth it right there. Opti did it. So, I mean, when, it, yeah. when the gamble pays yeah. off, yeah, it's yeah. great. You saw, you saw both sides of the gamble. You saw both sides of the gamble. But I think Opti just winning that offensive round, just finding all the kills, and then, I mean, with three players on it, goes up so quickly. A great team effort there for Opti. Dashy 20 and 12, 4,000 damage as well from Fred. But once again, sort of the narrative around Seattle, they're losing map ones, they're losing map threes, but they have clutched up the back-to-back -back series in maps four and five. Yes, Joe, they are a 2-4-5 team. 2-4-5, it's our first one we've ever had. 2-4-5, can they do it again? Or Optic close it out with another hard point. They were able to win both those hard points against FaZe, obviously, early in the year. The talk Optic, the best hard point team in the game. That maybe slipped a little bit with some of the success you had for FaZe and then for Ultra. But you know that this team, it's like, it's like if it has the green wall involved and Optic in front of it, they're going to be battling in hard point. No, 100%. It's all about this kind of momentum. And I think early on in this map where if you're Seattle Surge, you're spawning on the good side of Terminal, just taking advantage of this start if you are Optic, where Surge is going to have to break it. But again, this is a very strong map for Seattle Surge. Well, I think 3-0 for Optic, 3-1 for the Surge side. Yeah, I think there was some sort of war within the war, Joe. The fans were battling, and then I'm pretty sure one fan just got tossed out of the venue. I don't know, I've been trying to keep up. I feel like I'm gonna turn around watching Gossip Girl while I'm also trying to cast. It's been very intense. It has been intense. It's been intense in here. Yeah. <laughs> we appreciate your sideline reporting. Yeah, no, dude, it. listen. You're doing it all. Every time I look back, I'm like, what are they cheering about? I'm like, they're just like waving somebody out of the venue. I don't know what's going on. Very dramatic. I love it. I love it, man. It's one of the best things we've got for Call of Duty. I mean, our players, our fans, they are all awesome and special and insane. Look at them. Beautiful specimens. Yeah. But now we get ready for our next map. Oh. Oh, the Glizzy Goblins. Oh, my oh, goodness. Oh, 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 guys, good form, good form. Whoa. Whoa, that's, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's just from the hand warmers. Yeah, that is rated R material. Oh, it, it was just a hot dog. Yeah, this is a glizzy, oh, dude. I'm so sorry, Joe. Unbelievable. Focus <laughs> up. I'm trying. I was distracted by the, the war in the crowd. But you see Kenny here. Some passion coming through this man. We heard in listen-ins versus phase, especially in Hardpoint, keeping his team locked in, picking up spawns, maybe going over breaks. They don't want any cheese to happen. No the stinky side, cheese? No stinky cheese. On the other side, for Seattle, you know, if there's a player I'm looking at, it's got to be, I feel like Hook has really been neutralized throughout this match. Can he get going? You mean, like, I got security. Wait, no, guys spawn behind me security. You mean that kind of cheese? Yes. <laughs> well, it's just the break-offs, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't yeah. want to get flipped early on. But everyone dialing in for this map four. I can't tell, but Ilya at the end, he might be meditating. I hear a countdown. We're getting ready to load in. Terminal will be the map. Optic a chance to close out this series with a hard point. Seattle will look for the magic again. 
they knock out Boston, the host of the tournament. They knock out one of the crowd favorites in the Royal Ravens. They now look to do the same to Optic Texas, but they're in a hole they're all familiar with, trying to claw their way out of it. One illy fingernail at a time. Again, Spawny on the bad side, you see Dash. He didn't have the best hardpoint maps versus FaZe, but doesn't matter because you won both of them, right? So yeah. screw it. Stats don't mean everything, where his stats were solid in s and and control. If they get the best form of their optic team they've had, and he's got his worst stats, who cares? Who we'll, cares? We'll see. I mean, we're not there yet, obviously, but if he's able to, who cares? Yeah, one map away from getting the championship Sunday, securing top four. Yeah, I, I think with this team, if you're Optic, listen, you're not going to win every event, but you're looking for consistency, something you struggled to find recently. It's like, suck it, 11, suck it, 11. You just want to find consistency. It's what everyone strives for at this level. Maybe a chance here for Surge. Couple of players spawning out. Maybe they push on through. There's just going to be one player left. Optic do a very good job recovering there. It is behind Dashi with a double. So going to find the early 30 seconds. Now all eyes over to Kenny inside of P2. Here comes the pressure. Dashi still just hitting shots on the cross. Dashi now up to four before he drops. Shotzi accurate as ever as well as they begin to funnel this surge team through the security gauntlet. Yeah, here comes this push. They opt to go not through the front, but towards the back. You already didn't have the crossfire in. Who's able to find one, but there are the trades. All the headshots coming through with those MCWs. Illy with the double. This could be a massive break. But Kenny trying to hold on. He's going to have help from the front. I thought so at least, but maybe just the timing works their way there for our cities. Yeah, you'll be able to get in now with what, about 30 seconds left on the point. You oh, maintain the security side can. control yeah, the entire kill feed at times. <laughs> it's like when it rains, it pours with headshots. It's just everything on the feed. Can be unbelievable, the talent of these players and their ability. Just line up heads. Kenny. He's the pilot, but his shots, he get the kills. Like, I'm getting my health back, buddy. Good stuff. Yeah, Surge, though, do a very good job finding, what, 25, 30 seconds there at P2. So only down 20. This is what they did in map number one. They kept it very close. As I don't know how Kenny is alive, finally taken down and an opening here with two dead. It's like a giant target on his head. <laughs> he couldn't get back to full health. Just kept getting lined up. Dashy though, sliding out, challenge, time continuing going their way. So 40 seconds left to soak up on the hard point. Number two, already on the early rotation. That'll be Shotzi trying to find kills on the other end of it and set them up for a security side. Not quite able to do that, so he'll lose that one-on-one -on -one to Illy. So at least you maintain that side control if you're Surge, but right now it's all about Optic Texas and the hard point. Yeah, I mean, you had one chance there with, what, two dead, uh, four Optic Texas, the three-man push, but it got cut down by the players alive inside of the hill. But as you said, you found a good good amount of time at P2. Yeah. Now over towards Burger, you have the security spawns for the next two. You really need to have a nice sequence, though. Now, if you are Surge, if there is a break or if there is a blunder on the side of Surge, you have a chance to go down massively. You've got to step it up. Stand tall, win your ones. Like Illy was able to do, threw on the pinch. It's beautiful there from Hook. He's able to get eyes on basically everything else. Still one player to deal with, but he was tagged up on the cross, so Shotzi will get dropped. We're just watching that cross. You know he wants to take some shots at that trophy to deal with that, to help his teammate to Booza. He's got to dodge all of these nades. He cannot. Now on the hill is Arsenis. And maybe this is that chance optic we're looking for. On the pinch is Shotzi, but those close spawns come in. Oh, almost had the play there from for Optic. Instead, it surged still on the time. Security spawns can be sticky. <laughs> Can't quite get there in time. And that big lead you had, what, 80 or 90 points? You've chipped away at it. Now down to 30. We get ready for P5. Bookstore ready to go. Surge trying to rally. Surge desperately trying to get to this map five. To a listen in we go with Seattle Surge. I'm in your front. I'm in your front. Okay, okay, okay. On the one, bottom right, bottom right, yeah. Side yes. right? Shall we blow up on the back? Yeah, I got a couple of people. Bottom right, bottom right, we need to be Stop it, 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 stop I'm waiting, I'm waiting. I'm here. I'm waiting. 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 I'm wa
He did not have to hurt. Watch out, Nidin! I died on that. Yo, it's out there! Yo, Pio, 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 Yo, you got me. He's back to us. 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 He's I don't know where he's on time, bro. Uh, yeah, 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 you might have been outslayed about 20 to 2 during the course of that listen in. That was an Optic montage. I mean, they just put him in the trap again. Such a good job by Optic Bookstore to be able to push on through and then into that P1. That is where this 80 point lead is coming. You had a, a chance if you were Seattle Surge, but that chance just blew away. 81 point lead. Security spawns P2 about to pop. Optic fans know. Their team just popped off in that listening. A chance here to really secure this map four. Yeah, no, that was disgusting stuff. Now, can you rip back into this if you are surged behind maybe a P2 into a P3? Can you at least get yourself competitive? Because a break here, some time for optic, and things start going nuts. The wheels start coming off. Nice job there, reading the security spawn. If you are Dash, you're able to deal with that. There's one that keeps popping there. Dash, he keeps dealing with it. He's just been holding inside. Beautifully done there from Optic. Yeah, but you but can't get forward to the point. On the opposite end, I was going to say, you had a chance to break it, but it's two players for Surge. Able to hold on. Here comes Dash. They want to go for this time. The crossfire is set up. The reinforcements are there. And Optic fighting for the scrap time. They are going to get it. So a chance here to find the scrap time, close this game out at plane. Well, yeah, I think this is big now because you can't just think about the yep. rotation of your surge, right? You can't just play for that play and say, you have got to really get involved because you're 53 points away from victory and Kitty is going hard. Now P3 going to pop, Pred able to hit his shots on the cross. All the information is there. He sees everybody pop up secure lender and just trying to put them in the absolute blender. They're funneling through to P3, but you've got to do so many different things at once, basically, with your Seattle Surge right yeah, now. I'm watching these green arrows. Who's going to rotate over to Burger first? That is going to be out of And Shotzi lines them up, takes them all down, 30 seconds away for Optic to move on. A triple from Shotzi. Four in a row. Oh, no, you got to finish your meal, pal. Doesn't get the kill, then turned and burned. Five in a row for Shotzi as he makes the map his wonderland and finesses away. 11, no more seconds. He to close it out. Hey, I'm back, buddy. Sorry, just doing laps. Ah! The melee able to hit as well. 23 and 16 now for Kenny. Done. Five to go. It is done. Spotted out as Surge. We'll see you later. I saw a man's belly button. Oh, dude, we all have those. Joe, it's, uh, it is an impressive run from Seattle, considering some of the situations they were in coming into this. You break some GAs. You're not able to scrim. You get choke slammed by Ultra. You look to be out of this tournament. There is no positive body language at all. You win a couple series, some tough ones, and you make a run. But optics simply too good. Yeah, I mean, they were very much in that map four. Oh, yeah. They yeah. had a chance. Well, they were, to... and then they, they sure weren't. Yeah, and then you blinked. Uh, and then you had the top Eski trap at P1 and P2, and then there towards the end, set up at security was unreal for optic similar to, it's similar to map one like yeah it's like competitive and then optic hit another gear they get you locked up and the map disappears now you can see the slaying just so one-sided but optic behind their strong respawns carry them into championship sunday and yeah i mean for seattle search such a good search team but glaring weaknesses in respawn
And for Optic, I mean, you get the win there, but still some weaknesses in Search and Destroy. There are still some improvements yep. you're trying to find along those lines. But you get fired up, you make it to a Sunday, you get the W if you're Optic. Now we've got Fred on stage, and take it away, Blaze. Thank you so much, Murky Maven. Boston, show some love to Optic Gaming as they continue to go through this tournament. Optic Texas in the building. Fred, this is your, your first season with this squad. You're in the green and black. How does it feel to get this dub on the stage in this matchup against the Seattle Surge team? Uh, now, you know, they're, they're a good team, man. They're a really good S&D team. I feel like we've been playing really well on Hardpoint, man. Our Hardpoint has gotten really good recently. And, um, you know, they're a good team. That's my old organization. It's kind of weird playing against them. But, um, yeah, no, they're a good team, man. So we have there to play well. There you go. was a good matchup. And, you know, as you're talking about how, how great you guys have been playing at Hardpoint, we saw it there in the phase series. We saw it here. Why are you guys that, that, that fire at it? Tell me about how it is playing with this team. And also, talk to me about Karma Three Rings and what it's been like having that coach there with you guys. I mean, my teammates are just insane. I mean, they set me up all the time. I'm playing with one of the best players in the world. So all, my, all my players on my team are insane. And, you know, Damon, as a coach, I mean, I couldn't ask for a better coach. I mean, yeah. that guy's got three rings, man. So, three, four, shout out, Damon. Man. So, yeah, playing of, that, playing of those guys, I mean, I couldn't ask for more. There you go. Now, throughout this weekend, I think y'all have won over the hearts of this entire MGM Hall as everyone is on their feet. And it's looking like you guys may be the new home team here going forward. What do you want to tell these guys in the crowd, these guys and girls and everyone at home? I mean, there's nothing better than the Green Wall. I mean, and they know that, man. The Green Wall is un unguardable, man. You guys are the best, and uh, I hope you guys keep continuing to support us, man. Appreciate you guys, man. All right. That's going to do it for me and Fred on the stage. Chris, take us away. Thank you so much, Blaze. Congratulations. Optic Texas is playing on a championship Sunday, and they do it underneath the slaying power of Fred and the boys. Let's take a look at how this series went down. Alan, you and I called it. It was going to go to a game four. If it went to a game five, potential trouble. But you got it done in the respawn. Yeah, and it's really impressive because, like Fred said, now they're still perfect in hard point on the weekend across a variety of maps. But I have to give them a lot of credit on the invasion, coming out winning an offense on a map they had not played before. Obviously, we all kind of know that invasion control offensively is real tough to deal with, yep. but they really look pretty solid throughout it. So I think that's another map that they can add into the pool here. Absolutely. If anything, maybe it was that back pocket pick. You know, we were talking about maybe it was something they were keeping under wraps until this moment. And to come out with a 3-0 like that, I don't think it was anything short of a fluke. I'm sure that they came in with that game plan. Yeah, and now, you know, you speak to the map pool, right? They have invasion now in their bag. And now sub base, you think twice when you go into a series yeah. against them. And now maybe more comfortable as well on a map like Terminal, a map that they were they are now four in O on in in stage one. So they have a considerable amount of maps that they can play. And I want to show some extra love to Pret. Not only was he picking up the kills, the multi kills on that first map, on this map, making the plays. He pushes out into red, forces all of Seattle Surge to spawn bottom plane, and that is when they got that 70 to 80 points right. on P1 into P2. It was absolutely beautiful. And those are the types of plays you want to see him make. Everybody played so well throughout this. This is the potential. Of Optic Texas. They showed it to us when their tournament was on the line. We get another sample of it tomorrow. But the question is, who will they be playing? We've got one more matchup to go tonight. That'll be LAG versus Minnesota. Before we get to that, though, can we all just enjoy this play of the game? It's Preds 40 bomb. Just get them off. A montage. Do we get all 40? Can we get some music <laughs> in the background for it? Da, 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 da. <laughs> The coffin dance. Yeah, he also had 7.1k damage and he was just making massive influential plays. Like one, like you want to keep them spawning back tunnel basically the entire game. He was left side picking up kills. You saw him also on the cross to P5, farming, picking up twos and threes and getting away with his life. Everything you need to see was great. And honestly, Kenny had a great map too. He had 6,500 yeah, yep. damage. It was just overshadowed by this monstrous performance. And I think the cool thing about both, not just the series from before, but this and having two maps is that Pred's getting done with the MCW. So it's not in a form that we're usually used to seeing him where he's just running around and gunning with a sub. The fact that he could kind of control his own pace, work alongside his ARs, and be a third MCW for this team has been beautiful for him. Can we take a moment, though, and uh, show some love to Seattle Surge? I think they definitely overperformed, at least for my expectations. <laughs> Italy was crack shot throughout that entire matchup. Was. And the team has potential if they can figure out their response. What change do you need to see from this team? Uh, 
Dallas Seattle Surge, obviously, in their response, need to be a little bit more solid. They go against Optic Texas, one of the better respawn teams, you know, and maybe, you know, some of the new looks, some new angles, some would say, on some of these maps, maybe, maybe keep them out. All right. GAs, I know what you're talking about. All right, let's take a look here at the bracket where we're at. Just two teams remain unbeaten at the top. That, of course, is Atlanta and Toronto, which will happen in our winner bracket final tomorrow. Everyone else trying to make it through elimination. Optic just survives Surge. Now we go to Rocker versus Gorillas. It's elimination. Round three, Boston makes some noise. CDL, day three, live from Fenway. Start the season strong with the Call of Duty League Pack. Grab yourself the CDL Operator, Weapon Blueprint, and so much more. Check out the Call of Duty store in-game now.
pushed on up. You have three players off the spawn. Maybe a chance here. Accuracy. The back. Linz is ripping Boston apart. Boston to close this lead. And Linz is going to just continue to push space for this Awoba Bob's team. Wow. Oh! Maybe oh. 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 comes straight through as well. Awakening versus the world, and he's coming up with a dub. And if you can transition this to New Hill, Awakening is trying to put in absolute work. Slashes up there. The battle for top four, Minnesota Rocker. Ready to take on their opponents, LAG tonight. Welcome back, everybody. Chris Puckett alongside Mr. Joey D here at the desk. We've got Alley Cat. We've got Nameless, as always. And the final match here on our Super Saturday, Merc. I mean, who would expect this for a top four? I, I mean, if you got this bracket, you're picking them, send it to me, because I got to <laughs> see this. But, I mean, uh, props to both of them. Obviously, LAG getting better and better. Well, really, they started off the year pretty solid, then kind of regressed. But now they're, they're back in form a bit with some close matches where Rocker, they're on a hot streak. It's just they ran into Toronto Ultra, who may yeah. be the hottest team in the CDL. Let's talk about this Rocker squad. They've won some game fives. They've had some 3 O's, And one of those 3 O's came over the subliners to start the weekend, Allie. Yeah, and one of the most shocking ways, right, to send them down and lose our world champs that early in the weekend. And honestly, when it comes to Minnesota Rocker, this is a team that has nothing to lose, right? The expectations were already pretty much on the floor when it came to them, and they've shocked us all. And unfortunately, they do fall to Toronto, but it was a really close map number one. That was a 250 to 224. Unfortunately, Vivid had a little bit of a slow start. So when it comes to the Monster Energy pregame, I'm assuming it's something about a bounce back. Beat LEG 3 on qualifiers, and they're 12 and 5 in map count in the last five series. So realistically, they should be feeling comfortable in this matchup. And some big points on the line here as well, Amp. Absolutely, some big points. And also, they know that they can make a run in this tournament. They've been playing well. Joe said it. They ran into a hot Toronto Ultra where that map won. They make a different decision at the end there. They win that map. You can see in our Monster Energy pregame, it says Linz continues to step up. But we need Vivid to bounce back after that last series, man. It, it, he had a really rough map number one. Right. The rest of his team was playing incredibly well, and he knows it. He's a guy who can go out there and get it done. He's led the league in accuracy for what feels like the last four know, years in a row. Keep your eyes on Vivid and Rocker. On the other side, we've got another purple squad. They come into this tournament with the eighth seed, and LA G is not going away. They were able to take down the Thieves 3-1 on elimination round one. Then they went to the game five. They reverse swept this Vegas squad. Ali, you and I saw Assault in the venue. He was hanging out with the Challengers players at 12. It is now going on 8 p.m. here on the East Coast. Sheesh. Yeah, I hope he didn't have any caffeine before then. <laughs> but, I mean, they've been feeling really good on land so far. The fact they're coming off of a reverse sweep should make them feel very confident in their ability to stay in the series no matter when it comes down to the line, Ann. Yeah, I mean, for the Mount Energy pregame, great early, but can't finish first in attacking opening duels. But what's crazy about that is they were last in attacking and search and destroy in general, right? So they've had struggles converting those into round wins. But what we saw on Terminal in that game five versus Las Vegas is they figured it out. It was fame, getting those first bloods and then converting it into wins, playing more as a team. So for LAG, that's really what it's been the entire stage. Can they figure out their SD? And seemingly here in the lower bracket, they have. The question is, what maps are they going to be playing on? Minnesota, LA Gorillas, final battle here in elimination round three. The fight for top four includes Karachi, Invasion, Invasion, Skid Row for the second hard point, and Terminal if we need to get there. So let's jump right into it with our predictions. I'm going to lead us off and go ahead and kick this one with a 3-1 LAG. Go to LAG. I'm going to go Rocker here. I expect a big bounce back here in map number one on Karachi from Vivid. I'm going Rocker. Going Rocker. This is a tough one for me. After that first Monster Energy pregame, I started second-guessing myself, but I'm going to stick with it. I think it's going to be the LA Gorillas. Gorillas. We got a split desk. I'm going with the Minnesota Rocker. They've looked so good in this tournament so far. Chat, let us know where you land right now as we kick off the final battle with Guy Blaze. Yep, I got the shot. All right, Boston, our last matchup of the day. It's time to get this one going. Coming to the stage first, looking to make history yet again. Give it up for the Los Angeles Gorillas. We got Diamond Con, Astro, Fame, and Assault. The Gorillas looking to do it again. They're trying to make an epic loser's bracket run. They had a 
reverse sweep in their last series, and everybody's looking good on the squad. But Fame has been the guy to highlight in these search and destroys. He has been going off. Let's see if he can continue. Let's bring out their opposition. All right, we'll see if he can get it done. This next team is going to have to ice up on the main stage yet again. Show some love to the Minnesota Rocker. We got Vivid, Awakening, Accuracy, and Lens. Minnesota Rocker ready to rock the stage. Neither of these teams, I think, any of us had them possibly making it into Sunday. And now it is the battle of purple for top four. Minnesota Rocker, they have veterans on this squad with a single rookie looking to blaze a trail. It is the final match of Major One on Saturday. Blaze, let's go. Let's go. I know about blazing trails and I think he could do it, but let's find out. Miles Chance, let's get it going. Let's get it going indeed. The crowd's hands are hot. The stage is ready to rock and roll. We've got ourselves a very, very interesting series. Another battle of the purple teams, Chops. I mean, look, we're going to live for him. By the way, the camera guy putting in some serious work on the man stage. Got the dynamic shots with Blaze. Things are going sweet. And Adam is saw already getting to work. He's really uh, getting to work already. It's going to be a long night, guys. I uh, hope you're well prepared. But a lot of fun. The crowd's ready to go. Everyone who stuck around, thank you very much. A great day at Pool of Duty. Quite a long one. We're not quite finished just yet. Last match of the day. Very excited. Oh, my God. We're not even hiding it anymore, are we? No, we are uh, absolutely leaning in. Those are the hot hands of fame. He has been the guy in the mix, especially on these Invasion SNDs. We're going to have it for the map, too. It has been the bread and butter for this squad. And the camera guy is going to butter us up a little bit as well. Eye contact for the camera. The mini games we like to play. Mini games indeed. Well, we've seen the uh, the maps and modes going through this one. The crowd is ready to rock and roll. Both teams are fluffed and ready for action. We're going to get ourselves into this opening hard point and start proceedings immediately. This is an elimination matchup. This team that loses the series will be going home. We start tonight's proceedings on Karachi. And this is going to be a very hard map as well for both of these teams. This is actually the first time we're going to see Minnesota Rocker on this map. But we do know that Linz has been Mr. Consistent for this squad. The young rookie coming in and even on land has been performing extraordinarily well. And of course, that's the SMG's. Big Wake has also finally arrived. This guy has been a lanimal. He has exceeded expectations. He has addressed the allegations. And he has been the absolute slayer for the squad be on the lookout for him but of course on the flip side for lag menaces across the map p1 here we go the first hard point here on karachi a very fun one indeed this little rubble in the center of the map is value unknown but right now all these boys are fighting over it so far lynn's gonna find those kills assault at range there and i'll be back and forth perfect Symmetry in the feed. And right now, the lead to Rocker. Lens has found his home, though. He's pre aiming this as well. So, ready for the gunfight. Wrong gun for the job. Diamond Comp from the top rope has been a shooter consistently this year and has moseyed his way in towards the hill. LAG collecting some time and maybe dabbling with that rotation. Fame going to play with his food if he can get it. But you see the setup towards New is going to be under control. So, you want the P1 time. Line into action. Gets himself a sweet two. Still keeping eyes on that top left hand side of the minimap. He's going to have to contend with nice Lens. Shot. Does more than contend. And he puts him down. Absolutely clean, but ends up getting traded out for LAG. It is only the flank with the potential to come in and try to get this time on the roto. Diamond Con should have a freebie. Important kill to get. Awakening going to fall. Now you're maybe working your way towards the hill. Intel on Vivid. They got to hunt him down. Uh, doing what they can. You know, the rattle of gunfire across the Karachi now. Hard points open. Rocker in. Diamond Con trying to find the entry. Oh, he's got so close. Let's the gun rip. Is he going to catch the spawners? No, nope. Awakening's there. Kill's all good. You've still got a bit of a contest, though, on the inside. Assault managed to get involved. Oh, it's a hiding game as well. Oh, no. Might have had this spot and able to drop a mind games being played there by Adam Assault. And that would be a little bit of time for LAG. Swinging around the back is fame. And now thinking about the rotation is everybody else. But that is 30 seconds of not scrap, but fantastic time Whoa. for the Gorillas. And on the rotation, guys like Estriel all ready towards the back. Towards the back, right-hand side of the minimap. That's where we go now. Estriel, the first man there. Here come Rocker, though. Those white arrows through the middle of the map. They've found Estriel. They're going to try to bring him down. Awakening posted up. The rest of the boys will make their way in. You've got, uh, was that Vivid on the other side of the map? Slowing down reinforcements as well. So that hard point 
It should very much be Rockers now. That's a massive kill from Awakening 2, just to even the odds. Sliding in with the MC. W oh, and Fame yeah. and Diamond yeah. Con working together on the flip side. It is a 50-50 split. Nobody able to get these back spawns just yet. Awakening trying to back them down. You see the reinforcements are there, but the kills are not. LAG ready to pounce. LAG flying forward. Left side all safe. Right hand side though from Junk. Last man up. Estriel trying to find his way in. Easy. Top of the parasol catches more than a bit of sun there as Awakening gets his third in a row. Hey, weird spawns though coming through. Three players from LAG going through Junkyard and well, number two fame spawn Chicken Coop. Awkward timing on the flip side, but now Awakening, he's going to be feeling the pressure. Pressure. Makes diamonds. Whoa, that's strafe there. Fame and Estriel get their respective kills, and that is going to be a hard point in the hands of LAG. A pull through 15 seconds for now, but you'll take it. Trying to take the lead back and run the score up. Take the break, keep it maintained, and now going towards new. You see the idea coming in for this Minnesota Rocker squad. Leave your ARs up top. Leave a player down low. Play for the air and kills. Assault, though, just took a deep route to sniff out Awakening, so a couple of those extra players for Rocker are going to fall in Linz. You can see, feeling the pressure, head on a swivel. Bang, Linz takes care of business on the hard point. Next up, accuracy helps out. Close the door, there's a draft. Now time going the way of Rocker. So polite too, and you're going to be reading those back spawns coming through. Linz is the pop-off guy for the team, collecting the time, and I mean, just ready for the gunfight. He's able to be L-triggered, and he does not lose those. Second man coming through. Woo! Diamond Con wins it up close. Teamwork now getting involved downstairs. Estriel in the feed gets two. Accuracy from up high. Gets himself one. Will Estriel throw himself into this fight? Well, I managed to get awakened. Good stuff from him. Nobody in the point for now. It's an open field. Yeah, these teams have really slowed the pace down. And for the final 20 seconds, doesn't even win it with the pre-aim. Estriel, a little bit of a hot hand there. He goes on a four spree to get that scrap time. Back and forth game for the moment. Over towards that rotation, though. LAG are going to be there first. Awakening, six and eight for the moment. This has been the menace, the slayer. Looking to break it down. And this spot does right. not work. Vivid sniffs it out immediately. Might have sniffed a little bit more than just fame there. His teammates are everywhere. All the members of LAG get shot in the back. Vivid now in control. Estriel finds himself in a five. Assault gets taken care of. Vivid keeps it going. Three in a row, and there's another one through the same window. He's still moving. He's managed to shake off the nade back into the hard point. Uh, he's just still in a run. The ring around the rose, he's on point, but the SMG is running the show around that hill, and LAG eventually there to break it down. Estriel and Fame having a field day thus far on the map. Admittedly, very small lead, but comfortable in the time right now. Trophy's got you protected. Just straight up gunny around the point, and the L trigger wins out every time. 12 and 8 for Estriel, his first major land. With the Los Angeles Gorillas, and so far, so good. They have managed to turn some heads. That's three clean down in the feed. And you're looking at another P1 now. Good stuff. As the first set of hard points come to a close, LAG with the lead. And LAG also almost have like four corners around this hill. Players on bridge, Diamond Con, Tom Fountain, and a guy top third. So every power position Woo! covered Diamond Con for two. He gets traded out, and that might be every single player falling. Assault last man standing. Number two fame for whatever reason, though. Going to spawn behind a few players, so there's a 3 beat. <laughs> Kill for him, MCW in hand. Lovely patient play, catches MCW before it touches the ground. All players everywhere. Close left. Slammed! Absolutely slammed. LAG with the lead. Talk about taking full advantage of that spawn that he got. Three kills for him, and that is oh. P1 time that is going to be singing sweet. And he might be able to buy this and start working on the rotation. Doesn't block the spawn, but still 20 seconds to work with. This has been a beautiful P1 for the Gorillas. Magical stuff from the Gorillas, and now over to P2. Can Fame continue this run? Here comes kill number five. Number six, where will it be? And you can just see how, like, slow the pace of this game is really been. Fame able to keep things under control. 21 and 10, and it is three players right now stacked up for Minnesota around this new time. But you see the score line. If Gorillas get this break, they're going to be clear to win this game. Oh, let's see if they get the break. They've still got players nearby. One more crack at it, and while they do, let's go for a listen in with LAG. Not good, not good. Come on, he's on the platform. He's right side. I'm gonna go to the far 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 side. I'm gonna go
Someone get the charge on top of players. I have your players. I have all players. Let's get top of players. Yeah, I can't. 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 Staying alive as best they can. 35 on the clock. Trying to keep things under control. Awakening going to be on the wings. No flanks coming through for the moment. LAG setting oh. up for the pressure. Everybody's hitting it once. It's the back door now. Linz can't get any more. Vivid trying to go around and around. Catches out one. Staying alive. The play's still good. Fame up close. Gets it. 20 seconds to go. In the situation we have here, you're going to rotate towards P1. Either team technically could win it. LAG with the advantage. But this game might also come down to that P2 rotation. So these two teams going to have to juggle a few things to win this game. See how well the P1 goes. Five seconds is up. Linz and Awakening are in position for this. Rocker have got to find the hole. They've got 34 points to climb up. Linz doing the best job he can to stay alive. We've got LAG up close. And the pitch is coming through as well. And Assault just going to gun him down. LAG on the swarm. But the kills being exchanged. LAG coming out on top.
Fame absolutely had the hot hand. He was the main slayer from start to finish. Yeah, 32 and 20 final numbers there. A really, really impressive individual showing from Fame and for the rest of the LHG players. Teamwork ultimately makes the dream work, and we saw a few moments from Rocker there where things were looking good. However, Chance, a long day. Some very, very tough matches. That mental fatigue possibly starting to sink in for some of these players. Awakening, the man who we expected to be truly a menace was just the opposite. I mean, that's painful across the board, though. That is all all four players negative down the line. And in fairness, maybe you think the score line's actually going to be close. But if you're losing gunfights like that, consistently so, that is going to be a pain point going into map two. We'll see what happens. Ten minutes for that Karachi hard point to close out. Search and Destroy is on its way round the corner. Highlights, though, first and foremost. Fame, most of them belong to him. Uh, absolutely. And, like, the wall bangs were, like, filtering through as well. But he was going on these early tears. And it's also one of those moments where, you know, Fame gets that cheeky spawn just behind enemy lines. Can he make the big play? He absolutely delivers. Goes on a tear. And, of course, Estriel playing incredible as well. A couple good rotations coming through. I know the Diner Hill, LG were having a field day on. Yeah, that top defense side, Diner, very, very important. P2, as we like to call it. Bottom right hand side of that, the cafe much smaller, but again, piece after piece after piece fame. He was chaining these kills together so brilliantly. This was the wall bang again on accuracy, magnificent stuff. All round there, LAG continue to keep the hot hand going here at Major One. Rocker, though, far from out of this yet. Let's see how the search goes. I mean, there really was just no element of a, a bailout sort of play for Rocker. No one ever popped off. No one picked up a, a really big two or three piece on rotation. It was really tough for them to get things going. Obviously, a, a scrappy game, but effectively always playing on the back foot. Credit Estrelli as well. Man was the super soaker in the time with the sub. Here we go. The fans in Boston still staying strong. A few more maps to go here, and we can say goodnight to day three. But there we go, the game flow. Again, a very, very close matchup chance. You can differentiate between the purple there, but LAG, once they took the lead, they did not relinquish. There was a couple of very close moments, but ultimately, their hard point to win. And of course, you say once they took the lead, they did so off the opening break. So I know a bit of a nail biter, but not a single lead exchange over the course of the entire map. But that to be done and dusted for the Karachi going into the map two invasion. Potential bad news again for Minnesota Rock. Invasion has been LAG's base go-to throughout this major. Obviously, at least one loss, but a win on it as well. And the experience certainly flowing through for this team. So their chemistry is going to be on point. Minnesota Rocker, a map that they have struggled on throughout Major 1 qualifying stages. They need that turnaround fast. Yeah, for those of you who have been watching the tournament since Thursday, I mean, you'll know that LAG love a bit of Invasion Search and Destroy. Some highlight plays going either way for and against them. We'll see if they can uh, if they can put, keep it going, Chance. It's not an easy thing to do to keep playing the same map, the same mode throughout a tournament. Teams get VOD. Teams learn your tendencies. They've seen you do it before. And of course, Minnesota, when they're going to be doing that VOD review, they're going to be paying a great deal of attention to the frag grenades coming out from LAG off the opening break. The last time we saw them play it, a bunch of different looks that they were able to collect to get those first bloods. They're very privy to messing with the timings. Little delays here, little early advances there, LAG happy for the mind games here we go ladies and gentlemen mesdames and messieurs into map number two search and destroy here on invasion it's first to six we'll take turns attacking these bomb sites if you're on one side of it you're looking to defend Linz here at major one so far a 1.90 kd your boy is absolutely fried yeah had one especially strong performance to bump those numbers up and that's the man you're looking towards to try to turn things around they will be on the attack first and that's a smoke to actually block the cross so not a lot of intel at the start of this round Linz though not a care in the world straight ahead and that is a free first blood you love to see it if you're a minnesota rocker fan Check your corners, ladies and gents. Check your corners. That's going to be the story of Major One for so many of these teams. Bomb still in the hands of Awakening now. Rocker find themselves a wonderful advantage early on. And now they have information on two different players, so they know if they go towards B, it'll be the lone defender of Diamond Con that direction. So they are not wasting any time. Three players grouped together to make this move. What could Diamond Con do? So far, he eats a stun. That's going to slow him down. Are they on the bomb side? Damn, my ears. There you go. That blew us away. It did not blow away Diamond Con. And they just have all the information in the world. The only opportunity right now from LAG is going to be the flank coming in from Assault. And, well, there you go. All of the intel has been collected. A two versus four. The bomb already planted. Minnesota Rocker, this might be a guarantee. Diamond Con's alone for now. Assault's a mile and a half away here on Invasion. 
as he traverses the map. He's going to have to get involved pretty quick. Diamond Con, lovely shots into Linz there. Just under 30 to go. Yeah, great comms from Assault, begging for help on that chase. Now grouped up together, but 22 seconds on the clock. Got a gun, three people, and he got to do it fast. Tapes together strong and accuracy. Takes care of business. The team that groups together dives together. No hope there in that two versus four. Interesting attempt, but that is basically right from the jump. I think the smoke came out on the side of LAG, trying to get Estriel up in position on that aggressive cross. Lens, he just takes the freebie. And of course, they got the information after the fact. Once that stun connects on the A site, you know you got the man advantage if you go towards B. They were simply able to bully him out. Round two on its way. Great work out of Actress there. Yeah, the final two kills next him a two spree so far. Gets the six, gets a cruise missile. Lots of fun. Especially on the next patch. But for now, still lots of fun. And LAG with a setup like this going to be taking their time in this round. Again, this is a thing where the pro players counting out stuns and nades, keeping track of the utility on the other side and making sure you don't get too over aggressive. So you make one small mistake. They're just going to bully you out. Nade's going to be clearing out on A. I don't think they have the angle to actually check Lin, so his spot remains unknown. Yeah, Lin's didn't take any damage there either, so he is going to stay here. Stoic in his defense. These players are still incredibly close by him. Just on the other side of the door, Fame. Here he comes. Again, thanks to his tactical sneakers, he's not making any noise whatsoever. The stun, though, gives it up. Doesn't check the other corner line. Awakening now, might be a diamond of the fight. Vivid's there to get it, 2v3. And that is bombed down. This is a pain point right now. Number one and number four, the two AR players right now from LAG. Looking to pray for a pick. Intel on Awakening, but ridiculous gun fights to try and win. Vivid, one of the most accurate players in the league. Doesn't miss. Assault in between a rock and a hard place and a big wake. Nothing you can do. Nah, not a lot. 15 seconds. He's giving it a go. He is truly surrounded right now. There is no way in hell. He's got no streak to play with either. He's not holding on to anything right now. So it's a consolation kill at the very best. And he will get at least one. He's got one fan in the crowd. One very That's for damn sure. No, absolutely. <laughs> Interesting moment there from LAG as well. The stun connects on Linz. They knew he's somewhere around the A site. That might be the homer coming through. Maybe Linz plays a typical spot, but Linz might have mixed things up and just collects the freest of first bloods. Linz is quite literally having them fall into his lap. What a dreamboat, eh? Hey, Boston? <laughs> you guys have been out of control. Here we go. Fame in the middle of the map. That smoke's still lingering, stopping those assault rifle players from being as accurate as they have been in this tournament. Over to the B-bomb site we go. And again, might be limiting on the information once the cross gets covered by the smoke. But at this point, you hear the shots coming through. Both teams have sussed the positions out. 2-2 Two -two split on the defensive end. And Minnesota Rocker do not look interested in forcing this through to be that bomb getting repositioned through the middle of the map. Here comes Fame, and there he goes. First blood, Minnesota. Yeah, Fame was the rabbit there. Runs on the way through, awakening with a perfect kill. A little bit of damage here from Diamond Gun, not enough to really deter the attackers. Assault, though, is going to be the absolute pivotal player here. And this is all about the timing. What information can his teammates give him for when he go for the peak? Does a little wiggle. Uh -oh. And he just gets spotted. The timing does not go his way. He gets dropped. Diamond Con, though, might have the big play, but he gets traded out. Vivid from downrange is on point and accuracy. The anchor in the back spawn does his job as well. Minnesota Rocker. Nice and secure. That's a 3-0 lead. A perfect position right down that long line of sight by the A-bomb site that enfilade fire. Estriel had no hope there. He needed a pinch at the same time. So tough to do in this kind of map. Well, and that's also a moment for Assault where he gets in that position, but instead of waiting for any teammates for any sort of intel, he just kind of full sends it and ends up getting spotted every gun for Minnesota Rocker, staring down range. Boston, for God's sake. Round four. 2-2 <laughs> split on defense again. Linz has been on point for the first blood, but there's nothing in his direction this go around. Awakening spots at least two on the cross in accuracy. Beams from across the map. Got to be for your first blood. Minnesota already strong advantage, and Vivid gets out with his life just barely. But for a man looking for the cruise missile, that is an important moment. Man, he ran 
through the dangerous streets of invasion. While on a fire, gets the sixth kill, gets himself the cruise. That is huge from Vivid. Gets in, gets out, gets beat down, but he has done his job. Adam Assault for the 1v4. Adam Assault in those hands. You know what I'm talking about, boys and girls. Well, he's got himself a 1v3 now. This is for the ace and to get his team on the board. This is a very, very tall task. Let's see what he can do. He's trapped in that apartment now, guys. He is completely triangulated. There is nothing you can do except maybe get lucky. All right, this is two. Accuracy and awakening remain. And there it is. Accuracy holds firm. He finds his sixth kill of the map so far, and Rocker get their fourth round in a row. And if you're in Minnesota, I mean, there is no reason to hide it. Might as well burn that cruise missile as quick as you can. Just take full advantage and try to get that offensive round win. The pace has been pushed. A 4-0 lead is dominant. The first bloods have been flowing. Rocker flying forward with a B bomb sight in eyesight of them. Smoke's going to cover them for now. It might be time for the cruise. No eyes on any trophies yet either. Ezreal is going to be cause for concern. He's aggressive and broken. But they have the intel now. That is a lot of players over towards this B site. There's some serious exposure on this side of the map. Lovely nade up. That's going to force Ezreal out. Look at the kill though. Linz, perfect play, flies out, finds that. Here comes the cruise. Fame and assault. Time to hide, boys. You can hide behind the trophy, but you just got told two players are over towards A. The freest of bomb plants, and look at the spot Vivid is in. He might just be the man to end this round. Oh, he might be broken legs. I'm not sure. He hasn't moved in a while, but here come LAG. Creeping forward. Accuracy's going to have eyes on these players in a few seconds time. 30 seconds, the bomb goes boom. Can Lamar get them both? Damaged help, quick reposition. Teammates out there ready, it's a staggered defense. LAG have got a few problems to deal with. I mean, you gotta go, you have to fly for LAG. You're down 4-0 and it's a two versus three. You gotta make some sort of move. Accuracy just slows you down so much in this round is hopeless. Minnesota Rocker, clearly their homework has been done. A 5-0 lead on Invasion. Utterly dominant from start to almost finish. Got to get there in the end. The finish line is very much in sight. One more round and it's a clean sheet here from Minnesota Rocker on the invasion. <laughs> Guys, it was only the small one. Chill out. It was only the little one. All right, relax. Here we go. Round six. And again, might as well just use the crews as quick as possible. Even the intel they had on Estriel. Go and hunt that man down as quick as he can. Pressure on right now for LAG on the attack with no momentum on your side. Lins with an immediate reposition. Rocker have pushed themselves up far forward. What a peach from Awakening from way downtown. Yeah, that is from virtually across the map. Awakening might be halfway up, but that is a man that just died in his own spawn. 3v4, you're down 5-0. Things are not feeling good. Lins is hanging out. Here in the janitor's closet, Estriol wins it, stays alive. You've got a little bit of space in the bomb site now to work with. Awakening brings his MCW forward. Estriol once again finds his second kill on the round. Up to Vivid. He's been bodied. An LAG. Better late than never. And then there was one. Took a lot to make it happen. You see the idea from Minnesota getting a little bit cheeky. Lynn's closing the door behind them. But Estriol not falling for that old trick, able to get two on the round. LAG a long way to go if they want to battle back. And of course for Rocker, they've been as iced up as ever. We're six rounds in, by the way. Minnesota has gotten every single first blood. See if they can get another. Still map point for Rocker. Fame's in, Fame's out. Fame's looking for a first blood. That boy's got him. Um, you know, when you can see through the walls, what do they call it? He had a hack, so he can see perfectly. Assault is made of steel. He's got them strong hands too. 
Eyes on the flank. Perfect timing to catch Vivid, force him back. Lin's now through middle as well, potentially. Or are we going to commit to B bomb site right now for Rocco? And it's actually that's going to be the lone man over towards B for the moment. Doesn't have any help on the cross. And that could be a, a potentially dire situation if it is your rival nine. Well, make it. He does have the MCW in hand, so he's prepared for the situation. Minnesota going to force this through B. Yeah, you can see a couple of silhouettes now working their way through the archways. Lovely tags. Soon, though, he'll be taken care of. Assault there on the cross. Beautiful work from Esteril up close. Can he get another? No, Linz is there on the bomb site. Diamond Con, the last man here for LAG. Stops the bomb plant in its tracks. Last man accuracy. What was... Okay, he got the glitch. It all good. Man's got glitch. Back and forward, he flies. Assault, big damage. 15 seconds. There's the bomb plant. He ate that nade. And that's the round. <laughs> and then... There was two. LAG clutching up. Estriel does his job on the defensive end as well. Assault, he's got the trophy in hand for the next round and might as well hang out for a bit. Talk over your strats. Well, yeah, this is an opportunity to catch, you know, an unofficial sort of, all right, what are we doing now, boys? We've been gifted two rounds in a row. LAG take the round. Call of Duty players are of singular focus. They want one thing and one thing only. Sometimes... Oh my god. Sometimes they need two things. LAG back on the attack though. Attacking rounds on invasion can be a struggle and again... Right now, you have a situation where Rocker have just bullied you on the first blood front. Six to one on that count. But there you go. Diamond Con able to connect. The frags finally come through, and that is the B site. Not wide open, but a little bit easier. That's true. He has to use his smoke as well. Ah, there we go. Oh, boy. You don't check the cross. Stop it, shall. <laughs> it's a classic. It's a day one. As we fly across now, but Assault, oh, he's taken the longest routes of all time, and he's managed to get a kill. And he's cleared so much space as well that you have to know it's going to be the flank coming through. Diamond Con just going to flip sides, and it's almost like they're playing defense now. Well, they've swapped sides entirely. Lin's an awakening now, trying to make their way towards the B-bomb site. Or will it be three rounds in a row for LAG? Information on one. Information on two. Easy kills there for fame. And last man standing, awakening. Tagged up on the cross and going to get hunted down. Well, nice pistol shots, but time simply not on his side. We'll wait for the regen. He's going to go for the chow. 15 seconds until the bomb explodes. An awakening. I think you are prolonging the inevitable, my friend. LAG have done the hard work. First blood all the way through to the bomb plant. They've managed to do it. That's three rounds in a row. And you have Adam Assault, by the way, was on the four streak in that moment. So Awakening does not want to toss away that kill. They're working on the comeback. So if you fed a cruise, you're just feeding momentum. Awakening does make the smart play just by laying down. Nonetheless, that is three rounds in a row from LAG. First blood starting to fall their way. And Minnesota Rocker, maybe feeling a little bit of that pressure. Yeah, Rocker now attacking round from them. Lots of information there from Assault. At least two bodies spotted at great range, but that's enough to pass the intel. The bomb, though, not really getting too far forward, as we've seen so many times now in Invasion. Well, he only has the information on the two players. He's going to be by himself over down A Street, so he's going to be playing a very distant spot in a tight angle here from Diamond Con. One minute to go. No action yet. We're running out of things to throw at each other. And it's all fine kill number five in a row. He's really hoping for it. And you see enough players just made a little bit of noise that he's getting the call. A couple players rotating back over towards the middle of the map. LAG ready for this push. Fame managed to get himself out and behind the dumpster into the action. Two in a row for Fame. LAG are starting to believe. I didn't even move and barely got shot. 3v2 oh. kills in Fame now looking for the ace. Here it comes. Now nah, Lamar ruined it. But it is the round either way. LAG. Four rounds in a row. And I didn't quite catch who got that kill. Fame might have gotten three, but keep in mind, Adam Assault was on the spree. It's Diamond Con that gets it. 
What a round for fame. Under the guise of all the action, he just moves himself out of the usual spots. He gets himself into mid-map, but he's able to watch that left-hand side of the tank. That's a great two-piece from him, followed up with a peach nade onto Awakening on the inside of Hotel. One round separating these two teams right now. And this has just been the tide of the first blood war turning. LAG have had every answer, but there's an aggressive push out of Minnesota. Straight down toward P1, not able to catch the kill, but they are still hunting down on this flank. Rocker are going for it now. They are going for their jugular. They've had enough of this patient play and they are now pushing pace. Estriel knows something's up. And His teammates I, don't have eyes in the back. The play call might be to try to hunt down lanes. A lot of players now wrapping back. Those purple arrows starting to swarm. They know he's in mannequin. Better safe than sorry. That's the call right now. His lens very much behind enemy lines. And in these rugs, he has found a corner, but the pressure's on. He knows he's gotten spotted. He knows the play's coming to him. You can see the door open. Fame's going to check it. Two-man hit. Catches one. There's the trade. You've dealt with the problem for now, but you did lose a man in the process. And now you're back to square one, and you only have 35 seconds to work with. LAG need to make a move. They need to make it fast. They haven't shown anything on the map, and they are working over towards B. For the moment for Rocker, it is only accuracy that's by the site. They have to move decisively. They don't know how many players are on that side of the map. Take care of one and hit the go button, boys. The middle of the map is not safe. Suppressing fire and a little bit of peppering is going to keep accuracy at bay. Damn, what a kill. Final 10 seconds. You have got to go. Vivid finds the back line. Assault now flying forward. Can he get two kills in some kind of miraculous moment? No. Lamar shuts it down. Rocker tie up the series. No full sail today. They take care of business in that play from Linz and the aggression from Rocker. And that final round was the adjustment that they needed. And that's the moment, too, because they knew they were hunting Linz down. He put himself on a corner, and he at least bought you one. And by the time the, really, or the round really got to start to develop, 35 seconds left on the clock, there is almost nothing you can do. That's a long time to be running around looking for a single player in a game of Search and Destroy. But either way, a master class of survival and annoyance there from Linz. And accuracy, huge amount of damage dealt there. 11 and 6 overall, you'll take it. I mean, the number of situations where his job is just to slow you down. He delivers time and time again. 2,600, a little bit nutty. 11 kills to boot as well. Minnesota Rocker might have gotten bodied to map number one, but they got the bounce back you were looking for, Miles. We have a series on our hands. We do indeed have a series on our hands. Well, this is the look of the series that remains. We've got one final piece of our invasion chapter to deal with, and then we go to Skid Row. Terminal, if we have to go the very, very distance. We'll see how that all fares. Invasion coming up next. Game of Control, we've seen a lot of close ones, especially Invasion, heavy defensive shootouts. But crazier things have happened. We're seeing a lot of those big offensive rounds. We'll see what happens, though, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to go to a very quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to play a lot more Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. LAG taking on Minnesota Rocker. When we come back, Invasion Control. The Painted Alabrije Bundle is available now in the Call of Duty store. Inspired by the folk art of Oaxaca, this stunning bundle offers colorful, vibrant, and mythical items you gotta check out. The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Monster Energy, the official energy drink of the CDL.
Idly Ho Neighborinos, and welcome back to the CDL Major One Day Three. Nearly done, or is it? We'll find out. We're going to play Control now, because our series is all tied up. Our purple team's going deep into the night. Is that a Simpsons reference? Yeah, man, Ned Flanders. It's taken me years to figure that out. It always sounded familiar. It's, uh, you know, we're learning things here Saturday night, just like we're going to learn which of these two teams is going to make it to the next day for the top four placement. Say both of these teams have exceeded our expectations, but still a little longer to go. Invasion control. I mean, Rocker, we got to see them on this map against Ultra. Things look dire initially. They bounced back and they fought. So a little bit of experience on this map on land. Of course, though, fame, not just the map three. He had a control against Vegas where he popped off, but obviously the map one, he had their number as well. Oh yeah, Fame was fantastic on Karachi here on Invasion though. Let's see if Rocker have got the same fight chance. You are absolutely right that they had against Toronto. Here we go. First to three. Accuracy, lovely shots. I mean, he's been dishing the damage and he's just sending Lens in for the kill. This is aggression through DVDs and there's your first blood. Quick flank coming through as well. Right now, Rocker getting nearly every kill as again, a slow capture on B is going to commence. That means Rocker, they want to set up for the control. Lens, he gets the freedom, he gets to fly. It's Awakening who's not got the freedom nor the fly, who has to sit in B and capture it. And a similar idea though, it's a slow cap on B, but it might just be to drag some attention. They constantly toy with the idea of working this A zone and Vivid has the timing. He gets a kill, and now the more important play is on A. Oh dear, both the zones are being captured. Awakening somehow stays alive. Back on a B he goes. Fame there with a lovely bit of a wall bank just to take care of business. Now a bit of Vivid solo now. Oh dear, finds a kill, buys a few more moments. Can he complete the segment? Yes. Yeah, it doesn't have a trophy though, and I was gonna say, he needs to be careful or he might explode. You'll take the Ticto again on the long-term game, even if you're playing for that defense for the round five. It's the objective that you need. Problem is, don't wanna get spawn trap. Fame on a three spree, he is hunting you down. Renetti shots at range as well, that is a <laughs> bold chow. Oh yeah. Estrell. Chasing ghosts. Chasing ghosts. Should have had that one. That felt like an easy tag for him. That second segment would be nearly gone. Tick, tick. Change POV. Looking to close out B any second now, unless Estriel can get in there. Force Awakening off at the very least. And again, this is the moment right now. LAG looking to clutch up and force them off the point. They just stopped that B zone capture in the final moment. And they got assault over towards the bridge. This is your opportunity to set up the spawn trap. Yeah, Fame's trying to push up through that DVD side. Assault has got the bridge covered. But assault says, you shall not pass. A quote from Harry Potter, if you haven't seen it, guys. Just over 30 seconds ago. Oh, that's three down. I mean, you could go to either zone. That's a four Whoa. down. They're sending two to A and two to B. And right now, if you're LAG, you got to make a decision. Everybody heading towards the same point, but accuracy actually does not quite make it through. It's a perfect 50-50 play. They are going to win it every single way. B gets captured. An additional minute to go. Tons of lives still to play. Now towards A, we fight. And they're putting the pressure on, too, because they got the street control. Nobody from LAG has pushed up this map at all. P1 is wide open. You know, a couple players that are all going to be trapped back towards gas in their spawn awakening. Nice kill as well. Might have some help Ooh. here for the trade, but Linz doesn't even need it. LAG starting to collapse. Oh dear. 11 lives either side. One minute. And this round comes to a close. LAG just need to hold on towards the A side, but look at accuracy. Oh, it's so dangerous and sneaky. Diamond comes right behind him. The trophy is not entirely wasted until he destroys it. The rest of the team now trying to fly forward. They've got middle of the map, all theirs. Yeah, Rocker actually so concerned about Estriel. They didn't want to help accuracy out at all. So maybe a small missed opportunity, Dang. but Linton's trying to widen that gap. It's actually Awakening that takes him down, but he's at least made his way towards the A zone. LAG a little bit too clean with it. Vivid desperate to stay alive, but he's going to get traded out. LAG under control. But keep in mind, a six versus four. Either team could win this on lives. Five to four now. No lives left for Minnesota Rocker. 20 seconds to go. You got a long way to go, boys. You can't just win it on kills. It's going to take too much time. That's a freebie. 4v4, just over 10 to go. Got to deal with three, though. Awakening going to be leading the charge. Him and Lens were attempting to do it together, but everyone falls. Awakening gets dropped. And LAG secure the defensive rounds. Not too shabby, though, for Minnesota Rocker. Again, B zone captured. An extra tick over towards A. Four ticks is respectable. LAG going to be forced to respond. Yeah, Rocker is certainly looking strong in the slain department. Linz has started to heat up. He's getting a bit more fluid. He was quite stiff to start the series off. Now things are a little bit more loosey-goosey, baby. Well, Linz might be 
the 10 kills he threw up in the round one, but Diamond Con, I believe, was able to secure a cruise missile. So a little bit of extra utility. Maybe you want to use that on the offensive round if you find that window of opportunity. But for the moment, a lot of players staring down. Maybe straight towards B or again, work in the middle of the map just to give you options if you get these kills. Exchanges, though, rolling through, and it's going to be a 2-2 split, but they've made it at least towards A. Diamond Con by himself, but the difference is he's got the trophy. He's got trophies. He's got lethal, a tactical, everything to play with right now. He could buy himself a lot of time unless he loses a gunfight. Ooh, he's sagged up. Does have his teammates now to sort of help out down the street. So that long line of sight, very, very dangerous for now. Accuracy waiting for the moment to pounce. Here he goes. Wind up. Guns it. Beautiful work out of Rocker. That's a four-man wipe to Awakening delivers from two. A delicate moment. Again, you'll take the tick, but that could have been a much better situation for Gorillas. And right now, Estrella, his job. Get the guy off the bridge. And you can see for LAG, you're calling this off spawn. You take down Awakening, you get a little bit of information, but I don't know if you get much more than that. Vivid, though, somehow, some way, takes Lens off the map. Vivid helping out. Whoa! What a win from Vivid. Fame gets dropped now under the B, though. You still have Assault keeping the play alive. Awakening Lens and Vivid now trying to take care of that tiny little crashed car. Diamond Con on the feet. Estrell there doing what he can, but Vivid again from the high ground. Too hot to handle. Yeah, you got Diamond Con teaming from across map for the moment. That is a lot of rubble and a gunfight win there from Lens. Slow pace, but staying alive. The trades are good, and it looks like B might just fall. Awakening might be able to get some shots down range, but there's no stopping this zone. Fame and drawn now. This is very, very important. Two players stacking. B zone on its way out. One minute 40. Accuracy back towards the deep bridge. Anyone who dies now from LAG will face him in a moment. Vivid, I can't get him out there. He's unevictable right now. He will not leave that top broken apartment. Keep in mind, though, just because of the opening break, the tick game right Got now it. is going to be tied. So LAG already made up for that round one. And Diamond Con has already gotten one cruise, thinking about a second. He's on a four spree again, and potentially two teammates to bait. Going to take that power position. A little bit of time to work with, just looking for two more. He's got eyes on Linz as well, and I'm sending the rest of the team in for the kill. Assault Hello. there to help him out. This is absolute madness. Estriel in the feed. Assault now looking towards the backside of A. Spawns are about to get real ugly, boys and girls. And Minnesota are turning, even Vivid wrapping all the way around back to his base. So heads up gameplay right now from Rocker. If you didn't know before, you certainly do now. Two players attempting to work the flank for the Gorillas. Again, it's a matter of kills. If you get a few of these kills, you're able to dive straight onto that A zone, get the capture going. Just waiting for the right moment. And, and right now, you also have LAG that really just need to take care of accuracy on the bridge. Assault's buying you kills in the back line, but accuracy doing damage just to slow down the pace. So it is a scattered map Ooh. for the moment. Assault gets shut down. And in the meantime, you just see these three purple arrows are stuck. They cannot get past accuracy. That kill might have been it. Can they get past accuracy? No. There goes one. Lamar, damage dealt. The trade's going to be there. Happy to take it. Oh, we're getting there with a the Renetti. Four in a row now. 15 seconds to go in the round. And the Minnesota Rocker will tie things up. Yeah, there's simply nothing you can do. Maybe a last ditch ever try to bowl through the middle of the map. You actually have Minnesota pretty out of the picture if you can manage to stop the clock. But uh -oh. on the cross, enough guns up. It's NCW's in hand. But Diamond Con makes it point two left. He's the sole man. He's got to hold on. Diamond Con, the sole man. Gone. The Iceman comes in and puts a chill on that play. The accuracy has genuinely been on point. I think any situation you hand him where he needs to play slow, he is going to thrive. And that is a beautiful read just to have the patience. Don't feel the panic. Don't rush into the site. Make the read on the guy from AS and D. And accuracy keeping things under lock and key on defense, all tied up on the segment front. Vivid received a healthy amount of criticism in his opening series today. Not as uh, strong in the performance department as he has been, but he's turning things around in a big way here in this series, especially when Rocker needed. Still tied up one to one. Here we go. And lands on the offensive round they had before, able to get double digit kills. This time, though, Estriel and LAG not playing any games. That was a triple stack over here on defense. They're going to shut that door here. Yeah. You saw the red dot there, you heard the nade, you heard the shots, you know Awakening is trapped in that position. Don't let him get away with his life. Other side of the map though, you don't have any manpower here, LAG. So Rocker have walked right on in. They've got a two-man stack on B. Yeah, this is LAG just trusting them on or trusting themselves on defense over on that A zone long term. Happy to alleviate some of this pressure on the map, hand it to Rocker. 
and let them do their thing over towards B. They're going to be playing the long game, and Fame has worked his way over towards Palace. They're trying to pounce on the point with a little bit of time left. Vivid, though, keeping him at bay. Two spree. Looking for a few more. We stopped the clock on B. We're looking to add that additional minute. No one really here from LAG to stop it. So I think we're going to let this happen. We're going to play out a very long game of potential TDM now. Almost two minutes on the clock, 25 lives-ish each. Well, you see again, Accuracy has found his home. He has made it to the bridge, and he is making sure he's keeping that under control. Extra kill coming through from Rocker. Couple players working through mid, and Accuracy made his way down the street. You want one more set of kills, and then get on this point. Or maybe it's wide open. LAG actually just giving this up for free. No trophy on the zone just yet, but the kills are going their way. Oh, baby, can't get away with his life. Awakening now to watch the cross. No coverage. Nice comms. Diamondcon not dealt with, only slowed down. One segment gone, two-man stack. Pressure now mounting, here's the nades. Estriel flies in, Fame backs him up, clean point. Finally able to get over there. That was a lot of players by blue there for LAG on defense. And again, that extra tick does come through. A small moral victory there from Rocker. As the pressure from the middle of the map, gonna get stuffed, the kills get wiped in. We go again. One minute 20. 19 lives on defense for LAG. This is to take the lead here in control and put, them on, put themselves onto map point. A very tight formation right now from Rocker. LAG are punishing them. Two unanswered kills so far, and the sprees starting to mount for LAG. Yeah, one player has slipped through the net, though. Linz has made it behind enemy lines. He's going to reveal himself getting the kill, and you see Rocker the idea. A couple players maybe roaming towards the bridge side of the map. Meanwhile, Awakening, good stun, going to take down Adam Assault. Linz inside the spawn as well. Number two on this spree. You get the guy off the bridge. Rocker can create the opportunity, and Vivid does win the gunfight. Flying forward, Estriel's going to have to do something very special indeed. Here come the members of Rocker. Nades are in. He's totally surrounded. A little bit of damage. Not enough to stop them getting onto the point, though. Here comes Linz, the cleanup crew, this the potential it. for the stack. This should be the round. Rocker are in. The sprees are starting to mount as well. We could be looking at a cruise missile going into the final round for them. Guns are up. Linz on a five. Can he find him a six? No, the round is done. Rocker, map, point. And, and this is a low energy game right now from LAG. There was nobody watching that cross down the A street. Estriel just tucked himself in the corner, but nobody watches. That's two separate times in that round. Someone from Rocker just walked straight through the front door. Yeah, right through the front, straight in towards the fridge. They took whatever they wanted. Map point now for Minnesota. Linz is one kill away from his cruise missile as well. That will be coming very handy, let's face it. Here we go. I mean, cruise missile or not, you're now on defense with a massive advantage. Rocker, again, just a, a cakewalk to the point. Feeling good now, potentially on this final round. Nades up. I don't see a trophy. Is Linz going to be the one to get the kill, or did he chuck it a little bit too far? Looking Whoa. for it, can't get it. Slides straight into death. Straight in the death, straight into plenty of kills for LAG. Two players still there on B, getting the capture done halfway through the entire zone. And now Diamond Cond, he's in your spawn, trying to rustle your jimmies. Well, you know someone's in rugs. Maybe not going to deal with him for the moment, taking the long route to find him. Diamond Con might have actually found his way towards the back and finds an extra kill as well. LAG putting the pressure on the flank, looking to trade out these kills. Vivid delivers, but still more pressure on LAG trying to do this fast. They have doing it real fast. Here they go, flying forward. Awakening off spawns, going to do what he can. Accuracy on the other side of the bridge for a bit of a pinch. Lovely work from Estriel. Keeps fame alive, keeps the pressure and the manpower for LAG safe for this side of the map. Oh, Estriel making plays. This is last man standing right now is awakening he can only give you one in the clearance is there a zone is wide open dive on it boys pile in Linz manages to take one player off that helps that buys time now you've got to do what you can the capture is still going awakening manages to get one progress at a 1v1 gunfight this is it in accuracy Slam. so quick with it fame just a little bit too slow off of that respawn a small opportunity created. Minnesota Rocker closed that door. Still massively down on lives. And with a minute and 40 clock, that very well could come into play. And no one is reading this flank. I mean, no, you're not even close to reading it. Hardly high. Linz, catch. No stick. Oh, so close, Linz. What a win that was. Assault's going to be here in a moment. So again, the pressure has not stopped. LAG have got Rocker. Oh, 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 oh. you're up. Grab the hand warmer. His hand's a little bit cold in that <laughs> moment. Accuracy going to gun him down. And I mean, a couple opportunities on the flank. But again, Rocker on defense and things are slow. These guys have been on point. Hey, Rocker getting bled out on the life count as well. 13, now 12 to go. Fame. 
Hip fire works out, trying to stay alive through in laundry. Linz has his guns up at the ready. Oh my god, he's still dancing. Less than a minute. Gotta keep finding the kills, gotta keep finding the pressure. Last man on the point is gonna be Linz. Can they get in there and start the capture now? Oh, the stun though, just brutal. Linz out here hunting for two, can't get it. Assault 11 HP, the trades are in, but still nine lives. LAG, you need to push the pace. <laughs> Everybody take a deep breath. 40 seconds for LAG to force the final round. Rocker, just hold on. And they're not pushing the pace either. They're not going to try to do this on lives. They're looking for the one clean push. Less than 30. One last chance to get a fresh magazine in. 20 seconds to go. LAG playing very slowly. This is it. I mean, this is going to be the hit right now. Assault gets that first blood on the engagement. Fame there for the follow up. You made it to the zone. Fame's made it in. Accuracy's now got to clean out. Checking all the usual spots. No, they've seen him. They've done it. Vivid now from behind. Fame, next man up. Can they get in there? Push your vision. Vivid, push, fly, get in there. Renetti in hand, looking for the angle. Finds one. Vivid! Can't get a second. Extra keeps the capture alive. No trophy, though. No trophy. The stun's going to tag him up. Can they maybe get there in time? Or maybe just awakening. Not good enough. Someone trying to channel a gunfight that's not on the hill. And the sloppiness on defense has been punishing. Final round here on Invasion. And we're seeing so many moments where players on defense are staring at air as the objective is just trickling away. Here we go. One more round here in Invasion Control. The last series of the night. We're going the distance, kids. Here we have it. Rocker on attack. LAG have defense. Yeah, Rocker just massively dropped the ball in this moment. Granted, they've had success on the offensive side of things. Linz has been a monster. But LAG might be able to contain it. No funny business off the opening break. You see LAG, they triple stacked A once again. They're going to be playing the long game. Play for the kills off the start. You'll give up the slow capture towards B unless the kills fall into your lap. Adam Assault hunted down. But you can see Rocker. It is just one guy slowly capturing the point. They want all the time in the world to work with. Yeah, Linz has got a lot of work to do to keep that player alive. Here come LAG. Purple arrows on the minimap flying through. Easy cleanups there from Fame. Wow, he gets both. Fame ain't messing. Sides in and guns you down. Now Rocker back to effectively square one, working their way up the map. Fame taking care of trophies. Maybe looking for one of his own. The pressure once again going to be on B and a flank coming through for Vivid. The timing around the point is going to be here. Couple kills come through. The clearance nearly oh. there. Estria falls. That's a three down. Smoked. Absolutely dive on that point. Stack it, boys. You get that capture done real quick. No, instead, Vivid will now cut down the center of the map. Head southbound and try to get to away. Yeah, and Adam Assault again just going to be pushing up. Actually going on the full flank. The timing here is going to be interesting because players are going to spawn directly behind them. And he doesn't even find the kill after the fact. Awakening shuts him down. The zone does get secured. And a couple players now from LAG going to be coming off spawn. Once again, it's Vivid. He has got eyes on the prize. Estriel spots him out. Takes care of business, but one HP remaining so close. Awakening should have the trade. He does. Kills keep going. And again, Assault, instead of just playing bridge and trying to keep these players at bay, went for the wide swing. Another nade team kill right now from Rocker. But the good news, at least you have the pressure up the map. You don't have to deal with bridge. You do have the clearance to run straight through. And oh they're my not going to take the clearance. They're going to take the long route, and they're going to get shut down. Now to push that front line far forward. Gain that space. Run for it. You fought so hard to get it. Assault posted up at the very, very back of this bridge. Accuracy knows he's going to be there. A pain in the ass for the next minute or so. And again, he is not a stranger to car explosions in his face. Rub some dirt on it. He'll walk it off. <laughs> Hold it down. One minute to go. Awakening at range now. He and Accuracy are doing their best to get rid of Assault. They need him gone if they're to make the play happen. And it's not going to happen just yet. Clean four down, everybody spawns pals. This is nearly impossible to get out of. Estriol is going to find himself at least one or two if they hit that corner fast enough. Are they going to go through the old B site? That looks to be it. Linz finds one, but the trades are going to keep happening. There is a very slight stalemate, and you do not have the time to do this, Rocker. You have got to get it going, lads. You're also not going to ever check that corner. Sweet. Estriel gives you two before he falls. One man has actually made it behind enemy lines. It is accuracy time and time again that finds themselves in these spots. Oh, no. But he's just going to get shot in the back. Oh. No crap pressure, oh. no hope, no dreams. LAG might have just done it. Oh, my word, they've done it. 
final 10. No way. As Minnesota Rocker have lost the control. And this puts LAG on match point. The opportunity for yet another team to get monkeyed by the LA Gorillas. They need one more. And that is a sloppy game of control. Two offensive round ones, a massive amount of missed opportunities, but a dub is a dub. LAG, match advantage, match point. One more map and they get top four. Top four indeed. Nobody expected either of these teams to make it this far into the tournament based on the online qualifiers, based on the run up to the major. But here we find ourselves. And let's face it, hand warmer sales have gone through the roof as well. Absolutely fantastically done in Boston. Stock must be going crazy. Credit to Linz, I suppose, on the offensive side of things. Able to put up 20 on the board, but not getting up towards the end. You see Fame actually 22 on defense. Him and Estriel, absolute field day on invasion. 6500 there from Vivid as well. Massive work from him. Huge work in the damage department. He must have heard the desk's analysis. Well, there we go, ladies and gents. Quick look at the highlights from that invasion control. Assault by the back bridge as well, man. He was there for the entirety. It was a full minute of holding that position down in that final round. Ah, he's loving life again. The car explosions to just uh, remain ineffective against them. And it is just a bevy of different kills. Again, a couple different wipes around the zone. So many opportunities with players on the flanks. A couple times where Rocker just walked straight into the zone. But LAG down 2-1 after giving up the offensive round. Still able to clutch up. And it was Estriel in this, well, not in that moment, but it was him that was able to get that slow capture over towards Zay in the end. Surprising that he was able to get it done because I mean, you're going to see it. The first shout comes through. Players just dealing with AS and D, not able to cross towards the point. Estriel, he gave you the big one. He did indeed. A accuracy as well for me, one of the more clutch players there from Rocker. Exactly when you needed him on those goal line saves, those pixel perfect moments, trying to get those players off the points. And again, trying to make those last ditch attempts to disrupt enemy spawns, to disrupt their supply of reinforcements into those fights. Lamar was the guy to get it done. For now, though, LAG, one more map. Will it be the Skid Row hardpoint, or will it be a terminal search and destroy? We'll find out. But for now, Chance, off to Skidders. It, this is going to be an interesting map, because right now the respawns, LAG, not dominant wins, but they've had them under control. You do go to a Skid Row. It'll be the second time Rocker have played it on the day, and they look good. The slang was there. It was just Ultra was the better team. And I know on the kills department for Minnesota Rocker, they were out of control. Salt, though, getting warmed back up, ready for the evening. So he looks out of control as well. <laughs> We've all been there, folks. Hard point coming up next. Of course, on Skid Row, we'll have a look at the break metric. Skid Row, a map where you have to get the breaks. We talk about a hard point break when you take an enemy hard point, you defeat the opponents in there, and you get the time yourself. Not an easy thing to do, Chance, but for one team in this series, a little bit easier. Yeah, it's strong for the side of the Gorillas, and of course, this is across all maps, but fourth overall is not too shabby, but of course, if you're behind the rotations, where you see Minnesota Rocker have been absolutely stronger, the breaks might be a necessity. Obviously, those P2 jumps right from the opening break. Typically, the decider, I think it's been pretty consistent throughout this year. The teams that have that early rotation of P2, when that hill gets broken, that team ends up losing the game so certain hills that are money hills you have to lock down i think it's fair to say if we see rocker play anywhere near to up to the potential they had against toronto then we could be looking at a game five we'll see what lag have got here because chance typically you guys call it that could be the game that hard point this should be the one that decides who gets the win or not nine times out of ten you've been pretty spot on there so skid row not to say it's written in the stars or it's easy to call but there are a few moments that will absolutely decide the fates of these teams and pick your poison on what player on these teams you're going to want to watch. Fame has been on point in this series, but Estriel obviously laying down the law on the control. 6,400 damage, I believe, he was able to secure. So his gun is going to be warm going into this map. And obviously off the opening break, it's a rival nine players you pay attention to. Linz wants to match that pressure. I know Awakening, though, is a player I'm keeping in the back of my mind because he was popping off on Skid Row earlier today. You're going to need that magic again. You want to get back in this series and force that game five. Here we go. Adam Assault, map number one. He was the man. 26 and 16 with a 1.6 overall. A ton of damage as well. 
The hill time is going to be something we'll be considering a little bit more here on Skid Row. We'll see how those AR players perform. We'll see how he goes toe to toe with accuracy of Rocker. Good news for LAG, get the good spawn off the break. A lot of exchanges that we have seen is the team that gets P1. You almost just trade away a full 60 to get that rotation if you're Rocker, but they're going to be fighting off the rip, and nice little spot from Awakening. Pops the dumpster to get that first blood and try to soften up the blow. Rocker in the time first. Estriel might get taken down as well. Teamwork is clean. Vivid, nice opening break. A lot of kills fell into his lap. Yeah, great work out of Vivid, and all the submachine guns there in Minnesota. Rocker, they're taking magnificent control of this entire apartment complex. Estrio off spawn, right back into it. Fame backing him up. Will they make it in the fire? Unscathed? No. Trays are there. Awakening finds his. Estrio with an ace. Beautiful tags, but not quite enough. All this is going on. Top left, though. Assault's chilling. Yeah, Minnesota, though, of course, on the P1. End up coming out fairly strongly. Not the full 60 that you might have hoped for. LAG certainly fighting and effectively a three versus four. And accuracy gets caught as well. So a lot of players falling one by one. I think on the next push, Rocker certainly going to take their time, group up together. And for them, they might need to read the spawns. Two players working through ticket. One guy actually spawns in garage nearby. You're not reading that. Two kills are going to falter. And Vivid doing his best to stay alive. Right now, Rocker going to be very far away. Let's see where the spawns are going to be taking place. Looks like the tunnel will be the part where most of Rocker's players come from. Vivid still waiting on the other side. Perfect cleanups, though, on the top side of the map. LAG happily sitting there as Vivid finds his fifth in a row. Yeah, just now picked up the MCW as well, so maybe try to get some tags on the guy in the hill. Estrell in a dicey spot, gets out some great damage. And it looks like Fame might be that cleanup crew, awakening just that next man in line, and that's going to be Fame on a five as well. From 0-5 to 5 to 5, not too shabby. Him and Assault both thinking about that cruise. One more. Might be able to catch Vivid. Oh, that, 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 that. That's awkward. Oh, the trades are there. Nobody gets the streaks. Well, not quite the perfect full 60, but certainly a massive amount of time that Assault was able to collect. 48 to 36, and funnel it off. Estriel, the first one on the rotation, wins the SMG gunfight as well to get that initial time. Back alley now, getting a little bit more populated with LAG players. Rocker hot on their heels, though. Coming out of laundry. Accuracy, squeaky clean work from him. Estriel not able to turn. He knows his players are everywhere. That's going to be a good break. Rocker are in. Yeah, that back alley pressure, overwhelming fame right now. Just going to be chasing Ghost. Four players effectively around the point. One watching flank, everyone else gun straight forward. It's going to slow fame down for the second. LAG groove up together. 30 seconds left. They want this one to work. Trying to get the break. Uh, it's not going to happen. Lovely work from Linz and Vivid. They're up close. Vivid gets one. Awakening now on the pinch, trying to help out. Good work again out of Rocker. Held very well. And so you got to chalk it up and just go towards Damn. new. Awakening trying to pierce through the middle of the map. But obviously for LAG, many players swarming around. I think Linz wants to make this timing is correct. Don't want to hurry into these gunfights. Head on a swivel, clearing some corners. And far enough away from the nade, he can work with his teammate together. Vivid just soars in, though. And neither player able to get a kill. LAG, police under control. That's great work. That three-man hit there from the Gorilla somehow pays off. The pair of them now on the inside of the hard point. Backstairs covered, tunnel covered. Awakening smashed that door wide open and checked that right-hand side. That has been the bane of many teams so far. Diamondcon managed to get his on the stairs. Great work from Estriel as well. LAG hold. Entry AR does not pan out. And for fame, I believe just spawned him and Diamondcon over towards new. 2-2 Two -two split across the map. Players fighting for the old scrap time. And there's a lot to collect. And more importantly, the rotation. Fame's going to have that on lock. Gunning players down and of course on the flip side his team wins the battle for scrap as well this is a beautiful moment for gorillas fame despite the long day despite the, you know maybe the lack of energy fame is playing a very safe very controlled game of call of duty right now lin's up next fame should have this fight at range lin's likely to, to be running at rival nine Reinforcements are arriving, though. Fame just has to stay alive here, as now the hard point's ready to go. Yeah, immune to stuns as well. Able to dodge it. Estriel in a perfect position to play for the air, and it kills. Ooh. Makes the read. Can't win the gunfight, but right now the player's on Rocker. Still very far away, but for Fame, his teammate in the hill, child and died. He's got to hold them all off by himself. Here we go, Fame. Accuracy's right behind you. Linz is in front of you. This should surely be a kill. Nice work. Rocker, get the break. Now they've got the lead. You get the full lockdown on the P5, and you just get broken down. Minnesota Rocker may be the moment of the game, and now they got a stranglehold. The spread across the board. Players in the power positions, but where accuracy falls, Vivid, maybe there to pick you up, or maybe right now LAG don't even want to make the push for it. They're repositioning, resetting, trying to set up for new. Waking's one away from a cruise as well. 
Anybody feeling brave? Who wants some? Currently no one. P1's on its way over though. As Rocco built himself a comfortable little lead. A little bit of cushion. There was the pushing. And Awakening he gets the streaks. Well, that's what he was looking for. He is going to get it. And more importantly, maybe over towards New. Well, Vivid doesn't get the two-piece, so LAG, the early rotation, ends up panning out. They end up spawning up on the left side of the map, so if there's any pressure through Tunnel, Assault's going to have that on lock. That is effectively an early rotation to P2, while his teammates are still just collecting that time. Yeah, the first go around here we saw, Minnesota Rocker had great control of P1. They didn't do too much on the crossover. P2 was solid as well. Let's see if the other, you know, time round now, LAG have got the first 30. I mean, honestly, you see what LAG, the decision they're making. Oh. They're going for the heavy rotation in P2. This is so much time to be giving away, and they're spawning out. Assault dies out of the hill, and Minnesota Rocker might just run this score Ooh. up. Lin's on a five. That could be the gunfight of the map. And he absolutely knows they're spawning tunnel side as well. Here we go. Vivid might be able to intercept. He's still soaking away. 10 seconds to go. Doesn't want to give it up just yet. Again, you've built a sweet lead, Rocker. Don't burn it away now. New hard points up and about. As once again, Linz, what a battle to take it himself. And this is a requirement. You have to break into this hill if you want LEG to win this game. And that is not the start you want to have. That is the cruise missile given away, and that is a clean four-man wipe. What? I don't know what the hell just killed him, but Awakening just going to fill in the slot, get right back up top, and obviously it's what? Double cruise missiles up, power position secured. Might be a dagger on Skid Row. Here we go. I saw the last man alive on that side. It's now a 2v1 on the inside of the point. Awakening cut down. Downstairs, though, accuracy still has a place here in the hard point. Surrounded by Gorilla's members, are reinforcements through tunnel. Is it going to be enough? Yes, Vivid picks up two. An unbelievable back and forth here on the second hard point. I mean, again, that was three players from LAG that try to rotate that just get cut down as they're running through tunnel. That is the setup for now a massive lead for Minnesota Rocker. Not quite going to be 100 points, but they've surpassed the 200-point margin. Any of the next three or four hills, they could win the game. This is a big moment right here for LAG. Hold on. Full 60 here on the back alley. Be sweet. The submachine guns have been looking very good indeed. Speaking of fame, huge damage dealt. Dwarf in it. Good work. Stays alive. Manpower now diverted towards the hard point. Diamondcon banged up. Here comes the hit. Accuracy's in. Rocker with the break. That's the break. He got the god steps in the back, though, for fame. Needs to collect a couple, but he can't get it. Vivid shuts him down. Accuracy going to oh. fly. And one by one, they fall. Diamondcon the last in line. There he goes. You spawn out. You lose the time. Rocker doing whatever they want on the map. Well, this could be it. This could be game five, folks. 20 seconds for the win. There are 25 to be had here in the point. LAG have got to get in at the very least contest for a moment very possible here in this kind of point fame and assault trying to get involved there's the play from Linz at the back line from the hip gets them both and a little bit of extra salt on top a couple more kills go their way and Minnesota Rocker have forced the game five That is a damning skid roll if I have ever seen one. Awakening continues to do his thing on that map. The pop-off moment there from Linz again. That double kill he had in the tunnel sets you up on that P2 rotation, and you just get so far ahead of the game. Massive wins around the hill, and Minnesota Rocker deliver death. Game five is going to be an interesting one because there have been a couple beatdowns in this game. We have seen some choke slams on terminal. Well, there we go. Waking 23 and 15. He went ham. Big damage across the board from Linz as well. Beautiful stuff all around there from the players of Rocker. Now, though, we are going to turn our attention to that game five chance. Terminal, 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 terminal. We saw a brilliant matchup between Optic earlier on today. They walked away with a big dub over Seattle. Will we see a sort of similar scene? Is it going to be a beatdown? Do you think there is a clear-cut advantage for either of these teams? No, I do not. I think this is going to be a map five of almost a battle of who wants to have it more, who has more energy towards the end. Obviously, for LAG, going to be a little of a difficult bounce back with a performance like that. But the s &D, we saw what happened. Rocker went up to a massive lead. LAG, they were thinking about that full sale. So predictions, throw them out the window. The battle for top four. Good luck trying to guess it. Yeah, there we go. LAG, can they keep the run going? A rocker, can they finally turn this ship around? They had a decent run through the winner's bracket. Now they find themselves in a very tough spot. Game five, ladies and gentlemen, the loser goes home. The winner will play tomorrow. When we come back after this break, it's Terminal Search and Destroy. This is the CDL. Start 
the season strong with the Call of Duty League Pack. Grab yourself the CDL Operator, Weapon Blueprint, and so much more. Check out the Call of Duty store in-game now. It's time, ladies and gentlemen, game five now between Minnesota Rocker and Los Angeles Gorillas. Not just a very important game five to who advances in the tournament. This is a $40,000 game of Call of Duty. You had to double your money. You win a Terminal S and D. That is not too shabby. An extra 20K in the pocket, but also for the CDL points, this is a theme we hammer home time and time again. The early advantage goes a long way. It alleviates so much pressure through the rest of the year. Both of these teams might have exceeded expectations, but a win here, very impactful. Accuracy has been on point in the game fives. He has been on point in the search and destroy. His first bloods, actually, he's been one of the better players in this tournament. 
And obviously, what we saw on the map too, Minnesota Rocker, I mean, they went up 5-0. It took a while to close it out, but they got the job done. Want to do it here on Terminal. And it is the first round. No trophies out and about. Difficult to win offenses on this map. But if a util's on point, you never know. See if Assault could identify the number of red dots on the minimap there to tell him where his opponents were and how many were shooting. Now backs on up. The perfect 2-2 split on defense for Rocker. And you have a very slow start right now from LAG. Giving up a ton of map pressure. Concerned about players flying up towards Burger. And 2-2 two -two split on the attack as well, but tags are coming through. I mean, two players on either side. LAG want to get grouped up together. Tommy Khan making that rotation. Play's going to happen at play. I don't know. This is such an awkward sort of back and forth. Here we go. Vivid finds one. Vivid can't get the second. This is a lot of space getting those awakening. is not going to let these players get away with it for free. Tries to apply the pressure. 35 seconds to go on the round. And that bomb is out of here. And they backed up just to reposition and go for it again. You already know how the play is going to be. You just want to make sure you at least trade this kill. Here we go. Oh, Diamond Con took a couple there. The bomb's made its way down low. Now they're trying to find an alternate angle. Linz covers it perfectly. Finds himself the kill all down to assault now. The bomb carrier gone. And they did not even give themselves time to work with towards the end. Linz with the big gunfight on the round. Someone from LAG trying to be sneaky and make the play, but Linz was able to read it. And a slow pace, gonna get punished for it. Of course, though, for Minnesota, a defensive win as is typical. Vivid, telling Awakening something very important. Rocker with the early lead there is the motor mouth on the close side of your screen. Vivid calling the shots. Where are we going here on the attack, Rocker? And no one actually climbed up the ramp. So if anyone went to the plane, it was gonna be from the deep side of things. Right now that plane is effectively wide open. Yeah, Diamond Con maybe checking in the cockpit or maybe going for the repositioning, but there is nothing up top. Both these players from LAG are going to be down low. Vivid taking his time to clear it, checking all of his corners. But again, LAG very passive on offense and defense. Fames on the ladder right at the back line there of the plane. And Vivid has now managed to get on board at the very least. A lot of noise in that cockpit, quite distracting this moment in time, but absolute silence across the map otherwise. Knows the rotation's coming through as well, but that bomb has made its way to the site. Vivid has way, made his way towards the back of the plane. You hear the utility being used beneath them, but to no avail. A flank coming through, accuracy. He lives for these moments. He is just patient on the flank. He's backed him down. Vivid's got the first blood, but the bomb does not go down. Diamond Con found the route. Diamond Con somehow manages to flush both of them off the plane. Tagged up. Linz doing what he can. The pressure is now on LAG. They are going for the kill. Accuracy making his way over towards the plane now also. Better late than never. 1v3. Try to grab the bomb. Estriel's there. Beautiful beams, but Dimacon's going to get his third on the round. And LAG take the lead. And just too slow on the attack. Not, there sorry. is a small window of opportunity to get that bomb down, but before they make that move, Dimacon just slams it in your face. Multiple on the round, gets the final kill as well. Let's a great look again at that two-piece we saw. Diamond Con, oh my god, the damage dealt there. Just enough on a Vivid. Ah, oh, the headshot as well. Magnificent work. No more snakes on that plane. Big gunfight win in LAG, maybe mixing up the pace just a little bit. Trophy out, not going to get stunned, not going to get naded. Yep. Try to clear out down low. I think the stun might have missed, but either way, triple hit through the plane. Is it three? It's one. It's not enough. The crossfire there on the inside of the plane, devastating. They managed to get a few more out of it. 2v2 now, and Diamond Con's on a five. Yeah, go back to get that bomb, and if you want to rotate to make the play, you have options. A fast hit like that and a 2v2, you can absolutely make some plays. But the pace has been slowed. ARs in everyone's hand. It's a beautiful thing right now for Rocker. Again, they don't have to give up that B-bomb site awareness, and they can still see access to the plane. They're in the perfect position right now. Linz and Accuracy sitting pretty. 40 to go. And you see the setup, too. Linz is watching over him. Accuracy's got the cross. He spotted out two players. You know the plane is going to be the play. Tags are in. Assault does hop back over. There's the plan. Linz is going to let this one. Oh, he gets it! Just in the nick of time! 
And now Salt got spotted as well. This is a tough spot to be in. Worried about the wall bangs, worried about the hunt. He's trying to play to catch someone off guard, but accuracy never falls for the bait. He won't fall for the bait. Assault's in so much trouble now. Takes a big hit. Linz could enter through the backside of the plane. Either way, Rocker, not only have they won the round potentially. Wait a minute. Is this going to happen? Accuracy moving forward. Is it going to happen? The bomb's been planted. 1v1. Slammed! Absolutely slammed. Not only do Rocker get the round, they got a cruise missile as well. Oh, Gunny, no breaks. I heard accuracy talking about it. He remapped his controller at the start of the year just to be ready for some snakes. And then, of course, it gets GA. But what accuracy is doing now, he's sliding just a little bit more. Slide into the plane. Get that kill. New movement for the main AR. My man was up there in Comfort Plus looking down on economy. Absolutely spraying down that aisle. Rocker, 2-1. And a small little advantage. Obviously, a team very happy to play for picks. Might want to grab the bomb, but maybe looking for the nade off the rip. We'll see if that connects with anything. And it's actually going to be the inverse. It's Fame that ends up getting that first blood with the nade. Oh Lindo God. hunting you down. The pressure gets red in a four versus two. And you're on the defensive end. LAG as good as it gets. Massive advantage. My boy sent it so hard and so fast. Vivid joined it real quick. Ooh, nice tag. That awakening is enough to get the bomb down. Possibly DC from up high gets one. The turn. Oh my God, Demon Joe. Yeah, that, yeah, that was a tough one. I mean, look, as far as 2v4s go, you can take a little bit of confidence out, and that is insane, actually. Fame just healed up before he comes in for that chow. That is perfect timing. A little five seconds it takes to get back to that 150 HP. Fame knows it to a T. That is a, a dicey round to nearly lose a 4v2 on defense. Yeah, you're giving Awakening a chance like that. I'd have filled my britches. All tied up, two to two. Looks like a bit of a two-two split this time round for our attacking team. Well, this is going to oh, be no, a bunch of attacks and nades thrown potentially, or a lot of pressure shown. The bomb on the other side of things, and they're just going to force it through. Estriel yeah. hunting you down. Anything Linz tries, Estriel wants to do better. That's the first blood. Good news, B site wide open. Bad news, bomb's Damn. not here. But hey, Estriel gonna let it ride. Four versus two on offense is a beautiful thing. It's a wonderful place to be. The bomb's now made its way forward. Uh oh, that's bad news. You made your way across to this side of the map. You've got Vivid Trap down low. He does have a ladder to escape the situation. No worries. Fame sent him out in a different direction. Lin's now in the 1v2. 1v2 and the ace is what's going to be the requirement. Fame at the very least going to oh spot him on God. the cross or give away the freebie. 1v1. Lin's. Plenty of time. 35 seconds. World champ MVP versus a rookie. Assault always cleared out the back spawn. You know the rotation's coming through. Oh call God. of Duty timing at its finest. The call out gets made. The 1v2 in ace for Linz. The rookie gets it done. And the call outs from his teammates from the spectator point of view. Whew. You can see the tension. Palpable tension there as he closed out the round. A deep breath and a sigh of relief. And LAG creative with their strats of how they're trying to throw these rounds. Now that's going to go into the, uh, the book for, hey, this guy's great. Let's think of that rookie of the year once again. Linz, magnificent round out of him. Gives Rocker the lead. Yeah, you're going to want to get that one back. Maybe throw a cold shoulder. Or maybe for making an aggressive play towards B, have the bomb there. Maybe switch things up. I don't know. But now on the attack, Rocker. Tried and true. Very spread on the map. They're going to be playing for the information. Aids and stuns getting wrung out. Couple tags coming through the airplane. And again, it's just a lot of broken glass and a couple of shots here or there. Expected positions right now. No real damage done yet. Sounds like one or two lethals thrown. This is going to turn into the typical though. Well, actually, no, not even for the plane challenge. It's Fame playing down low. The plane once again left wide open. Diamond going to be spotting out the cross. Obviously, the wall bangs can be a plenty. Ow. And actually forces him outside. That is a free first blood for fame. Gonna make this round that much more difficult. Astro oh, hasn't quite committed to the long corridor yet. 
that fatal funnel. Connecting one side of the map to the other. Accuracy's there for the kill. Makes it a 3v3. Fame jumped. Fame jumped and he got caught. And again, the plane, his just ah, yeah, giving yeah. up the wall bangs. Good enough for 2 HP. Not enough for the kill. Good enough for the bait. Lin's on a 5. Tags are coming from everywhere. Oh, they're all over the place. And Assault and Estrel now have to make their way across the map. And Accuracy's waiting for it. All oh, the smoke to allow them to move forward. Lamar, 1v2 situation. Sawing him down. Can't get him out. A straight up 2v2 with 30 seconds to go. He got eyes on both, though. So Linz gets that call out. You go for the reposition. And they're going to double up towards the back of the plane. They're just going for the straight chow. Linz opting not for the seat, but instead for the cargo hold. Less than 20. He's got the back if he wants it, but everything through the front. Bad timing. Assault might actually be on board right now. Wickley fights one. Assault trying to turn it into a 2v1. Heavy Run. damage to Linz. Less than 10 to go. Ah, from the hip. Linz. Closes out the round with nerves of steel. It's four to two for Rocker. And that is a round on defense on terminal that LAG get the first blood and they can not execute. Rocker consistently making magic in these situations and magic thy name might be Lint. He's really doing the best he can to keep calm right now. Late into the night here on the East Coast, the United States. Boston still bringing the good vibes for their hand-warming hero. Accuracy first blood. And again, it's like the bomb going one direction, LAG going the other. They get a little bit of pressure, but a man down, and Rocker have been a little bit icier with the man advantage. We'll see if they deliver here. Astro's got a lot of presence over there towards the B-bomb site. Here comes the sort of shoot for the plant. So this is a, a nice place to be in. Accuracy down low. You're never going to see him there. He could spring to life, though, any moment. Estril, you have got one hell of a task ahead of you, my son. Rocker just have to get grouped together. Two players working as a duo split. Just have to trade these kills, because LAG, different corners of the map. Here they come. Trades are there. 2v2. Assault backed on up. We're going to see what we can to dive on that bomb. Assault and Diamond Con. There's the peak. Perfect work from Assault. Linz now. In the 2v1, a little bit of time to get it done. Heavy tags, no way he gets away with this. Don't let him get the kill. No funny business whatsoever. Nice round, LAG. Big wins in that 3v4. I think it was Diamond Con that was around the palm tree watching the flank. He gets that extra kill. And then it was trades after the fact. You see the cheeky spot there from Diamond Con. That is just a full send to off the bomb in a 2v2 like that. You are fully exposed to everything, but if it gave it, the old college try. One round separating the two teams at this moment. Rocker at four. And for our rookies in the lobby, for Estriel, for Linz, how important this series really is. Not just in the long run here in this season of MW3, but in their individual careers. Let's see how long this one can go. Slow draw of the plane this time. Well, you know what LAG has done on nearly every single round, giving up the plane entirely. They've been playing underneath this time, double stacked up. Fame and Estriel are going to be looking over each other, but all that effort to mix up the strats. Lin's just going to call everything out with the crews. How good is your flying? It's the map for it, but Trophy's down. And in the meantime, Assault actually jumps on the play and finds the first flood. And didn't do anything from the outside here. Now, makes his way on board, and he doesn't look left. Hello? Estriel doesn't check it either. They've just walked right on in and taken full control. No trophy down just yet, though. That nade can do a ton of damage, but so can Vivid from up top. Again, the first blood on defense, and they are going to lose this round. This is not going to be great. Sweet shots from Assault. The remaining two players there on the plane. Linz is coming out to sort of test the waters. Throws a shoulder. And it's the same two players in the same clutch situation, and it is the same setup. So much damage being done downrange. 25 seconds to go. Massive damage. Assault doing what he can to move forward. Can those players regenerate their health in time? Assault now. Quick left hit. From the back side of the plane, Rocker, lock it down. Match point. Again, Assault gives you the first blood. You get rid of the crews, and then nothing else goes right. Estriel gets left out to dry. There is no repositioning. Sloppy plays in this moment. And this is a match for top four. LAG needs three rounds. 
to stay alive in the tournament, to load their bank account and add the CDL points to the team. Diamond Con with a bomb in his hand, here we go. Rocker, this is it. Close it out right here and now with a bang. Over by the B-bomb site. And running at him again. They have just constantly been overwhelming this B site. LAG pushing the pace again. David from upstairs. Spot at least one player on the cross. He fluffs the jump. Trophy's not going to help out either. Accuracy's there on the inside of the site. Trade, Trade it out immediately. 2v2. Uh, trades on trades, though, but Assault falls as well. Vivid last man standing. And that player able to get out, but it is oh, just wow. isolation. They're not nearby. You run away from your boy and another 1v1. Fame has found himself in these awkward 1v1 fights all tournament long. Now he finds himself in one against the most accurate player in the league for a few years running, Reese Vivid. Oh, he spotted him as well. He knows. There's the fight. And that's the match. Rocker have done it. They've closed it out. And much to the dismay of the fans here in Boston, they have frozen over the hot hands of Adam Assault and the LAG team. And we will tip the cap to Linz. He played incredibly well in this game five. That is a pain point there from LAG. But a championship Sunday for Minnesota Rocker. Oh, yes, they will be going to Sunday. A fun farewell to Los Angeles Gorillas. A hard fought run through that lower bracket. But at game five, the ice prevails. It's a tough, long series, man. I mean, that, that could have gone either way in nearly every single map. That, that might be the most clutches we have seen in a game of Search and Destroy this year for the teams that were lacking the man advantage. That's a really good point. <laughs> Linz, though, what a map from him. What I'm sure he'll remember, the ace, the defuse, fantastic streak usage as well. Good stuff all around there from Rocker and one that Linz should absolutely be proud of. Composure, I think the name of the game right there for the young player who did everything he possibly could to remain calm and execute against a team that had so much momentum and very, very strong showings throughout the tournament against very good players as well. So there we go, friends. Game five in the books. Any final thoughts there, Charles? Uh, I'm excited to watch this team play tomorrow. I know there are going to be some killers waiting in the wings on Sunday. There will indeed. Well, the man on the stage, one we've wanted to hear from for a while there, Vivid winning that 1v1 there against Fame, sealing the deal for his team. A massive victory there for Minnesota Rocker. Guy Blaze, take it away. Thank you so much, Miles. And I don't just got Vivid. Liam's decided to join me as well. You guys go to top four and you make it to Sunday. Boston, give him a round of applause. Let's go. Let's go. 1v1 for the dub right there at the end. And, you know, going to that game five, did late, late into the day, how are you feeling to be able to make it to Sunday, Vivid? Uh, excited to get to Sunday. I don't think we played our best COD today, and I think we all know that. So we're going go back, to back to, get back to the GP yep. and uh, come out strong tomorrow. And then, yeah, the last one we won, I don't lose those. There you go, OK? Now, let me talk to the rookie lens here, because I do want to get a chance to have some words with you. You had an amazing game five right there to get your team to Sunday. How does this feel for you to do it on this main stage in front of these fans? Uh, that feels good, obviously. Uh, I played good the last map, but I did not play good the uh, first map. So, thanks God, I want to say. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait to play tomorrow. All right, looking forward to playing tomorrow. And I know you are going to increase that gameplay, but you're looking good right now, Lens. Now, Vivid, lastly, what do you want to say to the fans that stayed up to watch you guys make it to Sunday? Because I know they're happy to see you to play against the best. Uh, yeah, to the fans that watch uh, and support, we appreciate you guys. Uh, hopefully, we make a run tomorrow, and thanks for the support. There you go. That's going to do it for us here on the stage. Give it up for the Minnesota Rocker one more time. Miles, Chance, close us out. With absolute pleasure, Guy. What a day it's been, man. What an absolute day. We have seen it all. We've said farewell to a few teams. We've said howdy doody to our final squads that will be meeting us tomorrow on Sunday. A late night here on the East Coast, but an exciting day of COD, mate. A uh, fantastic day of COD. A lot of game fives, two three O's, and I think tomorrow the juggernauts are really going to show off some good Call of Duty. Yeah, we've talked a lot about the separation between the top and the bottom teams here in MW3, and I think tomorrow we might be seeing even more of that. But again, for myself and Chance, a wonderful day from all the fans here in Boston. Thanks for coming.
coming out. A massive, massive turnout there. I mean, the thing apart from the 3 0, the Toronto was the only one that was really big. Apart from that, very, very close games all around. It's been a big day. We've got some massive results here as many teams have been sent packing. Our opening major of the year has been a, a spicy one indeed, brother. Yeah, some of the uh, spicy gunfights we just saw towards the tail end of this series. A lot of players getting caught underneath the plane. Obviously, Lynn's put on a show for this one, but across the board for the day, maybe Seattle, one of the bigger storylines, made a deeper run than some people expected, but took down some heroes as well. Their SD absolutely electric throughout this tournament. And obviously, I mean, we just saw the game five. SD very much wins championships. Absolutely wins those championships. We say farewell to the Carolina Royal Ravens. We say goodbye to Seattle Surge today as well. And of course, the Los Angeles Gorillas taking the departure. We'll see them take place all towards that Major 2 qualifier, which starts a little bit after this Major ends. But for now, very, very good stuff. Exciting play all day. Phase, Optic, Toronto, Rocker, the final four teams that remain. It's going to be a spicy day indeed. At the end of these highlights, we'll have a look at tomorrow's bracket. And all the matches we're going to be dealing with tomorrow as well. Plenty more to play for here, still at Major 1. And a couple different runs that we've had as we do take a look at that bracket. Minnesota take down the reigning world champs, fallen to losers, and well, still managed to make it towards Sunday. LAG have quite a few good series under the belt, make a deep run, and I'd say after that, it is what? Toronto, perfect, not losing a map. Atlanta phase looked fantastic as well, clutching that game five. That is going to be an absolute battle there in the winner's finals. Well, there you see our final four, phase and ultra, and that winner's bracket match up to decide who makes it to the grand final. Rocker and Optic still clawing their way through the lower bracket. It's going to be a very exciting one indeed. Well, this is what's happening tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. This is Sunday, Championship Sunday here at Major 1. The Challengers Grand Final will take place first, followed by that Optic Texas Minnesota Rocker matchup. Atlanta Phase, Toronto Ultra, and then we roll on through the day. Very, very excited to get through that chance. Can't wait. And I know for that Challengers Final is going to be a spicy one. I know Phase Black made it through. Not sure who they're going against yet. I know a few more matches need to get played, but it's going to be a fun one to see. Matt will be fun indeed. Well, folks, thanks very much for joining us on behalf of myself, Chance, everyone in the cloud, all the production team behind the crew, and all the fans here in Boston. Thank you very much for sticking with us. We will see you all tomorrow for Championship Sunday.